Hi guys, Veggie Gamer back and we're here guys with the Goblet of Fire, Harry Potter, Goblet of Fire book club. Oh my goodness. Let's get let's get settled guys because this is a big book guys, but seriously, I, this is something I wasn't quite expecting. I knew that, you know, a lot of people have their favourite different books when it comes to this series and everything guys, but... I was expecting so many people to say that this is actually, at least in their top two favourite book overall, guys. Especially considering Goblet of Fire is the first movie where people really are frustrated with, especially comparison to, comparing to the books, apparently. And so it's going to be absolutely fascinating to finally start Goblet of Fire. Um, meet all these characters that I apparently, I apparently ha haven't met for, via the movie and everything, and all the different changes and everything. Uh, changes that some people feel like were, were kind of pointless in the movie even or, or like you know things that were kept out which should, should have really been in there but my goodness guys I'm looking forward to this I know this is the first chunky book as well now obviously we're starting with three, with three chapters this time uh, that's because there tends to be a recap chapter weirdly enough it's actually the second chapter that's the recap one uh, in, in this in this book because that first chapter my goodness we'll be going into it in a moment but uh, yeah it's uh, it's going to be interesting, guys. It certainly is. I, I don't, don't know. It's been a long time coming. So to everyone who's still with us, thank you so much for sticking for sticking with me, guys. Uh, I know it has been a long time. And so, yes, we will be doing uh, three chapters today. Uh, I will notice the pink elephant. The pink elephant? No, the elephant in the room. It's not pink elephant. What am I talking about? That's Dumbo. Uh, I will address the, the elephant in the room, guys. Uh, you may notice that the lighting is a bit different today. That's because I have all my notes ready, set up the video, um, got everything uh, all prepared to actually just sit down and start recording, and my light broke. <laughs> and so, yeah, it's one of these rig lights. It's, it's up there. Completely not working. Those really don't last very long, do they? And so I will be uh, pro most probably spending my evening ordering another one tonight. <laughs> and so uh, I've improvised. So there's a bit of natural light, which is dangerous for me. It just be it's sod to law, guys. Basically, I sit down to start recording. Like pro what is probably going to be a five-hour video, and bang, we run into a problem straight away. And so I I apologize for lighting. Hopefully, it will be fixed next time. It will be fixed next time. Uh, there was something else I need needed to mention. Oh, balls on toast. I don't, I, don't, I don't want to be dragging this out for too long. Oh, that's right. Um, So last time, guys, I actually tried, tried something a little bit different. Uh, on the final Prisoner of Azkaban video, I actually used a, a Harry... A, a legacy... Uh, Hogwarts Legacy soundtrack for the backing music, guys. Uh, how did you feel, feel like work, guys? Um, we're, we're going to be going back to the Oblivion soundtrack today. Oblivion is one of the Elder Scrolls games, you know, like Skyrim and stuff like that. Um... I did get one comment saying that apparently the audio levels weren't great because it was a long old video, so I couldn't check the whole thing. Uh, that the audio le levels would be quite loud and quite quiet at, at different times, and so if that's the case, guys, we'll stick to Oblivion music. But it would be nice to get a little bit of Harry Potter music in there, yeah, a little bit. We always start off with what I believe is the Chamber of Secrets PlayStation 2 theme or something like that. I always put that at the start of these videos for whatever reason. I know it's Sorcerer's Stone, it's, uh, it's Philosopher's Stone, well there's says Sorcerer's Stone there. Uh, so yes, let me know, know your feedback on that. Um, I guess, guys, that's all the housekeeping, which is kind of crazy. It kind of is. Prince of Azkaban, what a fantastic book, but I am so intrigued. The first chapter in this book, Goblet of Fire, guys, gets me so ready. Gets me so ready for it, and it's it's fascinating, guys. We'll, we'll get into it, but I, I believe it is the first time that we've had a chapter... Nearly exclusively, because there is one line at the end of the chapter, exclusively without Harry being in the room. Which is very interesting, guys. It's very interesting when stories do that. I always I always note that... Oh, I've got to start talking about Persona games again. But Persona 4, I believe, is one which is nearly exclusively with the protagonist. Whereas other Persona games have scenes without them in. And it kind of just seems a bit weird. Because you're meant to be playing this character, but you're hearing stuff that you're not meant to know. Yeah, but, but then again, Harry is... Okay, we will discuss it, because he is technically in the room, I guess you could say. Yeah, kind of. Anyway, guys, I don't think I've got any more notes left, apart from to say blackmail. I was, writing, I was writing my notes for this video yesterday, guys, and I came up with that doozy. So we'll get to it when it becomes relevant. Let's start. Oh my goodness gracious me. Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire... Chapter one. That feels weird to even say. Actually, it's actually very important for me to mention now, guys. Um, 
if you are joining us in Goblet of Fire, because it's very possible that you're starting off with this book and everything, guys. Over on the Patreon, we have a, the Harry Potter book review, which is something that you could be a part of if you join there. You can join it for as little as, as you want and get access to everything on there, including Buffy the Vampire Slayer, soon Invincible. I hope to get that started on the series, but also other things that will be coming up in, in the future. The Lord of the Rings movies, uh, the Hobbit movies. Although you will need your own copy of those movies to sync to, specifically. Um... But yes, uh, so yeah, so, so basically at the end of this video, we'll go through the Harry Potter Book Club comments, which is your thoughts on these chapters that will be covered today, guys, which is the first three chapters of Goblet of Fire. And it's great fun, guys. It's the best part of doing these book clubs is is reading your opinions on uh, on these chapters. Like you may have questions for me, like asking for my opinions, giving your own thoughts and everything. We always have a very good discussion at the end of it, guys. And so if that sounds like something that you would like to do, please do check it out. I think I feel like it's going to be particularly interesting for the Goblet Five because apparently it is such a tangent from what the movie showed. Um, and so. If you want to be a part of the Harry Potter book club, you can be. If not, guys, don't worry. Oh, I should also say, whenever uh, I post a Harry Potter book review episode on YouTube, uh, there will be at least two other episodes in the future. And so these episodes tend to be like five hours long, guys. And so if you get to the end of this stuff, which is av available currently on YouTube for free, guys, you can go and back the Patreon for as little as you want and get... Probably close to 10 hours more put on me waffling on about these books, guys. And so if that's something you want to check out, you can. Like I say, though, guys, never feel like you need to back it. There you go. It's just there if, if you want to. These book reviews will be coming to YouTube for free. I just, I just had to make that very clear this time, though. Because like I say, I feel like some people may have like dropped out of like maybe previous book clubs. I'm thinking, oh, Goblet of Fire. Interested in this one. So I, I, I had to mention the, uh, the whole shenanigans with the Patreon there. Either way, guys, I'm pretty sure that is all uh, the housekeeping I need to do. Thank you so much for do joining us for putting together the, the side panels for this video, guys. They'll, 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 be, they'll be appearing with the chapter chapters in just a moment. And as always, thank you to uh, Max for putting together the summaries that I will be reading at the start of these chapters before going into my own notes. And so let's get into that now with uh, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. See, it feels so weird even saying that, guys. Chapter 1... Riddle, the, 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 the Riddle House. Let's try that one more time in English, Veggie. Chapter 1, The Riddle House. And here is Max's summary. We begin our story with a tale of the Riddle family murders. Fifty years prior, Tom Riddle Sr. and his parents were found mysteriously murdered in their home. A man named Frank, who was a caretaker at the house, was arrested, but after no evidence was found, he was released. He continues to care for the house until we reach our current events. He sees a light on in the Riddle House at night and assumes its children, um, and so he goes to investigate. Upon arrival, he hears two voices speak to each other of a plan and using unrecognizable word, uh, words such as Muggle and Quidditch. A large snake then hisses at, at one of the voices and... To his horror, Frank saw who the voice came from. Before he could scream, Lord Voldemort ended his life. 200 miles away, Harry Potter awakes from a dream. Thank you very much, Max. And I've just realized I haven't changed the side panel, which I always forget to do. So I will do that right now. So there we go. Excellent. Thank you very much, Jonas, for these wonderful side panels as well. So let's get to my notes, guys. This is how it usually works. I read out the summary and then we go into, into my thoughts on the chapter. What a chapter, guys. I mean, I appreciate Max's summary. It, it's, it was rightly so quite short. But that's because the, the detail of it is really what we will be discuss discussing, guys. And so... Uh, it's a brilliant chapter and it has a lot of setup from like as it says 50 years ago So we hear about little Hangleton uh, and the riddle house being on the hill and deserted in in current days um, And we hear about what happened half a century ago being something which is still a talk of the town You know when there's little um, Gossip going on they talk about the horrors that happened one fateful night 50 years ago It is a muggle town I wasn't sure at first, guys, but it, it absolutely is confirmed to be a muggle town. So, obviously, any supernatural stuff is completely over these people's heads. Um, it's such a different start from the book because, it, obviously, each time we start off with Harry in his room or... How's the first book? Where's the first scene set in the first book? 
It's him under the stairs, isn't it? So yeah, we've started each book in Harry's room, in inverted commas. It's very... I mean, this is such a different take on it. Uh, fans of the books, getting, uh, getting through all the books, would most probably have been expecting... Harry was in his room working on his homework and everything. No, 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 guys. Guys, we're going dark in this first chapter, guys. Which is kind of interesting because the other two chapters are uncharacteristically upbeat for the start of these books, I would say. But this one, this first chapter is was amazing, guys. And you know what? I think the I think the movie did it very, very well. I need to rewatch the scene, quite frankly, because frankly. Cause um I feel like it did a great job, but I'm pretty sure that the Greys are at the house in the movie. Well, we'll get to it, guys, but there, we'll get to it, because I'm, I'm jumping way too far forward here. Um, so, yes, we hear tell of, like, the, 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 this, this family which were, like, rich and, like, pretty cruel, not very friendly and so on. Uh, the son being particularly, like, like the two elderly parents and, and the son. And one morning, the maid walks in to find all three riddles dead. Now, this is quite a sh crazy, guys, because obviously I'm covering the Harry Potter musical at the moment, and we have basically just got to these characters dying, and so it's it's quite a, a astonishing that we basically hear it at the same time. I did hear that the music did have some spoilers, but I couldn't hold off on posting the music musical until we got through all the books, you know? That would just take too long. And so there you go, guys. These three bodies are found. Um, we do hear that that the reels were all unpleasant people, but particularly the sun was unpleasant. I, I I I do want more context for that, or maybe they were just simply unpleasant people. I I definitely want more context when it comes to uh, Mama Voldemort. <laughs> Yeah, I really do, guys, because I'm wondering if it's going to be like an Inspector Call situation, quite frankly, considering he's, that this family is notoriously mean and rich, you know? And so, but it's a fascinating, it's so fascinating to start off with Voldemort, guys, considering Prince of Azkaban had so little uh, Voldemort in, to actually start off with the long, by far the longest Voldemort scene that we've had, probably, unless you count Tom Riddle. I, I still consider Tom Riddle to be a separate character, guys. It's kind of silly, because he isn't. I did for the longest time think that the that the that the um the fake name was Tom Riddle and not Voldemort, which is obviously insane. <laughs> I did for the longest time think that though. Um, as we hear about the the Hanged Man pub guys, and in the UK we do have some dark pub names. None around here that I can think of. Not, not in my area, but you do get some pretty extreme names for pub names and everything. I don't know if that's really the case elsewhere, guys. I feel like British pubs have their own kind of um, flavour to them, you know what I mean? Uh, but the, I, I feel I feel like I've seen the Hanged Man pub before. I don't know where it would have been, though. Because obviously these names are reused a lot, but obviously there, there are some... Definitely dark names. Actually, there is a pub in Oxford. Actually, that's very, very true. A pub which I only discovered very recently. I, I didn't go in there. I haven't been in there yet. But it's called the... I feel like it's called the Black Boy. Uh, the Black Boy Pub. Oxford. Um, yeah, the Black Boy. Um, and from what I gather, originally, the, the connotations of that name were of, of a slave. I could be wrong, so if you're from Oxford and you know better than me, then please correct me. It then got changed to being a a a kid, like a, a, a chimney sweep kid, I think. And then I feel I feel like I feel like now it's just um, the logo for it is a black horse, which is probably the right choice to be honest. But it's it's still called the Black Boy though. Like I say, no been in there. It looks quite it looks quite swanky to be honest. But yes, the UK does have some pretty dark and strange names. And so The Hanged Man, you probably would get a few pubs called, called The Hanged Man in the UK, quite frankly. Oh uh, yes, we hear about Frank Bryce being arrested. And I got down here, new character, question mark? The penny hadn't dropped yet, guys. You then find out that it's the guy at Gardner, and then my next note is literally in capital letters, Sykes. Which we talked about uh, in, in the movie reaction to... Uh, Goblet of Fire, guys. That, I feel like, has got to be one of the... Okay. So, Trigger showing up as Barty Crouch Senior. 
still blows my mind, guys, because Odeful's Norses, I go on about it all the time in these videos, guys, but Odeful's Norses was a very big deal in, in, in UK culture, guys. It really was. Like, a, a, a significant... Um, you, there are very few people that didn't like Odeful's Norses back in the day. Um, and... Well, I... I I can't remember why I was saying it. Oh, yes. And so when when Trick, when when Roger Lloyd Pack, I should say, shows up as Barty Crouch Senior, um, I was so shook. And it's also awesome, guys, because I've actually seen him in, in, live in, in a play as well called Art. It's an excellent play, guys. In fact, at um, in an A-level, I did A-level theatre studies. And at, this is a boring side track. Tangent, I'm sorry, guys. I did uh, theatre studies at, at, uh, at A-level. Because uh, I love acting, guys. It's it's, uh, it's something which I've always really enjoyed. And um, we went to see Art, starring with Roger Lloyd Pack as uh, one of the main characters. Uh, another one of the ca main characters was Nigel Havers, a very well name known actor in the UK. It is Nigel Havers, is it? And I always get his name modeled up with someone uh, someone else. Nigel Havers, it was. And during this play, um, Roger Lloyd Pack. Trigger slash Barty Crouch Senior did this amazing monologue where he comes in, he's just like, like, like spewed. It's the, it's the explanation for why he's late. So, like, blah, 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 blah. And at the end of uh, theatre stu th th studies A level, he had to do a monologue, and I chose to do that monologue based on Ro Roger Lloyd Pack's performance. So, seeing Roger Lloyd Pack slash Trigger from Odeville's Nonsense slash Barty Crouch from Goblet of Fire, being in Goblet of Fire, still, it still seems so insane. But Sykes being in Goblet of Fire is almost as bizarre, guys. Because Sykes is another generation of co comedian, guys. It really is. I think that his heyday was the 70s, in fact. Um, and so it was a delightful choice. Um, I always I always liked him when I was a kid watching his show. I think his show was actually called Sykes. Um, I have since watched another show which he starred in with a Spike Milligan called Curry and Chips. I like that one, guys. I'd say it's pretty racist. <laughs> I mean, I, very often, guys, I'm willing to go into sitcoms and think, okay, is of that time, if someone uses it in an inappropriate term, it's purely because at the time people were using those terms, I can still filter through the program and get enjoyment from it. Not so much Korean chips. <laughs> okay, that is... Yeah. Let's move on. But yes, Sykes, though, it, it, he, is, he is a very lovable British comedy institution i guess you could really say and so seeing him show up in this as frank was an absolute blooming treat it really was um i did say in my reaction stupidly that he's partially blind he's not guys he, he, he was partially deaf from birth i believe and obviously we find out that that frank is as it says very deaf he's not completely deaf he is very deaf and so th they, they they cast right i would have liked to get Frank's, we'll get to it, guys. But F Frank is a, Frank is a baller in this scene that's coming up. He really is. I would love to see that, but I can understand why they didn't. But um, I, I gotta just mention again the fact that Sykes in Harry is in Harry Potter. That would have been probably one of the least likely names. I'm so sorry about this lighting because it's all suddenly gone all dark. Also, if I finally got round to getting the audio exclusive version of these of these out, I apologise for talking about stuff which you can't see. But right now the room is like light, lighting, up, lighting up and darkening down because I'm using natural light as well as a, a stand light as well. And so, like I say, next time it should be right. But right now it's looking very dark. It's because we're talking about the Voldemort scene. That's why. Um, so yes, for most of my notes here, I've written down Sykes instead of Frank, which is bad, guys. But it was, I just love the fact that, that Sykes is in it, guys. Like I said, I would have never... I wasn't even sure if he was still alive at that point. And so the fact that he was in Goblet of Fire was, was a joy. And I'm pretty sure he doesn't say a single word, does he? In the movie, I don't think so. He definitely doesn't say what he says in the book, that's for sure. So we find out that he's a World War II veteran. Um, and, and, and the town is talking about how, how it must have been Frank, because he's the only one who had the key and everything, and how, how he's always, always been an antisocial person. It's actually the cook at the, uh, Hanged Man who's saying this. I've got a note down here saying gossiping gits, because I really don't like these people. Everything that they're saying, particularly, oh man, I can't remember her name. It's not Pat or 
Polly or something. It's, 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 it's a short name, but the cook at the um, at the hangman is the type of gossiper that I really can't stand. It's like, oh, I always knew there was something wrong with him and all this sort of stuff. It's like, shut up, mate. In fact, the landlord says, uh, war turned him funny, if you ask me. Which is... I mean... It, it, we, I mean, I was just talking about some of the uh, you know, talk of the time, guys. Um, let's get my, my notes out of the way from the cook. So basically, she's saying because he, he's always been so unfriendly and everything, you know, she's always had suspicions about him and everything. He's unfriendly because of his experiences in the war. I think that that's what we can probably take away from it. Maybe, or maybe he is just a quiet guy. There is no crime in being a quiet guy. And just because you're a quiet guy doesn't mean that you are the one who is guilty of murder. Granted, he was the only one who had the key and there was no break-in, but the fact is, these people are enjoying themselves. I think that's the best way of putting it, guys, because it, it like says that how they're, uh, how they're having to downplay their excitement about it happening, you know? Because they don't care about the riddles. And even if they even if they did care, they're still... You get the impression that this community would still be enjoying it. In fact, we later on, we hear from the cook again saying how if Frank had a decent bone in his body or something, he would leave the town because everyone doesn't trust him and everything like that. It's like, I hate, I hate these people. I hate these people, guys. And it goes into the fact that we have met very, 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 very few, if, if any... No, oh, no, Hermione's parents. Decent muggles that we have met at this point in Harry Potter. So you can't say Jacob from Fantastic Beasts, who I love. I freaking love Jacob from Fantastic Beasts, guys. Um, these muggles are your, your almost stereotypical nasty people in my opinion especially as i'm i'm a quiet guy guys you know i know these videos i start screaming stuff and everything all the time and everything but in real life i i ha i suffer from anxiety guys and you know i've i haven't been, been been to a war situation and but i know from you know family history and everything that it can completely destroy people mentally and everything and so for someone to fight for their country and then to be treated like that does genuinely upset me guys um i shouldn't really go into too much detail but my my grandfather who i never met he died before i was born um uh, was was very badly mentally affected by things that he had seen in wars and it was it was wars after the second world war i believe i don't think he would have fought in the second world war I, I, I actually don't know so i shouldn't say either way but um he, he would have been around that age, though. He would have been... I'm honestly not sure, but but he was... Um, it's what they used to call shell shock back in the day. Uh, he was very badly affected by it. And so, these people talking about this guy, guys... I'm not, I'm not saying that I'm anything special for that, guys. You know, there's veterans getting brought back from wars, like, every single day now, who are going through exactly the same sort of things. And the fact is that some people out there are going to still treat people who have uh who have experienced these things in this derogatory way but back then it really was a case of um of just like you know downplaying what the fact it was called shell shock at all rather than post-traumatic stress disorder was a downplaying of what the human how this human psyche can be broken and so i hate these people in the hanged man <laughs> I thought I may as well have just said that, quite frankly. But yes, I, I am not a fan of these people. Um. So yeah, I got down here. A war turned him funny, if you ask me. The landlord said, and I've got my notes like treatment of veterans back then. I'm sure it does still happen now, but I do feel like it was the general consensus that you know, uh, shell shock, pull yourself, pull yourself together, and everything like stiff up a lip and all that sort of stuff. You know, uh, yeah, it bothered me. Either way, let's move on. Uh, we hear about Great Hangleton, which is, which is, a, 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 I presume, the town next to the village. Or it could just be a, a larger village. Um, where, Sykes, I've written down here, but Frank is being held by police. And Sykes says that the only person that he'd seen on the grounds that day was a pale, dark-haired boy that no one else had seen. Is it interesting that we're hearing this? Because this can't be something that Harry is. 
Because later on, when we get to the scene with with, with Voldemort and, and, and Wormtail, spoilers if you haven't read it, um, that makes sense because Harry is kind of in the room. But this this backstory, is Harry learning this or is this exclusively us? Because we've always been in Harry's head. Um, incredibly, it doesn't mention Draco at all during these chapters because you know we mentioned it many times before. But Draco d d Draco does live rent free in his head. But this stuff about the uh, little uh, great Hangleton, some of this guys, this can't be. This must be just for the reader, right? Which is going to be interesting going forward. I wonder if there's going to be other scenes which are completely disconnected from Harry, or is there a reason why Harry would be witnessing this aspect of it in the dream? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Maybe it's something to do with Frank's life being taken, like seeing uh, your flat life flashing before your eyes sort of thing. Maybe. Either way, let's move on. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Yeah, so we hear about the, the, this boy, this dark-haired boy, which the music got quite wrong, uh, who was on grounds, which you've got to imagine is Tom Riddle. Um, the police... The police Police report says that the victims were in perfect health apart from they were dead, which is a, a brutal way of putting it, guys. I always assumed that, uh, that the uh, the killing curse induced a heart attack. I don't know why. I've, I've always thought that, but an instant heart attack, which is, you know, that's it. They're like instant heart 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 failure, you die, you, you've died. But no, it seems to be a, it seems to be even more magical than that, where you, you essentially stop living. It does say that there is uh, the faces of the victims were all faces of terror. Now I'm pretty sure that unless that is a riddle exclusive, is not represented in the movie. So what I'm, what I mean by that is if if the three riddles getting killed here are terrified for another reason much like Frank is at the end of this chapter, then that might might explain why their faces are petrified in fear. But if it's saying that the killing curse... Um, if it's saying that the killing curse uh, causes that, that, that fa that, the face of fear to, to appear, presumably because of what you're experiencing, that isn't represented in the movie, is it? Cedric certainly not. Um, Sirius certainly not. We don't really see Harry, do we? Oh, we do. Yes, we do. Yeah. So, so, um, yeah. The, the the face of fear seems to be a book exclusive. And quite frankly, guys, I unless it is a riddle exclusive. And like I say, guys, if there was some other reason why riddles were all going ah when 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 they were petrified in that way in their death then that's fine but if it's saying that the spell itself does this then the face of fear i think should have been in the movies guys because that is properly scary maybe they would have thought it would have been too scary but just imagine that shot of, of cedric on the ground and everything with his father screaming over him oh man that may have been too scary for for kids guys I would have liked it though. I would have liked it. It certainly puts a Vadakadavra over on another level. Yeah. So we'll, we'll we'll find out. I'm sure in the, in the book what exactly the deal is with the, the faces of terror that they that they have. But if it is the case that it's the spell that has done that to them, that should have been the movie. But it may have been a little bit too dark for children to see. <laughs> Much like the lighting in this room sometimes. <laughs> Uh, Sykes is let go. I've written down here. I will... Okay, I will endeavour to call him Frank from now on. I'm, I'm just excited that Sykes is in this guy. Seriously. Uh, yeah, he, like I say, he, he had a sitcom. I don't remember much about it, but I remember watching it when I was a kid. When I was way too young to understand what was going on. This is on reruns as well. I'm pretty sure that Sykes was a 70s show and I wasn't alive in the 70s. Um, where, um... It was Sykes living with his sister, I think. And the sister was played by Hattie Jakes. Who was a very, well, a, a famous uh, actor from the UK from the 60s, 70s and 80s. And 90s. I think she did do a few adverts in the 90s, in fact. She, she's best known for a, a series of movies called The Carry-Ons. Which I, I must have mentioned ad nauseum in these. And she very 
famously plays matron in many of them which is something which used to have in british hospitals um including in, in carry on matron where she's the main character um but yes that was a tv show called sykes starring the guy who played frank in the movie I'm loving this extra Frank stuff though, guys. I really am. I can completely understand why they have to, have to cut it from the movie because at the end of the day, or at the end of this chapter, Frank ain't going to be that important going on. Well, unless he is. Unless he is. Unless he turns out to be Voldemort. Uh, anyway. Sykes would play a fascinating Voldemort. <laughs> anyway. Blah, 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 blah. Sykes is let go, uh, actually stays in the cottage for two more residents in that in the house, obviously spanning probably a couple of decades there. Uh, neither of the residents stay for very long in the house. I mean, like, it, it does have, this house does have a very spooky, ominous feel to it. And it is also just becoming more and more decayed. It's kind of like falling apart and everything. It's It's got um, weeds like growing all over the garden and everything. He's, uh, but, you know, Fre Fre Frank is, is keeping on top of it as much as he can. Um, we jump forward to two, present day and the current owner doesn't actually live there. Uh, he apparently is keeping it for tax purposes. No one locally really knows what that means. I know if that means that the, that the locals don't really understand the concept of it or if there's more to play. I did think that maybe Voldemort may have bought it, but why though? Why would he do that? But then again, why would he be there then? You know what, guys? Maybe it's the opposite of the Dursleys, where Tom, as a child, it was the first place where he felt genuinely safe and loved before, obviously, what happened happened. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's why Voldemort wanted to go back here. Maybe we'll find out, but why, why they would go back here is very interesting. Uh, so the person who owns the house, I, I think is just a random muggle. I, I, I do. I don't think it's anything to do with muggle is, uh, like Voldemort is, um, muggle more, I nearly called him there. Uh, I don't think it's anything like Voldemort has bought the house and is like pretending that, you know, I, I, I think that they just broke in. I, I, I think they just simply broke into, um, into a house owned by someone else. Uh, but we're getting ahead of ourselves again. Uh, Sykes is nearly 77 now, um, and he's still paid to do the gardening on the ground and, and so on. Um, we do hear here that, that uh, Frank is very deaf, like, like I say, like the actor was in, in the movie as well. And like I say, I I'm pretty sure that he was born with, with, with very hard of hearing, I believe. Uh, local boys have, vandalized, have been vandalizing the house. Um, they've even broken a couple of times. They like smashed the windows with stones and everything. Uh, I think that we get we're meant to be given the impression that Frank believes that this is because the, you know their grandfather or, and their father had been saying you know what what Frank what Frank did you know supposedly, and so the the kids feel like they can just go and vandalize this place without getting in trouble. Or boys are just being boys because obviously this sort of thing does happen in real life guys maybe they're just maybe it's because frank is so much older and everything and has a phobia of the police as we hear about um going on what happened with, with the riddle family um maybe it is that they that they that, that um that they just ha feel like that, that they have a, fr a free pass to do whatever they want on the ground so like ruining the lawns and everything like I say, even breaking in, in breaking in a couple of times. Um, yeah, it says that the boys know of Frank's devotion to the home, almost being obsessive, which is very interesting, guys. I'm, I, I don't think that's that's for any reason regarding Voldemort or the Rills or anything. I think it's probably because he is someone who has come back from the war with a stiff leg injury, um, and is probably. A recluse because of what he witnessed. This is all sub. You know, this is all conjecture. Is that the right term? Um, and so he probably is just someone who likes to keep himself to himself, and because of that, is hyper focused on trying to keep the garden in the best way that he can. Uh, and so that's why that line about him almost being obsessive about it. Um, 
So this is interesting, guys. So if Sykes is nearly 77, correct me if I'm wrong, that means that he must have been 27 when the Riddles died, which is kind of crazy. That is... Right? I, 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 my, unless my maths has gone completely insane, guys. He must have been nearly 27 when the, what happened to the Riddles happened. So he came back from the war at such a young age, and it basically that's that's it for him. That's his life done. And, and that, you know, going back to what we were talking about, the people in The Hanged Man, is absolutely blooming heartbreaking. It really is. That is a very, very sad life. Um, he just wants to be left alone, you know, to, you know, Oh man, it's sad guys. I really like Frank. I really like Frank. He's my favourite muggle so far in the Harry Potter series. But yeah, unless my maths is horrendous, it means that he was actually in his 20s when what happened to, to, to the riddles happened. Um, generations of the fa of the villagers uh, still believe that that he did it, which, uh, which I got down here is a horrible life. But he still stays there, though. And uh, like I said, I'm pretty sure it was the cook who like says that if he did, he, he had, if he was decent, then he would leave. Uh, but leave for where though? He's gonna just gonna go somewhere else where people are going to. Or he he may believe that he's gonna go somewhere else and they're gonna treat him just as bad. So why up uh, up here, you know? Unless there is a reason why he is particularly um, loyal to the Riddles guys, but I can't see why it would be. Unless it's something to do with Voldemort's mother. But he didn't recognise Tom when, when he saw him, though. If that was indeed Tom, which I believe it is. Um, he gets up in the night, much like in the movie, to go and, uh, to, to go and fill his uh, kettle for a hot water bottle. Um, when he like looks out the window and sees a light on in the Riddle house, he actually thinks it's, it's a fire been started by, by the ki those kids, in fact. Um... Like I say, as I remember, I should really go back and watch it, guys. I normally do before doing these chapters, but in, the, in this one it's kind of different because these three chapters are either not represented in the movie or very different in the movie. Although I do feel, I do feel like the movie did do a good, a good job of this opening scene. I do. Um, so different, such a different start from this, but from one of these movies. Um. So, like I say, as I remember, we see... You know what? I'm going to go and rewatch it now because this is silly me saying, I think. Okay, so I've got some corrections to make. One most important correction is that he doesn't get up from his bed in the movie and he's not filling a hot water bottle. He's making a cup of tea in his in his uh, day clothes. That is very important. guys. I'm sorry. I, I, I should be making mistakes like that, but yeah, he's actually, in, in the movie, it's clearly, it's the end of his working date, and he's making some tea, it's nothing to do with hot water bottle, as it is in the book, so that is one of the main changes, a lot, a lot of you guys have been saying that in Goblet of Fire they made huge changes in the movies, I think that that is the pinnacle of that, I'm guessing that is the main change that you're talking about, the fact that he's making a cup of tea, rather than uh, a pot of tea, in fact, Instead of filling a hot water bottle. That is crucial. And that is... You know what? That is outrageous that they changed that for the movie. Anyway. And also, he doesn't walk through the graveyard, guys. In my head, I've got a clear foot, a clear, clear image of Sykes, Frank, walking through the graveyard past the Riddle tomb to the house. But no, it's not. So I presume that, that when we get to it later on in the movie, uh, it is actually going to be in the churchyard. Because I thought in the movie... The, the grave was in the grounds of that house. It, it, it isn't, guys. And so, in the book, we hear about the fact that the riddles are actually, bought, are actually buried in the local church, not in the grounds of, of the house, which is something which I thought was the case, but it's not. That scene's still so good. It's still so good, guys, but there's subtle differences. I I mean, my God, Frank is barely... He, he, he like, goes up the stairs. Here's, like, a tiny bit of the conversation. We do hear Wormtail trying to change Voldemort's mind, which is very interesting, which we'll get to in a moment. Um, and then, obviously, we see Barty Crouch Jr. there. Spoilers. I don't know. I feel like I shouldn't be saying that, guys. <laughs> it seems insane, doesn't it? Um, and then it's just, like, a violent like, no. In fact, in the book, it's like, we don't hear the spell. That's interesting. But then again, you don't need to say the spell to do it, do you? We, we see that all the time in, in Fantastic Beasts. 
which I do feel like kind of takes away from it. But yeah, in the book, we, 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 we don't hear like the, the, the challenge or anything, which would obviously be a... Well, it would be interesting. When we get to the defense of the Dark Arts lesson, which I presume does happen in this book, it'll be interesting if Harry does ha think, ah, hang on, that sounds familiar. You know, we shall see. Uh, do, 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 do. Also, the, the light that's going on from the house could not be interpreted as a fire in, in in the movie, but that is such a minor thing, you know, because we're meant to think that it is the kids who have just basically broken into this into this house in, in the book. Whereas in the movie, it's such a short scene; they just want to get it going. But my goodness, the the, the book version of it is wonderful. My most interesting note I've got down here: we hear the term mullion windows. Now I've never heard that before, guys. I had to look it up. From what, I get, from what I gather, a mullion, and please, if you know more about windows than me, which is most likely, please do correct me if I'm wrong. If you have like a set of windows, a mullion is the solid bit in between, if, like say you've got three windows next to each other in like an old house. And in the, div they're divided by thin like columns of stone or something. I believe that that part is the mullion, right? Much like the the, the thing that are vertical on staircases are balusters, balustrades rather than balusters. The banister is the... The banister is the bit that goes across the top of a staircase. You know, to put your hand on. Uh, but the, the vertical parts are balustrades. And I, I never heard the term mullion windows before, guys, and so that was very really interesting one to me. Uh, so we hear, we like, we, the first thing that we hear the Wormtail saying is, um, like, you know, are you still hungry, Lord? I, I hope there's still more in the bottle. And I was thinking, hang on, Wormtail is not feeding Voldemort with a child's milk bottle, surely. Because that would be, that, I, that I'm not surprised did make the movie, guys. Because trying to stop that from being funny would actually be quite difficult. Um... I got down here that it's interesting that Voldemort refers to Pettigrew as Wormtail. I got down here, not. Oh no, yeah, but not. But uh, Barty isn't there. Uh, yeah, like Voldemort would refer to Pig, uh, Pettigrew as Wormtail. You'd imagine that Pettigrew asked to be called Wormtail because the rest of the like the, the rest of the Marauders don't hang on to their their aliases like that later on do they i'm sure that there is probably a part where we we hear um you know sirius being called padfoot or or uh, lupin being called uh uh mooney um in fact i'm not even sure if there is the fact that voldemort refers to pettigrew as wormtail just seems weird to me it's definitely more bad guy name um, like Worm Tongue from uh, The Lord of the Rings, which I presume is where they got the idea, where, where the idea for the name came from. I'd say probably yes. <laughs> but Voldemort, unless Voldemort is is teasing, you know, like um, he's using it as a term of abuse to Pettigrew. He's like saying, "Hey, friend, the you know the person that you're meant to, you know, the person who pretended to be friends with these three, well, who was a friend with these three people that would call you Wormtail. I'm going to call you Wormtail, so now you remember it every single time. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's some subtle form of torture. But yeah, why is it? It's I just find it I find, I find it fascinating that, that Voldemort would even know that he's he, that he was called Wormtail, let alone use it. You know, it's, he never calls him by his name." Maybe this is some some disrespect. The fact that you won't call him Pettigrew as well. Hmm. I don't know. Let let me know what you think, guys. I, I found that very very interesting. My next note is in capital letters. <laughs> Voldemort is drinking Nagini's milk. <laughs> now that is an image, guys, which I never would have thought we would get. <laughs> Voldemort drinking Nagini's milk via a a, a baby's bottle. By Pettigrew. That would make a great Christmas card. <laughs> what an image. What a fascinating image. Uh, again, guys, I, I do feel like that would be quite funny. 
if it was to be in a movie. Now, we might hear it, guys, because the, 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 the voices are so murmured in that scene. Like I say, I don't remember Pettigrew saying, hey, maybe we could choose any of, uh, another wizard to, 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 to target. That is actually in the movie, guys, but I didn't remember it at all. Because obviously I was speculating what what uh, Dumbledore could be meaning when he was saying about how when when you save a wizard, a special bond is formed between the two. I feel like I feel like Dumbledore is probably talking emotionally rather than literally. Because he can't tell me that every single time that someone saves another wizard, that that wizard has to then pay that debt off. Because I feel like there must be a discrepancy there. <laughs> In the movies, I'm, for some reason, my movie goes straight to uh, Harry and the gang saving Draco in Deadly Hallows Part 2 uh, from the from the fire. And then Draco not repair, re, re, not repaying that? I, I don't know. I feel like Dumbledore's probably talking um, less literally than I'm taking it when it comes to that bond. Um... What ever happened to her? Oh yes, Nagini, guys. I, I, no, I admit, I, I I'm so sorry that I haven't got the Fantastic Beasts uh, Secrets of Dumbledore edit out yet, guys. The last few months have been very, very difficult for me when it comes to getting time to do things, and that obviously move reactions takes a long time for me to edit, guys. I don't know how these other YouTubers do it, guys. I know that some YouTubers who aren't that much bigger than me have entire teams of people who like edit up all their things and everything. I, I, I don't understand how to even start the ball wrong with that. And so I do all my editing. And so I'm so sorry that my move reactions are so slow. It sucks, guys, because I know that they were very, very popular. And I'm sure that the channel would be in a different place if I'd focused just on doing those. But the edits, I, I just don't have the time to do guys and so I, I really am sorry about how long it's taken me to get the Fantastic Beasts uh, series out and start another series as well because I'm saying that we're going to start another series once we finish Fantastic Beasts um, but that being said what the hell happened to the guinea <laughs> oh no you see, I, uh, I see that's technically a spoiler isn't it I shouldn't really talk about it I shouldn't really talk about it I'll, I'll say this. I would have expected Nagini to be in Secrets of Dumbledore. There we go. That, that's all. I, I won't say any more to it. But from what I gather, she just isn't. Strange movie, guys. But I really enjoyed it. Oh, I loved the ending. Loved the ending. Although a lot of people have pointed out that something else should have happened at the end, which I agree with. Anyway, we all talk about it some other time. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. I know that some Harry Potter fans haven't actually watched uh, Fantastic Beasts, so I shouldn't actually say all that. Uh, Voldemort says they have to wait for the plan, for their plan to start after the Quidditch World Cup because of security. Uh, that's that the Ministry is uh, checking and double checking people's identities. I presume that means on a literal polyjuice sort of sort of way, like you know, reverting spells and everything like that, like that sort of uh, identity. Apparently, that apparently the, 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 that's the. Um, the ministry is doing this because they don't want the muggles to find out about what's going on. You know, it's, it's, it's to keep it all hush hush and everything. It's nothing to do with Voldemort or anything. Um, but that means that Voldemort's plan has to be uh, pushed back. We do then get the moment where Pettigrew is obviously Frank is overhearing all this. I should say, guys. Uh, Pettigrew is suggesting that they could choose any other wizard instead of Harry. Um, and I put down here, is this the Bond thing that Dumbledore was talking about? I think it must be, guys. If that goes on to pay off any more, it will be very interesting to hear. Interesting to see, I should say. Uh, Valdi suggests Pettigrew offering to find another suitable wizard as an attempt to desert him. Um... Yes, yeah, so, so so Voldemort thinks that that Pettigrew just wants to like because Pettigrew offers to go and find someone else instead of Harry, uh, and Voldemort says that you'll just you'll go and then that'll be it. You, you, you won't come back again. Um, and it's quite a sweet moment where like Voldemort says how how he how how he revolts Pettigrew. 
So we get some real human time with Voldemort and Pettigrew here, guys. We really do. And quite frankly, Pettigrew is talking back a lot more than I would expect him. He's like an advisor. He really is. Whereas in the movie, I'm pretty sure he did, after the first scene of Goblet Fire, does he say another thing in the entire series? Oh, he does that at one point, obviously, when Dobby does the thing. Where is Dobby, guys? All you guys have been saying that Dobby is in the book so much more. Uh, we shall find out if he's in Goblet of Fire, of course. Um, but yeah, it's a real back and forth where they're like, you know, and, and, and Pettigrew sounds quite like um, sulky. But even Voldemort's like saying, oh, I, I disgust you, don't I? It's like, what, we, Voldemort's seeing this? It's a real heart to heart between Pettigrew and, and Voldemort, guys. Again, whilst Voldemort is drinking the kiddies' milk, this is not something you're trying to expect in this book. It's fascinating. It's absolutely fascinating. Um, so this Pettigrew knew, knows Vol, Vol, Voldemort has his reasons for wanting to use Harry. Um... Now, from what I gather, Voldemort is saying there that he, Voldemort hasn't told Pettigrew the whole truth about Harry and, and, and him and their bond. Um, although Voldemort didn't know about the... does Vol, Voldemort does know about the connection that they have, but he doesn't know that Harry is a Horcrux, right? This is the complicated part. Because he obviously he knows the, the the bond and everything, but here he says that Voldemort like says I've told you several times before I have my reasons for wanting Harry. So I presume that he has not told Pettigrew, and I presume he also hasn't told any of the uh, uh, any of the Death Eaters either. And so I presume that all the Death Eaters aren't aware of the bond between Harry and and Voldemort. Probably not. Voldemort would probably keep that away from keep that away from everyone. In fact. Uh, Pettigrew talking back a lot, like I like I say, it's not like he's like you know completely outright disagreeing with him, but he's trying to argue so, uh, like doing something else, and that is not something which I would expect Pettigrew to ever do, guys. Seriously, it's it's quite a fascinating take on him. Um, like I say, it's like it's like more like he's his advisor here rather than his slave. It really is his servant, I should say. Um, we hear about Bertha Jorkin's disappearance. Um, I've got down here that Voldemort does sound a little bit more normal that, than I would expect it. I feel like that's the whole part where, I don't know, I feel like in the movie he's always talking in speeches, whereas here he's just having a chat with Pettigrew, and like he's even like talking down about his how 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 Pettigrew's disgusted by him and everything like that. It's fascinating, it really is. Wormtail, I need so. Oh yeah, he said <laughs> this is a great line. He says because Pettigrew offers to. Um... Oh, I can't remember. I can't remember what he offers to do. But but but, but Voldemort basically says, Wormtail, I need someone with brains, someone whose loyalty has never wavered, and you unfortunately fulfill neither requirement. That is a great line. That that that's such a like great knockdown by Voldemort, which is again not the tone which I would expect Voldemort to talk in, but it's it's a blooming joy to hear it really is. Um Pettigrew does sound very, very sulky. Says how he bought Bertha Jorkins to him. I should say at this point, I don't really know who Bertha Jorkins was was making these these, these notes. I still really don't. She's she was a she worked at the ministry, didn't she? And she was on holiday, I believe, when, when she accidentally, I guess, bumped into Pettigrew. It's amazing that that, that hadn't happened before. Because you'd imagine that Pettigrew had, at times, turned back into his human form. While staying with the Weasleys. At some point, surely. Maybe not, maybe not. Voldemort says he will allow uh, Wormtail the privilege... Uh, 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 Okay, I've written that down wrong, but I believe it's uh, that Voldemort uh, allow Wormtail the privilege most of his followers would give their right hand to perform. Uh, obviously, regarding what happens later on, uh, uh, later on in, in in the book. Now, if that is what happens in the movie, he will be giving his right hand to perform. So it's actually quite it's quite sassy. We've got sassy Voldemort here, which is always a good thing. But yes, I believe I believe that, that is a re what he's referring to—the fact that at some point Pettigrew will be cutting his hand off. That yes, it does it does happen, doesn't it? 
It's all a bit hazy for me, I'm afraid, guys. But, uh, but yeah, I feel like that is... You know when Darth Vader is a little bit sassy in Star Wars? And, it's, and it just feels a, almost out of nowhere. Not in A New Hope. If you've seen the first Star Wars movies, guys, Darth Vader in A New Hope is a completely different character. He's an absolute nutcase. He's just screaming his head off all the time. He is so different than he is in Return of the Jedi. But in Empire Strikes Back... He is so sassy. And a lot of people say that in Rogue One, which I didn't particularly like, guys, I, I must admit. Uh, Rogue One, he, he's he's being a little bit too sassy in his scenes. In Empire Strikes Back, guys, he is he is the most sassy Sith going. Admittedly, there's only two, but he really is very, very sassy. And so hearing sassy Voldemort is excellent. <laughs> he's making put jokes about giving your right hand to give your right hand. Um... Sassy Darth Vader, guys. It does happen. I'm trying to think of an example. Oh, when, uh, when like, uh, an, offer, uh, the, the, an officer on, um, uh, is it the Executor or is it just an, a Star Destroyer? I think it's just the Star Destroyer. So I, I know a bit about Star Wars, guys. I'm pretty sure, no, I'm pretty sure the Executor is only in Return of the Jedi, in fact. Executor? Yes, Executor. Was Executor in Empire Strikes Back though? I don't know. Either way. Um, it's an officer on a Star Destroyer, like, screws up. And like says, okay, I'll go and apologise to Darth Vader, uh, Lord, Lord Vader in person. And then, like, a few scenes later, it cuts back to him basically dead on the ground. And Voldemort saying, Voldemort? And Vader saying, apology accepted. It's very sassy. Very sassy. So we've got some sassy Voldemort, which is lovely. Not something which I was expecting, but um, we got sassy, we got sassy Harry and sassy Voldemort guys. Their bonds are this, you know, they dovetail. Either way, uh, Bertha is dead after being questioned by Voldemort, presumably more than questioned. She was a member of the Ministry, uh, and I believe that that she accidentally ran into Pettigrew in like a in a wizard like. Um, in or something? I, I, we don't get the whole load down on it, but from what I gather, Pettigrew got very, very lucky in finding uh, Bertha. I should say, guys, Bertha is a great name. Not one which you hear much. When I hear the name Bertha, I instantly think of the an old children's TV show called uh, Big Bertha. It's like this. I, I feel like I've talked about Big Bertha in these videos before, guys. But it, you know, you know, Postman Pat. I don't know if you would know Postman Pat, actually, but it was similar animation to, to that. And it was about, like, um, a, a factory where all these people work. But the main machine in there was, like, this big face which would, like, make things come out of its mouth and everything. It sounds quite scary when I say it like that. But, yes, Bertha. Uh, if you type in Big Bertha, it'll probably come up with what I'm talking about. Let's, I'll check that, guys, because that... Big Bertha... Okay, so I've just learned how to spell Bertha, guys. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it is B E R T H A. I've always spelled differently. And it's not Big Bertha, because Big Bertha was a howitzer from, I believe, the Second World War. So I didn't think it was called that. It was just called Bertha. If you type in Bertha TV series, it should come up with it. There's only 13 episodes. And like I say, it was quite similar animation to Postman Pat. Um. But yeah, that, that's the only thing which comes to mind when I think of Bertha. It really is. It, it, you don't really have people keep call, being called Bertha anymore. I guess not. No. So, one of those names, guys. One of those names. Uh, Nagini passes Frank, much like in, in the movie. I feel like Nagini in the book is meant to be... I don't know. I, I, I was going to say that Nagini in the, in the book is meant to be larger, but I'm not sure if he is. Because obviously we're hearing it from Frank's point of view. Actually, that's a, that's a crazy trick. The first two characters that we've heard from the point of view of are in, in this series are Harry and Frank. I do feel like in the future we might get some chapters which might be in the in the mind of Ron, which I think I think that'd be and in the mind of Hermione. Imagine that, that'd be awesome. Oh, you know what, guys? Someone should rewrite these books in the standpoint of those characters. Oh, I would be interested in that. Oh, guys, imagine Ron's. It doesn't start in, um... Oh, what's it called? The, the place where Harry lives. Damn it. My mind's gone blank. Um... Yeah, you don't know, like how the, the book and everything starts in, like, Privet Drive. There we go. I got it, finally. 
but it would start in the uh, in the um oh no i always forget this name it's not grotto is it the, the place where weasley's live weasley's home i always for burrow there we go it starts place in the burrow Oh, I would read the hell out of that, guys. Maybe just Philosopher's Stone. And Hermione. Imagine a book written from Hermione's standpoint. Fine. Oh, my goodness. Someone did that. Someone must have already done that. Someone must have already rewritten the books from the standpoint of Hermione and Ron. And if not, why not? Because that is such a good idea. I would read that. Particularly Ron's, guys. Because obviously we, we know how down he is on himself. And there's going to be moments where Ron's like, think, oh, great work, Harry. But he's also a little bit, oh, I wish I could do that. You know, Ron being Ron, you know. Hermione would be, well, Hermione would see herself as the main hero. That, oh my God, that has to happen. And I don't mean that in a bad way, guys. Uh, what I mean is, we're not going to be hearing how, how condescending Hermione is and we're not gonna you know we're not gonna hear the bits where Hermione's being a bit naggy and all like that's not not Nagini naggy um we're not gonna hear it from that standpoint we're gonna hear it from a standpoint of Hermione knew that she did the right thing by telling Ron that it's Leviosa oh my god that has to happen that happened there must that someone must have done that already rewritten philosopher's stone from the standpoint imagine the intro to, to hermione's imagine the intros to ron's they could even go and do a draco one uh not really because he's not really in, in 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 he's not really involved in the he's not woven into the story as much oh i'd pay to see it guys that would be so good that would be so good philosopher's stone Ron Weasley in the Philosopher's Stone and Hermione Granger in the Philosopher's Stone. I would read the heck out of those. And you know what? I feel like someone must have done them. Because that is such a great idea that I can't be the first person to come up with that. Uh, anyway, let's move on because we need to get through this first chapter, guys. I apologise uh, about how long this is, guys, but it was always going to be long. So, yes, Nagini passes uh, into the room. Voldemort tells Pettigrew to invite uh, Frank in. Uh... Once Frank gets into the room, he's a lot braver. Yes, because obviously at this point, he's like, he's, he's his, his palms are sweating and everything because he's hearing about this murder along with all these other terms that he's never heard of before, like Muggle and Quidditch and everything. And so he's obviously absolutely terrified and, and the Blimmer Snake. But as soon as he enters the room, he goes, clicks into brave mode. And it says like, it was just like it was during the war. And so he is just this absolute baller all of a sudden. Um, and he like he's calling out Voldemort's like yeah I heard about your plan and everything like that and it, it, yes it's brilliant and he like says um, how his wife knows that he's here and so if anything happens to me then then she'll like call the police and everything it's so smart smart unfortunately she's she, he's talking he's saying it to the wrong guy but Frank is smart and brave I really like Frank guys he's he's definitely my favorite Muggle that we've met in Harry Potter because I love Draco. Voldemort instantly says, no, you don't. <laughs> you don't have a wife. <laughs> I have in capital letters, Frank mocks Voldemort for calling himself Lord. <laughs> it's amazing. He says, I don't, I, I don't think much of your man is my Lord. <laughs> it's amazing. Oh, that would have been great to have it in the movie, guys. But I can understand why they wouldn't. Um... And when Voldemort kills Frank, uh, like Wormtail like turns the chair around to reveal what Voldemort looks like. Although Fra Frank doesn't describe it, and in the future chapter, Harry Harry's trying to remember what it was in his dream, but he can't. Um, and so when Frank is killed, Harry wakes up at exactly the same time. Now, in the movie, that doesn't happen. That's interesting. That's actually very interesting. In the movie, uh, when Voldemort gets killed, Harry's just like, like going, uh, 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 like that. And Hermione's got this, like, um, uh, not a wand, sorry, a candle right over his face, <laughs> just like waiting for a blown fire or something. Um, and so he isn't, he isn't woken up by Frank dying. And, you know, I always assumed that was probably just a movie trope, you know? Because you see that sort of thing, you know, in, in like things which have no... 
no spookiness or magic magic or anything you know a trope of waking up having a dream or something that actually does happen you know but no th there does actually seem to be an actual connection to it regarding uh harry's scar as well and so fantastic first chapter guys i feel like this went on for quite a bit i do feel like the next chapter will probably be significantly shorter in in note wise but because it is largely recap but what a great start to this book. I loved it. R.I.P. Frank, but Frank was such a baller. I loved it. I really, really did. Uh, and so, yeah, great stuff. Just a great chapter, guys. Uh, I do feel like this is going to be a chapter which people are going to say that it's going to be up there with their, with their favourites of this book. Or, okay, favourites so far in the books, maybe. Because I don't know, guys. The, 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 I imagine this book has quite a few good chapters. I can't imagine it's just that first chapter that you've been waiting for me to get to. But... I loved it. I thought it was brilliant. Let's move on to chapter two. I'm pausing for a moment because I feel like there's something else that I should have said in this chapter. I can't think of anything, guys. Other than, other than the fact that, that I think the movie did a good job. It couldn't have been too dark. It couldn't have talked about the Riddles family. How could you have done it? Unless we have a scene in The Hanged Man, where like someone's grandfather is telling them about the murder mystery that happened 50 years ago. And then it transitions to Frank going towards the house. I think it would have been strange. It'll be interesting to see how this, is it HBO? How, how, this, how this TV series is going to um, cover this, but... Honestly, I'm not mad with how it was done in the movie at all, guys. The fact it was psyched is just a treat to me. Um, but it's very short. I feel like having Barty there is almost takes away from the scene a little bit. No, not really. It's just weird that he's there. He just says, I want to fail, my lord. Um, I should also say is that... Um, Pettigrew's reaction to Barty being outside the room. I feel like in the book he's he is meant to be a lot more someone's outside? Whereas in the movie it's like Hello. That's my impression of Timothy Spall. I'm sorry, Timothy Spall, if you're watching. Oh, he was in a really good uh, I watched something I did Okay, I was in the room whilst my brother was watching something. Um when he was around uh, a few weeks ago. Was it called the Sixth Commandment? Yeah, it's called the Sixth Commandment, guys. It was made this year, and and yeah, starring Timothy Spall. Uh, he is a fantastic actor, guys. He is. I, I. It's such a shame that whenever I see him, I think about that horrible moment where uh, I was talking about him and didn't serve him in a shop because I was too busy talking about him, which is incredibly unprofessional of me. Um, and he did not look happy. <laughs> I need. I need to contact Timothy Spall. But yeah, uh, my, my bro was, was watching a, a show called The Sith Commandment. Apparently it's based on tr a true story, guys. I gotta admit, I uh, I didn't hear about this because apparently it was in the news a lot when, when it happened. Um, uh, you know, if you go and watch The Sith Commandment, I don't want to spoil anything about it, but apparently it's about real life events and everything. It's uh, it's very good. Timothy Spall is wonderful in it, obviously, because Timothy Spall is in wonderful in everything. Um... But yeah, apparently it's based on a true story, guys. And that went completely over my head, I must admit. Very well done. No, it's a very well done. It was made by the BBC as well. Uh, either way, guys, uh, enough waffle about that. Um, let's move over now to chapter two, The Scar. Harry wakes from his dream of a man being murdered uh, to his scar burning. The dream was strange to him as he was seeing it from the point of view of Lord Vo of, of Voldemort. Really? That, I thought... Okay, we'll discuss that because I thought that he was trying to remember what Voldemort looked like in it. But maybe he's trying to think, remember what Frank looked like. He was definitely seeing Frank's reaction as well, wasn't he? Oh, you could be right then. You could be right. Realising what it uh, could be mean harry starts to think uh, think if he should tell anyone he goes through a scenario of what ron and hermione would say uh, 
with very accurate portrayals of his best two friends. It's absolutely, yeah, it is amazing. He also thinks of Dumbledore, but decides this is too small to disturb him with. Oh, oh, oh Harry, shake my head. It's gone down here. At the moment, uh, he remember. At that moment, he remembers that he has a godfather to write to, and ends up sending a letter to Sirius Black to make, which makes him feel better. So great summary, uh, Max, as always. And like I say, uh, yeah, you, you could be right about it being from the point of view. Um, yeah, you might be right because, as, as I remember, he does he does remark upon Frank's reaction. But I thought he was trying to remember what he saw in the chair. So yeah, I, I'm honestly not sure. But either way, it doesn't matter. Great, uh, great summary. And again, thank you so much, uh, Jonas, for these wonderful side panels. Um, so, uh, Harry's at the Dursleys. I've actually got down here in, in, in quotation marks, uh, good. I'm actually really glad that we're at the Dursleys because I actually fully expected him to wake at the Weasleys. The reason why I'm happy for that, guys, is one, because we get more Dursley stuff. I enjoy Dursley stuff, guys. I, I honestly do. <coughs> and obviously, the, the movie Goblet of Fire is the first time that they're not in it, which is quite bizarre. Um... But also, it means that we're going to have the full experience of the Weasleys. Because at the end of this chapter, well, not at the end of this chapter, at the end of the chapters that we're coming today, he is going to go and stay with the Weasleys for the remainder of the summer, summer even though it's just a couple of weeks. Um, which is good, guys, because I, I, I'm hoping we're going to get some more lovely Weasley Borrow goodness, because that was so good from Chamber of Secrets. It really was. And so hopefully we'll, we'll be getting more of that. Obviously, there's going to be more going on after the uh, World Cup. Um, why would the scar be painful this time? Or has Voldemort not killed any humans since his birth? Yeah, no, I, I, so, so I presume that the night that Frank died was the same night that Harry woke up to to the dream i presume it's happening at the same time why would voldemort scar hurt why would harry scar hurt this time it's probably something really obvious guys which i shouldn't remember from the movie but is it saying that voldemort hasn't been killing people for for a long time because he's so disheveled has he finally been up to the point where he's actually able to use the killing curse on people and because of that Whenever Voldemort does it, Harry feels it as well. I'm honestly not sure if that's the case, to, to be honest. But yeah, or, or it's because he saw it in his dream and that's why it started hurting. I'm honestly not sure why the scar's hurting, I, which I'd imagine it is explained here. If, if it's explained in the movie, I apologize. But honestly, I don't actually remember it. So, so which is nice, guys. It means I'm just re reliving, reliving, uh, reliving the story by the book, which is how it should be. Um, but yeah, I presume that means that Voldemort himself hasn't been killing people. He's been killing unicorns with the help of Quirrell. But was it because this is the first time Voldemort has killed... Oh, no, because Bertha was presumably killed. Yeah, because... Uh, like... Um, I can't remember what that Voldemort says, but he says something about Pettigrew getting the same thing what, what that Bertha did. And Pettigrew likes, like, oh, you're going to kill me? Um, so presumably Bertha was killed by Voldemort or maybe maybe he's killed by Pettigrew we just don't know guys in fact I was going to say because at the end when Cedric dies uh, Harry's scar doesn't go off then I don't think but that well because it's already going off because Voldemort's in the vicinity but also it's Pettigrew that kills him isn't it and so in the movie we shall see if that's the same in the book. Either way, yeah, I'm. A, I feel like I've forgotten something really obvious here, and so I thought I'd just put my hands up and say I'm an idiot. If you if you got this far through my book reviews, guys, and you don't know I'm an idiot, bless you, seriously. Uh, Harry's birthday's already been and gone. Um, how and why was Harry dreaming of this specific moment? Is it because Voldemort is becoming more powerful? It's true, actually, yeah. If there's actually going to be a kayfabe reason, or maybe it is just the connection, or maybe it's just convenient plot, or maybe it, if there's an actual, actual reason beyond Voldemort and him have a bond to why he jumped on this moment. 
Because presumably Voldemort spent many an evening just getting fed by Pettigrew. <laughs> Why did he have that dream? Because um, it would have been really upsetting. Uh, so, uh, blah, 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 blah. Harry's forgot, uh, forgotten Bertha's name. Yeah, he's desperately, that's right, because he's, try, he's trying to remember the, the details of the plot that uh, Wormtail and Voldemort were discussing. And so he, he's, he unfortunately has forgotten Bertha Jorkin's name, which is very interesting, guys, because that means that the reader has power over Harry. That's very interesting. This is the first time where the reader has had power over Harry, surely. Surely you can't be serious. I'm pretty sure it is. Uh... Being reading the Quidditch book that Ron gave him for Christmas, uh, flying with, with with the cannons. Yeah, so it's uh, because I remembered that Ron gave him gave him the book, and so I had to just quickly have a look up to see it was actually when it was actually the Christmas before that Ron actually gave him flying with the with with, with the cannons, which Harry's been reading up on. Um, doesn't the cannons don't have a region, do they? They don't have a country, do they? Because presumably there is international and then club level, but. That's a good question, guys. Uh, Chudley. Is Chudley a town? So I've certainly never heard of it. It could be a wizard's town, of course. It would be, wouldn't it? Um, apparently, it's a type of dog food. <laughs> I had to get some for Rudel. Yeah, apparently, it's a dog food. Uh, so, presumably, there is a wizard town called Chudley, then, guys. That's very interesting. I've never even thought about, about that before. Yeah, because it has to be, like, if it's a city or a town and everything, it, presumably all these teams have, have locations. Uh, although we do hear, we do find out in this chapter that there is not an English team. And I feel like we may have known that from... Because I haven't rewatched it yet, so we'll, we'll cover it when we cover it, guys. But when they're walking through all the tents at the World Cup and you see all the different flags and everything, I can't remember if there's Union flags... Not Union Jacks, because it's not on a boat. Um, I can't remember if... No, I feel like there are Union flags, because I feel like I pointed out and someone in the comments said, oh, nice, nice for getting the ter this term correct. So yeah, we do know from the movie that there is a British team. Sorry, that's not correct. There's a UK team. There is a difference. There is a UK team rather than an English, Scottish, Northern Ireland and Welsh team. It's a bit of a shame. Because there aren't many, there aren't many sports where we play as a union, guys. There really aren't. In the Olympics, we're UK. In tennis, it depends who's who. It really does. It really does. It's actually disgraceful, guys. I feel like I've mentioned this before, but um, that you know, virtual tennis. Great games. Um, I love them, guys. I've got you know the arcade that I built. That's one of the games which I play the most on it. Um, and back in the day, there was a there was a virtual tennis game which which came out um, at the tail end of Tim Henman's career, who's an English tennis player, and at the start of um, Andy Murray's career, who's a Scottish tennis player. And so both of them are, are in it. And this is a disgrace, guys. And this is a Japanese game that's done this bizarrely. Although presumably they asked um, representatives of those players what flags to use. Tim Henman's flag when you put when you select him on on the on the option screen is the George Cross, which is England's flag. It's a white flag with a red cross on it, guys. When I used to work in in the shop where Tim Free Spore was annoyed at me, uh, a lot of American tourists would come up to me and say, "Hey, hey, what's this flag?" And it's the white with with the red. I have to explain. It's the flag of the country that you're in. <laughs> but um. Yeah, so, so Tim Edmund would have the English flag, uh, the George Cross. And Andy Murray, the Scottish player, would have the Union flag, which represents England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. So odd. It's so odd that that was... The, that, that, it's like, it, either, either have them both being uh, UK, or both... Have, or, or have one England and one Scotland. Don't have one England and then one UK. So disrespectful to Andy Murray in my opinion. But there we go. Um, and so yes. Now I remember it. I'm sure that in Goblet Fire movie we do see Union flags. Which means that there is no England team. But like I say. We don't. I'm trying to think of other sports where we play um, as a UK team. 
The Olympics we are we play as UK. I'm genuinely struggling to think of any other sport where we play as a union. Rugby it's all separate, football it's all separate. I literally can't think of another. I'm, I'm, I'm sure there must be some guys, but I literally cannot think of a non-Olympic sport where we play as the UK. I mean, whenever Scotland and Wales and Northern Ireland are, are, are in like sporting tournaments, I'm always rooting for them, which is quite interesting, guys, because it's usually the way around. Um, like I say, people in not not all the case, not all the time, not all the time at all, guys. But but when Scotland and England are in are in the same like tournament. Or Wales and England and everything. Usually, people from not who aren't from England kind of want England to lose. <laughs> That's obviously not across the board, though, guys. But whenever Wales or Scotland or all Ireland are in something, I'm always up. For, I'm always back in them. Um, yeah, that's a bit unfair. I'm sure there are some people who who want the local teams to win. You know, even England. <laughs> um, either way. So yes, there is no English team on Quidditch. If you can think of another sport where we play as the UK guys, let me know, because I just can't think of one. There must be one. I just can't think of a single example of where we play as the UK outside of the Olympics. Either way. Yeah. Either way. Because uh, it's so nice how, like, the Irish team is all, like, you know, you know um, bigging up its cultural, st well, cultural stereotypes, I guess you'd say, but by its culture, and then the, the the Bulgarians come in with theirs and everything. It would have been nice if there's like a Scottish one, a Welsh one with a red dragon and everything. Oh, it would have been so cool. Yeah, that would have been cool. But no, apparently it's just the British team. E white. You'd imagine that the Welsh, Scottish, and uh, and Northern Irish uh, Quidditch players wouldn't be too happy with that. You would imagine. Maybe not. I don't know. I'm thinking way too much on this, guys. Let's move on. Uh, we get some wonderful callbacks to the times where Harry's been in pain. Because he's like saying that he's used to pain by now. He remembers when uh, he had no art, he had no bones in his arm after a Quidditch, after a Quidditch match and had to have him grow back. Doesn't spe specify Gilderoy at this point, but obviously that was because of Gil Gilderoy. It mentions the Basilisk bar bite they had had on the same arm. Um, another example of him feeling pain is losing to Hufflepuff in the Quidditch. It mentions it there. Um, we hear about uh, how uh, the Dursies are still pretending that Harry's go to Sir Brutus's. I've got down here school, but I, I feel like it's meant to be like a young offenders place, right? Is it? But then again, he wouldn't be let out though. So I guess it is just like, a, it's just a school with a really horrible name, but we hear about Sir Brutus's again, which is wonderful. I've got down here in capital letters recap, which is a big chunk of this chapter. Um, Harry looks over and sees like some birthday cards that, he, that he'd got uh, the, the previous few weeks. Uh, Hermione and Ron had sent him had sent him cards. Harry imagines. Oh yeah, so, so like like Max was saying in in the intro, uh, Harry like imagines what the reactions of each of his friends would be if he told them uh, about about the pain, and how Hermione would be like, oh no, <laughs> like like really really like you know, panicky, you're like but no not just panicky but very very interested, like very almost as if she's enjoying it, you know, much like we were talking about with uh, the ha Hangletons before. Um, he imagines that Hermione would say if she knew uh, the scar, uh, scar scar hurt that she would tell Dumbledore and uh, start researching immediately on if scars can be cursed and everything. Um, he then he then thinks about uh, telling Dumbledore, but uh, he then imagines D Dumbledore in his robes, but on the beach, like rubbing sun tan lotion into his face. Which is an amazing image. Surely wizards wouldn't need sun tan lotion. Because if they don't need to visit the dentist, do wizards have to brush their teeth? Have we ever seen wizards brush their teeth? I feel like if they didn't have to brush their, their teeth, we would have heard about it by now. But we know that they don't need to visit the dentist because dentists are just not a thing in this world. So... If they don't need to brush their teeth, then surely they don't need to use suntan lotion. Try 
just trying to think if there's any particularly bronzed characters in, in Harry Potter. You would have imagined Gilderoy would be the one to be bronzed if anyone was going to be bronzed. No. You, 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 we have some characters which sound like they probably need vitamin D. Some vitamin D. Like, you know, so maybe, I don't know. This is the pointless conversation that we're going to have in this video, guys. But can wizards get sunburned? <coughs> Maybe we'll find out. Maybe we'll find out in the World Cup. Maybe we'll find out in the World Cup. Um, do, 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 do. Harry then imagines what Ron would say. Um, he says, "Oh yeah." So, so like Ron would start like speculating, speculating if Voldemort is nearby. He says he can't be. He, here, can he? He would be trying to do you in again. <laughs> do you in again. Such a British term. I wonder if people outside the UK hear that term. He would be trying to do you in again. I wonder if that is a confusing term to anyone from outside the UK. But that's what that's what Rod says though. Uh, and he says that he would tell uh, Arthur. Giving uh, the book a chance to recap exactly Arthur's uh, situation. He imagines what the Weezies would do if, if they knew how Molly would fuss even more than usual. And how Fred and George would think that Harry had lost his nerve. Which is a very strange term uh, there, there for it. But I guess that's Harry worried about being looked down on because of it. Because the thing is, he doesn't want to tell people because he also feels like it may be a bit silly. In fact, Harry wants to tell someone he he, he, he sees a, as a parent who he can tell this to without feeling silly. Uh, which is obviously what you know a, a parent or guardian it, 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 it does throughout uh, you know people's childhood. Um, we we find out that he's already been writing to Black. In fact, Black has actually uh, written to him a couple of times. Um, Harry's threat at the end of Prince of Azkaban to Vernon has led to the, to uh, the Dursleys allowing him to keep all his wizarding stuff in his room. It's proper blackmail here, guys. And like I say. We have literal blackmail in the next chapter. When I came up with that joke, I was so happy. I literally went straight onto Twitter and tweeted it immediately. Uh, Sirius has been writing to Harry, t has written back to, written to Harry twice. Both times that they, they, they've they been delivered by large tropical birds. It's very interesting that it's not just owls that do it. I wonder if owls are maybe the fashionable creature or maybe the, maybe I'd imagine it's probably that owls are the best for it because they, they're obviously known as being very intelligent. So maybe they're e better at giving information. But maybe it's a security thing as well where Sirius is having to use tropical birds to send it. But I don't feel like it is. I feel like I feel like he's trying to get a rise out of Harry's, like like you know, like not like not a rise, but like to like um to surprise Harry. I feel like I feel like the term "get a rise out of someone" is to make them angry, isn't it? So that's not correct. But to give Harry a surprise with these tropical birds appearing, you know. Um, so it does make me think if owls are just like maybe the fashionable choice or maybe they're just the best choice. Um, in the UK at least. I'm not sure outside of the UK what, um, what birds are used. In Fantastic Beasts, I feel like we see owls in the, in the uh, US min ministry. In... In the second movie, I don't think we see anything in the French one, do we? I'm not sure. Anyway, it's interesting that it's not just owls. Uh, Hedwig is not happy, was not happy with, when the birds were, were drinking out of his tray. Hedwig is a bit of a diva in this chapter, guys. In these two chapters, I should say. But yeah, Hedwig not happy at all with these other birds drinking out of him. But Harry's absolutely just in awe of these birds. Uh, the birds make Harry think of white sandy beaches and, and that he hopes that Sirius is having a good time. i got to say, guys, maybe it's because I'm a movie watcher. I assumed that from when Sirius flies off with Buttbeak at the end of Prison of Azkaban to uh, Order of the Phoenix when he physically comes back. Because like, the fire thing is in this movie, isn't it? In Goblet of Fire, pretty sure. Is it or is it? I, I feel like it is. Um, I assumed that Sirius was having a horrible time. I assumed that he was like, you know, having to like live like the, the life of a an escaped criminal. 
you know, un underground and everything, never being able to talk with any anyone or anything. Uh, but it sounds like it's very possible that he's actually having the time of his life, which is not something which I expected. Seriously, I thought that it was, um, yeah, I thought he was actually having a really bad time. But at least Harry hopes he isn't, and it looks like, you know, going on the birds that, that uh, Sirius is sending over, he's not having that bad a time either. I got down here Harry's letter. Do, 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 do. Damn, I haven't got any notes on that, but I've got about oh yes, yeah, so, so Harry's going to be writing to uh to Sirius about about the scar. Um oh that's right, yeah, so so ha, ha, we 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 I think it's the letter that Harry is currently writing. We hear what's inside it, that the that the dirt that the that Dudley is on a diet. Now he's been sneaking uh, donuts into his room at night, and when Vernon and Petunia found out, they threatened to reduce his pocket money. And when they did that, um, Dudley threw his PlayStation at the window, which is a very teenager thing to do. No, not, not to be concerning, guys. It's a very emotional time, but to basically do something that damages you more than any, anyone else, you know. But um, it's so strange. It's so strange that we hear the word PlayStation here, guys, because it could have said game console. But it chose to say PlayStation, and I looked up, guys. Apparently, apparently, Goblet of Fire is set in 1994, right? When is Goblet of Fire set? 1994. When did the first PlayStation come out? The same year. In fact, this is September, right? No, hang on. It debuted in America the next year. Oh my giddy goose. In the book, does it say play, space, station? Maybe that's how they got around it. Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire is set in August 1994. I knew there was something off about the times. The PlayStation was released in Japan in December 1994, and it made its way to America in September 1995. So it couldn't have even been the next year, considering we're in August now. I knew there was something off, guys. That did seem really early for a PlayStation. I feel like I'm I've got, I'm missing something here, guys. But that does that, that 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 seems like a weird discrepancy. If Goblet Fight is set in 1994, then that's then that's kind of like a like, like I say. If it says PlayStation, that's fine. I mean, really should have said Sega Saturn, which is my personal cons favorite console of all time. Uh, I guess the N64 would have been at that time as well. But yeah, PlayStation, I did feel... I see PlayStation as starting around like 1996, 1997. Because I'm pretty sure that Final Fantasy VII came out in, in 1997. Um, what a game. Favourite game of all time, guys. Um, I like the remake, but that ed the ending of the remake was terrible. But the original Final Fantasy VII is so good. So, so good. Uh, Dudley has not been playing Final Fantasy VII, unfortunately. He has been playing Mega Mutilation Part 3. <laughs> now that is such a name of... But, but I, I'd imagine it's a, it's, a, it's a play on Mortal Kombat. Because at this time, Mortal Kombat was really kind of the only really violent thing. This is before you had things like... Um, what was it called? That Plum Manhunter... Not Manhunter. There was, a, there was a game by Rockstar. I cannot think what it's called, but that caused loads of controversies. And the GTA games hadn't, hadn't, hadn't been started at this time, and so um, I'm guessing that Mega Mutilation is a is a parody on Mortal Kombat. It's got to be, guys, because Mortal Kombat really was the game that kicked off all those sort of things. But the fact that it's called Part 3 is such... That is a sign that the person who's writing doesn't play video games. <laughs> Part 3. Granted, nowadays you have games called, being called Part 3, which are usually story-based games. Like, say, uh, Life is Strange had Life is Strange Part 3, but it, you know, the game is called Life is Strange, but it did have, have a chapter which came out to call Part 3. But back then, guys, games were not called Part 3. You had Sonic 3. You had Mario 3. Um, what else do you have 3 of? Double Dragon 3. What other games? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, guys, but video games are my gig, and so I am desperate to think of another free. Warcraft free. Oh, that was well after this. Well after this. 
You don't have games being called part three at this time. And so, much like with Quidditch, it kind of feels like the writer doesn't really get sport. And maybe that's why it's the maybe that's why there's a UK team rather than a rather than a uh, English, Scottish, Welsh, and Northern Irish team because the writer wasn't really that into sports. Um, I should say the reason why I'm saying that there is a UK team is actually UK team is, is actually explained in the next chapter. I am jumping a bit ahead there, guys. Uh, but yeah, very often with Quidditch, it does feel like with the rules and everything, it's kind of like kind of doesn't sound like the the, the author really is into sport. The game be called Mega Mutilation Part 3. Really to me. And you know what, guys? The thing is that all of you now are going to give me examples of games that came out in 1994 which were called Part 3. So before that happens, I'm going to type in video games from 1994 in quote marks Part 3. Mm -mm -mm -mm. No, it's just coming up with loads of YouTube, um, YouTube play-alongs. Yeah, I can't. What what video games? Actually, that's a good question. What video games did come out in 1904? The big hitters, Final Fantasy VI, great game. Donkey Kong Country, I've actually never played it. Sonic Free, mentioned just now, I love it. Uh, Sonic and Knuckles, even better. It's the whole thing where you could put the cartridge inside the other cartridge. Earthworm Jim. Uh, Killer Instinct. That again, I mean, Killer Instinct was almost not not a parody. It kind of was a parody of Mortal Kombat. It was more a parody of Street Fighter. Because when you because uh, you can unlock the final boss, full goal, not full goal. What's the last last boss on Killer Instinct called? Oh my goodness. I feel like it's called Idol or something. I doll, uh, I doll. Uh, you can unlock him by using cheat codes, and when you complete it with him, his 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 end sequence is straight up a parody of Blanka's end sequence from Street Fighter Two, where his mother comes in and says, "Oh, you're my son." Yeah, fighting games aren't really known for their storylines, guys. I feel like Street Fighter Four is the worst. Like, there's this big international fighters tournament that people are joining. My favourite character is called, uh, it's called Dudley, weirdly enough. Nothing like Dudley. He's a very posh bo bo boxer guy. Uh, and the reason why he decides to join this uh, world fighting tournament uh, is so he can get some new roses. As in the, the plant. I don't mean like any trophies or anything. I mean he wants to get some roses. And so the only way he thinks of doing that is by joining this fighting tournament. There is also a uh, a young girl character on that. I can't remember her name. But she joins the tournament because she wants to meet boys. So fighting games don't tend to have their great storylines. Is what I'm saying. Some of the storylines of Street Fighter 4 are so dumb. But I think Dudley's is my favourite. Dudley's my favourite Street Fighter character guys. If, if he was on Street Fighter 6... Which is the new, latest one, isn't it? Is it? Or is it uh, it's six, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and then I would have bought it on day one. Should I go for a real, really, really short tangent, guys? This, this is a tangent, but it's to do with my YouTube channel. I've only ever been given a copyright strike once, and it was by Capcom. And Capcom were being very naughty with it because they shouldn't have been giving it to me. I got a copyright strike because in a video I said, "Hey, Street Fighter V just got uh, just got uh, leaked," because like some information about Street Fighter V had got leaked. I didn't show any footage. I didn't show any uh, any audio or anything. All of, all the video was saying is, "Hey, Street Fighter Street Fighter V is on its way because this thing got got leaked about it." I didn't show the image that got leaked or anything. And they gave me a copyright strike for it. Now, back then, on YouTube, there's lots of... In the fighting game community, guys, nearly everyone got hit by this. If you posted a video about Street Fighter V, you would get a copyright strike. Copyright strikes, guys, are terrifying. They're not like copyright claims. Copyright claims are fine, guys. I get copyright claims all the time. And I'm absolutely fine with it. It's just a part and parcel of being a YouTuber. Um... But when you get a copyright strike, that means that you, you have the potential of, one, losing the ability to, like, have custom thumbnails and stuff like that, but also have the possibility of having your YouTube channel wiped forever. And so Capcom had no legal 
legal basis to give me a copyright strike. Luckily, after a couple of days, the copyright strike got, got removed. But part of my mind still worries that, that there is still that flag on my channel that, that I got a copyright strike. Because, you know, you know, slowly but surely, guys, we are creeping our way towards 100,000 subscribers. And when you get to 100,000 subscribers, you get this wonderful play button plaque. It was one of my... I had two ambitions when I first started YouTube. It was to get to 100,000 so I could get my plaque and go to E3 one, one year. E3 now basically doesn't exist, which is like a video game convention, guys. And so that's not going to happen. So getting to 100,000 subscribers was my is my one goal that I still hold on to. So I can get the plaque with the play button saying that I have achieved this. There is a chance that the fact that Capcom gave me that copyright strike in, incorrectly, that my channel may be flagged by, you know, just like a little tick saying is not eligible for, for the plaque or anything. I don't know if that's going to be the case. We need to get our 200,000 first, but uh, yes. Uh, th th since that happened, guys, it's always been playing on the back of my mind if I will ever actually get, be able to get an official play button. I reckon I will. I reckon I will, because I think that other channels who have had a copyright strikes uh, have been able to get play buttons. But once you get to 100,000 subscribers, you also have more connections when it comes to you know people to contact at YouTube. And so if that happens, I can explain to them the situation. And if they say, nope, sorry, we just can't give you a play button because uh, Capcom did something which is tantamount of illegal. It, it was tantamount of illegal, guys. They should not have done, give, give me a copyright strike. Um, if that happens, then I'll just... Uh, I will commission someone to make one for me. There, there it goes. I will get one eventually. Sorry for that tangent. That is a tangent on a tangent on a tangent on a tangent. But it's because we were talking about... Um, not mental Mickey. <laughs> I don't know. Kid show. Um... Mega Mutilation Part 3. And I just wasted the last five minutes of your life. I'm so sorry, guys. You know what? Let's do this now, because I like to I like to slip it in there. Um, when you leave a comment on this video, start your comment with saying who your favourite... I'd say Street Fighter character is. If you don't play Street Fighter, but you play another fighting game, just put who your favourite character is from that game. Uh, and so yeah, put your favourite character from Street Fighter, any Street Fighter, in into at, at the start of your comment before making the rest of it. If you're not into Street Fighter but you're into another game, just let me know your favourite character from that game. It doesn't even have to be a fighting game. If you're not into gaming at all, you could just start your comment by saying "not into games." Now and then put your comment, and that just means that I know that how many people have got to this point in the video. I'm so sorry about the long tangent there, guys. That is the longest tangent by far in this video so far. Let's move on with this, because we're right at the end of this chapter. So I've got part three in the inverted commas, which just seems weird for a video game to call part, be, be called part three. Um, what would Sirius his reaction to the yes that's right so so i've, I've got um so so uh harry basically has to explain what a playstation is to sirius which is amazing but then i do also wonder what sirius's reaction would be to hearing that name that video game name he's like what the hell are these muggles doing like you know dudley like a 14 year old is he or is he uh, older is he is dudley is the same age as harry right I, I, I'm sorry, guys. My mind's actually gone blank. For some reason, I've got him back in my mind that he's a year older than Harry, but he isn't, is he? I don't think he is. Um, yeah. Serious Black must be thinking, okay, what the heck are these kids playing with? I know the Marauders got up to their tricks, guys, but, you know, someone who's never even knows what video games are. Oh, I'd like Ron to play a video game. That'd be cool. Because he's into his chess, isn't he? His magic chess. I'd love that, guys, if at some point Ron gets to like play like Street Fighter 2, for example. Or that, that even Street Fighter 2 at 1994 would have been slightly dated because then Killer Instinct is out. Anyway, I'm really waffling, guys. So yes, I I, I would I, I'd love to know Sirius's reaction to. <laughs> I mean, he's like I know like a broader everything, but I'm meant to be a godparent as well. What the heck is this mutilation thing? Um, and uh, Harry feels serious in about the scar and the pain and so on and so forth. So sorry about the long tangent right at the end of this chapter, guys. But a wonderful chapter. This is our recap. Usually it's the first chapter, but this really was our recap this time. And so good stuff. Covered all the, all the bases. And now I guess we move over to uh, our final chapter of the day. 
uh, chapter three, The Invitation, which this chapter definitely should have been called Blackmail. This chapter, which coming up, absolutely should have been called Blackmail. Let's go over to Max's summary. Harry heads, heads to breakfast where he sees the Dursleys with the same amount of joy in their faces as they, as they always do when he arrives. None. Turns out Vernon has received a letter from Ron's mother, Molly Weasley, about Harry attending the 1994 Quidditch World Cup, Easter Egg Lol, which is held which is held in Britain for the first time in a in a very long time. I thought it actually said the first time, but you might be right a very long time. I wonder where the sport was actually originated actually. Well we have a lot we have a lot to discuss about, you know, you know things in this chapter, so let's move on. Uh Uncle Mont Uncle Monty, I mean just know it says that as a as a callback. Uh, Uncle Monty Vernon is furious uh not only to receive the letter, but how it's absolutely covered in stamps. Uh, Harry asks if it's okay for Vernon to give him... Uh, okay. Uh, Vernon gives him a definitive no on, on going. I'm not sure if that actually happens. We'll talk about it, but I feel like Harry uses a bit of psychology before even getting that to that point. Harry doesn't mind. He tells his uncle uh, that... He will simply write to his godfather, you know, the notorious mass murderer, Sirius Black. Blackmail. That, that he was invited, but unable to attend the cup. Right on cue, Vernon changes his mind and Harry runs to his room to send the, a response letter. In his, in his room, though, two owls are waiting for him. One is Hedwig and the other is a small owl that Sirius gave Ron. Ron carries a letter saying that they were going to come and get him at 5pm the next day and how Hermione was arriving that evening. Harry sends a letter back saying that the muggles, very rude Harry, we'll discuss that guys because I, I, I have I've, I've made notes on that, uh, are al allowing him to go. He sends his letter to Sirius with Hedwig Harry has all the happy feelings in the world as everything is feeling great for now. Would it be amazing, guys? Because the thing is, you, you guys have all been saying how the book is so different from the movie. At this point, nothing could go wrong. Literally nothing could go wrong. <laughs> I'm guessing it's going to. But this could be the start of a happy adventure for Harry, which is probably not going to be the case. Uh, so, Max, thank you so much for, for your summaries. And again, Jonas, thank you so much for these wonderful side pals. Let's get into my notes for the invent uh, the invitation. Sorry. Uh, Dursley's at bre breakfast. Uh, Vernon's reading the Daily Mail. Now, this is weird, guys. We just had two product placements back to back there. We got PlayStation in the previous chapter, and now we've got the Daily Mail being mentioned here. Now, I'm not going to disparage anyth anything, anyone who who's watching this or, or anything like that, but the Daily Mail in the UK does have a reputation. I believe it's, I believe it's the biggest selling paper in the UK. I think it is. I think it is. But it does also have a, uh, have a reputation for propaganda and fear mongering and essentially, and again, I'm not disparaging anyone who reads it, guys. If you read the Daily Mail, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not criticizing you at all. But the Daily Prophet, you know how the Daily Prophet is treated in the later movies as being this propaganda dirt sheet. It's us and them. Be afraid of people who are different, sort of thing. That's I I've always thought was a parody on the Daily Mail, and so that is kind of what the Daily Mail is is known for. Apparently, a lot of re people who read the Daily Mail read it purely for the sports columns uh, and stuff like that, which apparently are very good. But the yeah, you know, the front covers are all tend to be very right leaning, uh, right leaning. I don't mean far right, but but, but right leaning. Uh, takes on the news. I feel like that is a fair way of putting it. I'm not sure if anyone would say anyone who reads the Daily Mail thinks that it's right down the line. Um, yeah, I, I feel I feel like that's fair. Again, guys, if you read the Daily Mail, I'm not judging you, but that's it. it definitely when, when when he mentioned the Daily Mail, I thought, oh yeah, like the Daily Prophet, because the Daily Prophet is kind of what the Daily Mail is known for being like now. Um, at the end of these movies, I presume it will be in the in the books in the as well, but we shall see. So yeah, that was weird having another product. 
Yeah, <laughs> if it like then said, uh, Dudley was re eating a Mars bar. It's like, what's going on? Did they have to? Did they had to like get like loads of like uh, sponsorships for this book? But no, that obviously didn't happen because Dudley's on a diet, and uh, the um, Dudley is having grapefruit for breakfast. I've only ever had it once for breakfast, guys. It's too, it's too strong. It's too strong a flavor for breakfast. Then again, I guess it wakes you up. Uh, we hear that apparently Dudley is struggling at school um, with, with his grades and everything. Petunia is like making all the excuses in the world for it. But then uh, apparently, you know, in the house, Vernon has previously said how how he, he doesn't want Dudley to be a Nancy boy anyway. Now, that w that term, when I heard it in the audiobook, took me out of the moment, guys. Because that term can mean several different things. It can. Um, the, the way that a lot of people see it is being homosexual. Uh, and so a lot of people would call, you know, people who they, they believe to be homosexual or people who are homosexual or people who they're, they're mocking for, mocking, suggesting that they're homosexual. Um, I should say gay, sorry. But um, uh, it, it's an insult to call someone a Nancy boy because it is, it's to suggest that they're effeminate. Um what Vernon is using it here for is how... Because if you look up the term Nancy Boy, guys, it comes up with several different things. It comes up with the, the, the gay connotations, but it also comes up with people who are all very prim and proper, don't don't make any mistakes and everything. Like, uh, yeah, sort of like, you know, people who try to be perfect and everything. I, I feel like that's the... the, the I mean, that's definitely the, the way that Vernon means it here. He's obviously not meaning it in the way that I just said just now. Uh, but yeah, that did take me out of the moment. It's not a term that's used at all now, to be honest, because I think it's one of these terms which were, which did became become such a a homophobic slur that everyone just stopped using the term completely. That being said, guys, there is a cracking placebo song called Nancy Boy. I highly recommend it. Uh, placebo did some bangers, guys, but Nancy Boy is absolutely one of the best. And it all breaks down, roll reversal, and she's losing my mind. I'm losing my mind, she's universal. Yes. It's an awesome song. Awesome, awesome, awesome song. So yeah, when, when I heard the term Nancy Boy, that's what I think of. I think of the pl placebo song. So Vernon doesn't want Dudley to be a placebo song. Uh, what's their other song? Which I, I mean, I, I like a lot of placebo guys, but there is one which I really like. Um, is it called September... English Summer Rain? English Summer Rain Placebo. It's called English Summer Rain. It's great, guys. As I remember, there's two different versions of it. One of it is quite uh, slow and downbeat. One of them's like really, really fast, but they're both awesome, as I remember. Oh, I'm listening to that after they're finishing recording for the day, guys. I love that song. Placebo did some great songs, guys. I'm just going to look up Placebo real quick. We will get over the content. Songs. Placebo songs. Do you want... Oh, this picture, I remember that. Yeah. But Nancy Boy, yes. Yeah, it's, it's, Nancy Boy is one of their biggest hits, guys. 1996. So it came out after... So it's Vernon Stefan not referring to the placebo song, which would make any sense if he was. Uh, but yes, it's a cracking song. So yes. that When I heard the term Nancy Boy, it just took me out of it. It's like, wait, wait, what? It seems so out of place. But like I say, we don't use that term anymore. You know, There's lots of terms in the UK which were... Kind of acceptable in the 90s, but just aren't acceptable now. Which I'm sure we've discussed ad nauseum in other videos. Uh, the school nurse has noted on uh, on Dudley's increasing weight. Apparently he's actually get strong to, to get school uniforms now. Um, and so after being badgered into it, Petunia has decided that the entire family is going to be on the same diet as Dudley. Although di Dudley is getting larger, larger portions, but quite frankly... It, that's fine because he's eating fruit. Apparently, Dudley really likes the fruit, guys. Just, you know, well, he, he maybe doesn't like the fruit, but he wants he wants other people to not have as much as he does. So, which is a very Dudley thing. Uh, Harry puts uh, Harry uh, Harry's put out the call to his friends about the diet, and so Hermione has sent uh, like a whole bunch of um, sugar-free snacks, and it does say, "Parents, Dennis." <laughs> I said that. Hagrid has said loads of rock cakes, which is amazing. We know what we, Harry hasn't tried anything because he knows what Hagrid's cooking is like. But good on Hagrid for doing it. Molly, uh, 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 
I've got okay. I've got a note here, guys. We will cover it in a moment. Molly said a uh, uh, fruit cake, a load of meat, uh, meat pies, and everything. Uh, I've got down here, and we will discuss it in a moment, guys. That's not great from a parent. From Hermione, I can kind of. It's it's fine with Hermione. Hagrid, we know what Hagrid's like. Molly doing it, it's not great. Then again, what Vernon and Petunia are putting Harry through is much worse. But uh, we will discuss it in one moment. And Errol is still... De de I was hoping that Errol would be retiring soon because there's a new owl, you know, uh, Ron's new owl, which we apparently learned its name in this chapter, which is mind-boggling. Um... <laughs> Uh, he, Errol is still delivering the parcels. Okay, now I've got a note here, guys, and it's something which I uh, have uh, I should have addressed previously. And my note is right here: why I give good people a harder time in these reviews, and I do, guys. I always do. And it, the thing is, guys, is that I don't I don't preface that. I, I don't make it obvious the fact that why I'm doing it. Like. Um, when Harry got the fireball, I was like saying, oh, Harry's on fair, he's on fair, he's got a fireball, he's gone fair, he's gone fair, he's gone fair. And no point did I say how incredibly it is on, how unfair it was that when Draco joined the Slytherin team, they all got Nimbus 2001s, wasn't it? I'm pretty sure. Um, the reason why I didn't is because that's a given, guys. It's a given that the bad guys are going to be immoral and take shortcuts, you know? And we want our heroes to overcome that and everything. And so, uh, we we've talked uh, again ad nauseum about Harry and the Firebolt. And I do see your your, your your point of views and everything. The reason why I go on about Harry having it is because he is our hero. He's our hero, who's who is meant to overcome the odds and everything. And when when he takes what could, in some people's eyes, see be a rich boy shortcut. Um by getting a, 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 a particular broom, albeit being bought from by his godfather, um, it still takes away from it, you know? Um, if you watch sports movies, guys, it's rare that that would have happened. Like Rocky, in my... Uh, Rocky, if you haven't seen Rocky, guys, and you're thinking, ah, oh, it's just not for you, my God, go and watch it, guys. It's not a sports movie. It's not a sports movie. It's a love movie. It's 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 a romance. If in if anything, but it's it's wonderful. Rocky is such a great movie, guys. And when you watch reactions to it on YouTube, at the end of it, everyone is always like, "I had no idea it's gonna be like that." The original Rocky, guys, is a fantastic movie, and it's about overcoming the odds. If Rocky was given some special boxing gloves, which made, which gave him an advantage over Apollo Creed, there would, you know, you know what I mean. Anyway, I, I'm getting sidetracked, guys. The reason why I give good people a harder time in this, like Molly, is that there's no point in me saying it's disgraceful what Vernon and Petunia are doing to Harry. The way that they treat him, the way that he, they don't even acknowledge him when he walks into a room, the fact that they were starving him in the... In, you know, the fact that they're starving him now, essentially, with with this new diet and everything. The fact that Vernon's always furious at him and always blaming him for stuff, even though Harry's not using magic. Harry's getting blamed for all these all these things that, that are happening around the house. Harry has nothing to do with that, and yet he's still getting the blame there's in these reviews guys there's very little point in me doing that because we all know it we all know that vernon and petunia are the scum of the earth they're terrible people guys they really are terrible people and i feel sorry for dudley i really do i feel i feel like i i feel bloody I, I sorry guys <laughs> i feel terrible for dudley i really do at the end of the day guys dudley at the start of these books is as young as harry and he it's Harry's getting child, uh, like he's getting abused as a child from these, from, from these guardians who are mistreating him. But Dudley is getting abused as well. Um, you know, you know, being overfed and everything, and being given his way, and not being brought up to have manners and and, and respect his his cousin and all this sort of stuff. It's it's terrible what Dudley's being put through. I could spend five hours of these book reviews saying that the Dudleys are bad people because they do these things. We all know that they're bad people when they when they do these things, and so because of that, when I start going on a rant about well, Molly, meant to be a responsible mother, you know, she's she's brought up many children in her time and everything, sending someone else's child loads of food when they're meant to be on a diet. It's not that even if it's not their diet, it it the, it's the people who who pay the bills and you know are bringing these children up, you know, albeit terribly. 
say that they're on grapefruit diets for breakfast, they're on a grapefruit diet for breakfast. Oh, God, I don't know, guys. It just seems a little bit bad for, for Molly to, to be sending stuff. Because if Ron sent it, I'd think that's brilliant. But for Molly, it does make me think a little bit differently, though. I'm delighted that she's doing it. Because if, if Harry's, like, going to be malnourished by all this, then someone has to do something. But if he's not getting malnourished, because I can't remember who it was that refers to what he's eating as... I feel like someone says that it's like rabbit food or something like that. Or maybe I'm thinking of something else. Um, presumably Harry can survive on the food that he's been given. We're not given the impression that he is getting seriously malnourished by it. I don't think we are. If that is the case, then Molly really shouldn't be doing it. Now, I'm saying that because... That is my opinion on a moment which can have two sides of a coin, a discussion about. There's no point in me spending most of these videos talking about how the bad guys are evil. Because we know it, guys. We know that Vernon is a violent, nasty piece of work. Petunia is... Bless her, I think that in her head she's doing a good job. As, is, as does Vernon, I'd imagine. But not with Harry, though. With Harry, they are purposely going out of him to essentially make his life a, an absolute misery. Draco giving the entire team Nimbus 2001s in Chamber of Secrets is an absolutely it's absolute liberty. And it just basically means that Quidditch is all about pay to win. And that's it. And that makes the whole thing unfair. But the thing is, I didn't bring that up because we all know this. We all know it's unfair that, that Slytherin all gets uh, all getting brooms that make them faster and better than, or, than the other teams. That's obviously unfair. There's no point in me mentioning that because we all acknowledge that. When it comes to how you're do, doing it, I do feel like there is a discussion. And boy, we had that discussion last book. I'm so sorry about the way that I got into the quit stuff, guys. I'm, I'm never going to be like that again. I watch those videos back and I'm thinking, this just must be unpleasant to watch for a lot of people. So I'm sorry how I was in those videos. I, I, I want to get better, guys. Seriously. Um, and so that's why I give Molly a hard time. I'm, I, devote, I devote more time to questioning Molly's judgment... Than just saying the the Dursleys are cruel. That's why I give good people a harder time in these reviews. Uh, I hope that makes sense, and I'm sorry, guys, because I know that I haven't clarified that in the past. Still, on my secrets of, chamber of secrets videos, I'll be getting videos, and they're right. They're right. They're like saying, "Well, hang on, no, no, so ask a man." Sorry, um, I I still get comments, and they're absolutely 100% right, saying. Well, you, you didn't complain about when uh, Draco gave his entire team uh, Nimbus 2000s, 2001s. You're right, I didn't. I didn't feel like I needed to. And I should clarify that, guys. Whenever I'm going to criticise Molly for sending a, a, someone else's child snacks and everything, I need to clarify the fact that what the does, Dudley, Dudley, the, the, I, Molly is a fantastic mother. Uh, and yeah, that is unquestionable she's fantastic and what a good person she is to be a good mother to someone who's not even in her house let alone one of her children um yeah so when when i say things like i'm not so sure if molly should do that i need to also preface with the fact that i think she's fantastic i really do and she's fantastic for doing it so it's hard to do these reviews sometimes guys <laughs> and to cover all bases you know what i mean I'm never, I never even want to suggest that the Slytherins didn't have an advantage in Chamber of Secrets. I just didn't say it because I, I because it's a given, you know, that I, I should preface it when I'm criticising Harry for doing something similar. Cool. Needed that. Right. Um. Oh my goodness, where am I? Do, 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 do. Uh, so, uh, Ron, Hermione, and ha Hagrid, and Sirius all sent Harry birthday cakes as well, which is pretty amazing. Um, 
And so he's been working through those for in between meals and everything, which is very smart of Harry. He's got like his like little secret area under uh, under the floorboards. Um, Vernon goes to answer the door whilst they're all at the table. Dudley instantly steals the rest of Vernon's grapefruit. Um, like I've got down here, so it sounds like he does like fruit. I think he's just like after anything to eat though. Again, I feel terrible for Dudley, guys. Let me know if you don't. I. Yeah, let me know if you don't feel sorry for Dudley. Particularly in the books when in Philosopher's Stone, where Vernon eventually just snaps and 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 I, I can't remember. I don't know if he slaps him, but he definitely he he hits the Dudley in some way. And my heart broke for Dudley in that moment, guys, because Dudley is being set up to be be this by his parents, and now the parents are angry at him for being the thing that they created. That the monster you created, guys. Um, yeah, I, I let me know if you don't, if you have, let me know if you have no remorse for Dudley. I, I, and, and I, I'd love to discuss it, guys, seriously, because I, I, in the books, more, much more than the movies, I just feel sorry for him by this point. I honestly do. I honestly do, guys. Um, Harry hears laughter from the door uh, and the ripping off paper. Uh, it's a letter from Molly that has been sent via the Royal Mail. I've got the Royal Mail here. But it says postman, but it would have been Royal Mail, because that's what we call the post in the UK. Um, yeah, I've I, I, I've got down here that it's the first time that Britain are hosting. It's the first that Britain hasn't hosted the World Cup before. I could be wrong, and, and Max could be right, but I'm pretty sure that was what I said. Or at least it's been a, a long time. And you would imagine that Britain would be up there when when it comes to hosting these things. At least when it comes to I mean, you know, we, we host the Olympics every, like, 40 years or something. And we, we are one of these countries which are involved in these sort of things, you know. For better or for worse, guys. I mean, you know, we know, we know one reason why we might be. Um, and so there, that is confirmation that there is no English team. But then, like I say, I'm pretty sure we saw a, 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 a Union flag in the, uh, in the movie. Uh... They should deliver the response ASAP the normal way. Ah, now this is going to be more... Again, guys, this is... This okay, this this chapter should be called Blackmail slash Veggie has a go at Molly. Because the way... Using terms like mo normal way... This, this word is misused. The word which I'm about to use is misused as an insult, guys. And I do not mean it as an insult at all. Molly... Is being a little bit ignorant here. I can hear the keyboards. I can hear the keyboards. I can hear the keyboards, guys. She shouldn't be you say normal way. I know that she doesn't interact with muggles very much, guys. But if if Vernon said the normal way to to Molly, Molly would be like saying, "What are you talking about, normal way?" Which is right, guys. You shouldn't be saying normal. It's like it's like it's, it's like why there's terms like um, neurotypical and neurodivergent for people with autism, which I am. I am people with autism. Um, you know, because th there is a, a a a thing which I've done it many times before, where saying you know my brain doesn't work like normal people's. Normal is not the right word, guys. My my brain works differently than than. Uh, Typical people, I guess the way of putting it, but Molly shouldn't be saying normal way. And also, what she says to Harry, because uh, Max said it was Ron. I think it's actually uh, uh, Harry. In fact, uh, I think it was actually Molly that that used. Was it? No, it wasn't. It was Ron. Well, we'll get to it, guys. But you know, using the term "the Muggles" and using terms like "the normal way" in polite conversation is a bit ignorant. Hashtag, hashtag, Molly is a little bit ignorant. <laughs> oh, I'm getting some of the trouble again, guys. And again, you know, compared to what Vernon and Petunia say about wizard folk, guys, say the normal way and nothing, and nothing at all. But you know, this is why I treat. This is why I, I, I I'm harder on nicer characters because there's no point in being hard on the on the horrible characters. 
Uh, Muggle Postman probably doesn't know where the where the house is. Oh, that's right. So so Molly in the letters is is written almost frantically. In fact, I think it's actually. You know what? I'm going to go back and check. But I feel like it's written without punctuation, isn't it? No, it can't be because they, they do write in the Wizarding World. But it feels like a list that Molly's like. And da 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 da. And this da 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 da. And by the way, uh, the Muggle Postman probably doesn't know where, where our house is because we never received a reply at all. It's, it's like it's like really frantically written. And so yeah, the Muggle Postman don't know where the house is, which obviously they wouldn't do, would they? It's interesting that Molly says probably wouldn't, because they just wouldn't, would they? Unless Molly really doesn't know what postmen are like, and maybe po Muggle postmen are... Maybe there are some Muggles that do have connections to the Wizarding World, guys, and so maybe that's why she said it. We will get into a very interesting topic in the next, in the next line, in fact. In my next quote, which I'm amazed we haven't discussed this before. In fact, we may have... We, I think we must have done. Molly has covered the envelope in stamps, guys. Um... Uh, and, and, and when she's putting these stamps on, presumably they are they are Muggle stamps. They're not like like the Queen, like going and like that. It would have been the Queen back then, of course. Um, but she like covered it completely with like a tiny little space to have like the return to sender uh, address on it. I think it was. I think so. Um, and mentioning of the stamps, guys, instantly makes me think. Does, does the Wizarding World acknowledge royalty? Does the Wizarding World treat the Queen in any other way? Does the Queen know about the Wizarding World? Is the Queen the the, the Queen of the Wizarding World? Or is it completely partisan? Is that the right term? I feel like I'm smarter than I... I've probably got that term wrong, wrong there, guys. But is it completely separated? And like they, they, they don't even really... They know that the Queen's probably an important person, but they don't really know what she does. That is something which I'm amazed, if we haven't discussed before, hasn't come up before. And I'd be amazed if going up forward in these books, if it doesn't come up again. Like, maybe in the next chapter, when, like, Molly get, gets with Harry and everything, uh, like, you know, or maybe she's not going to be in that. No, no, she will be in the next chapter, won't she? I presume Molly is in the next chapter. If Molly's going to be, like, saying, hey, by the way, are these stamps, what's this thing with the, with the woman with the thing on her head? I don't know. I don't know. Does I, I, it's such a fascinating idea uh, discussion. Does the Wizarding World acknowledge the Queen as the head of state, or do they see her as being any, or do they even know who she is? I want to know this more than I can. At at any point, does uh, does Fudge like say, "Oh, I can't come to today because I've, I've got tea with the Queen this evening," something like that? I feel like the Queen would know about it. It's like, you know, like, you know, the US president thing of like, you know, the Area 51 files and stuff like that, you know? I don't know. That's how I see it. But let me know who, how you see it. Um, It was the postman that was laughing. Which took a little while for me to work out, but it was the postman that was laughing because of all the uh, st stamps and everything. Uh, so Vernon ha now has to make a choice between allowing uh, Harry to go to the Quidditch and have a good time. Or... Stop him from having a good time, but keeping him here with them, which they don't want him in. It's so it's a great line where Vernon's like, you're furious. And I think his face has turned purple and everything. And Harry's like trying not to laugh and everything at, 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 at all the stabs and everything. And he just looks at Vernon's face, face as he can see a furious battle as two of Vernon's most fundamental instincts came into conflict. Which again is let Harry have a good time or... Let Harry get, have a good time and get rid of Harry, or keep Harry unhappy but keep him here. Spring. It's it's um, catch twenty two. I think they called it, isn't it? Um, it would get rid of Harry two weeks earlier than expected, which suggests that the World Cup is only two weeks and ends right at the end, at the start of school. The World Cup football is like at least a month, isn't it? Yeah, of course, because it's like knockouts and everything. Maybe they just fit more games into a day in in Quidditch. But yeah, two weeks does seem a little bit short. Um, Harry tells Vernon that, 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 that he's seen Molly before. And Vernon <laughs> like says, uh, that uh, dumpy sort of woman, load of kids with red hair. 
Again, guys, Verdid is a piece of trash here. The thing is, I didn't think uh, that at any point Vernon says, no, you're not going. Because I, I'm pretty sure that Harry plays a blinder of psychology in in a bit coming up. But yeah, Vernon refer, referring to anyone as Dumpy is interesting. It is sure is interesting. Uh, the, f the fact that he brings up the fact that the kids had red hair as well, I feel like he is showing a bit of prejudice in Vernon as well. Because for whatever reason, guys, more in the 90s than now, red hair was seen as being a, a negative thing. I think it's a beautiful thing. In fact, I, I, I think that we got to the stage now where kids with red hair are probably... Oh, I don't know. I'm sure they probably are still teased, but I'd, I'd hope that they're teased less now. But in the 90s, it really was a thing. It really was. Like, um... It's disgraceful, it really is. Just a blooming hair colour at the end of the day, isn't it? Anyway, let's not rant about that. But I get the impression that Vernon's bringing it up t with that sort of infection, inflection, you know? Um, so Vernon's like saying, what is this rubbish? Um, regarding Quidditch. And Harry like goes to explain what Quidditch is. But the moment that he says broomstick, <laughs> Vernon's like, enough! <laughs> um... So yeah, Vernon is like it's like a, a natural reaction now. He doesn't want to hear anything about the magic world at all, and like Harry's been told to not mention it. In fact, and so the minute that Harry brings up Brucey, he's like, ah. Um, Vernon gets annoyed about the way that Molly has said normal way, and I think that he is entitled to that opinion, guys. I do, I do, I do, I do, I do, I do, as Abba would say. Uh, that was Abba, wasn't it? I think so. Um. Vernon is scum of the earth. Molly is an absolute saint. In this situation, Vernon is right that Molly should not be used in the normal way. Right? In regarding to send it, sorry, so in regarding of uh, how Harry should respond to the letter. Uh, and Molly is right as well, actually, because they have to do it the magic way, I'm going to say, not the normal way. It's ignorance, guys. It's ignorance. Um, I've got it in capital letters. I have become Vernon. Because yeah. I'm with Vernon. You should, it, Molly should not use that term. But then, you know, no. Molly should not have used that term. I can say she doesn't have much experience with, with dealing with them. That's fine. She still shouldn't be using that term, guys. That's I'm going to put my foot down on that one. Um, Harry says that Al posts... Um, Oh yeah, so, so Vernon's like saying, "What? What does she mean? The normal way?" This is my um, Jim Dale impression of Vernon, <laughs> um, and uh, Harry says, "Oh, it, it means outpost." And Vernon, uh, <laughs> this is great. As soon as Harry says outpost, Vernon looks to the window uh, as if to expect to see all his neighbours like lined up with their ear like pressed up to the panes of glass. It's just amazing. <laughs> I love that line. That was actually one of the funniest lines. I think that's the funniest lines from these chapters. I think it actually was. Because <laughs> um, he, he he doesn't want anyone... Because he, he doesn't want anyone else to know that, that, that their family has anything to do with magic. And so as soon as like Harry mentions something to do with magic, he's like, oh god, what if everyone's listening to this right now? It's absolutely brilliant. Um, doobie doobie doo. Harry's still getting hand-me-downs from Dudley. Yeah, we hear about uh, the fact that Harry's clothes are still very, very baggy on him because he's still getting hand-me-downs from Dudley. I've written down here why doesn't he use a spell to short to to make the uh, the clothes fit better? And I feel like we've discussed that before. But then I've got another message next to it saying no magic, Veggie. How many times he's not allowed to use magic? <laughs> and if Vernon and Petunia know he's used magic, then they'll probably tell the Ministry. They probably don't know how to tell them. But, yeah, he's, but Harry is not allowed to use magic, Reggie. Get that into your thick skull, please. <laughs> now, this is where I feel like uh, I'm right, where at no point... I feel like Vernon, the writing on the writing is on the world, wall that, well, that he's going to say no, but Vernon at no point actually does say no to Harry. And so Harry says, okay, so I can't go to the World Cup. So, okay, so I can't go to the World Cup. Can I go now? I have a letter to finish the series. You know, my godfather. 
blackmail! Literally blackmail, guys. I was so happy when I came up with that joke. But this is literally black blackmail. Now. Blackmail, blackmail. Blackmail, blackmail! Blackmail, blackmail. No, it'd be blackmail, blackmail. Blackmail, blackmail. You know, you know which way I'm, I mean it. It's black, it's blackmail, blackmail. Or is it blackmail, blackmail? No, no, it's definitely blackmail, blackmail. I'm having a fit, guys. I don't know what's wrong with me. Right. Um, sassy, ve sassy Harry I've got down here, which is a wonder always wonderful to see some sassy Harry. Um... I gotta say, when when watching the movies, I never expected to have such a confident Harry in the books. But he is so... He holds all the cards. He really does. And he is still playing to the rules and everything, to an extent. He's, he's still playing as if he's playing to the rules. But he is so ballsy in the, in the books. It's just something which I didn't expect. Having watched the movies, guys, I didn't expect to ever see this side of Harry. Here's an interesting thing that I've never thought of before. Parents' evenings. So parents' evenings where the parents are invited or the guardians are invited into the school to discuss the child's um, progress and everything is something that happens certainly in the UK, but I'd imagine all, uh, across the world as well. Uh, and I'd imagine it definitely must happen for boy, um, for uh, what do you call it? For um, not boarding school, is it called? When, when you basically live at the school, like like Harry is. Uh, there must be times where, at those sort of schools, parents are brought in. Gu parents and guardians are brought in to discuss their child child's development. So lucky. I mean, the, the Dursleys would the Dursleys would probably refuse to do it. But the Harry is actually really lucky that the Dursleys will not acknowledge or talk to wizard folk at all. Because if at any point they were saying, Oh, Harry's being a nightmare. Whenever, whenever we, we turn to do something, he brings up this serious black... Imagine that! Imagine if they said that to anyone, apart from Dumbledore. <laughs> oh my goodness, all hell would break loose, guys. Harry's very lucky that the D the Dursleys hate wizards this much, because that would be bad. And then have blackmail with capital letters, uh, exclamation marks, after because that was the moment where I fought the joke. Uh, Vernon agrees to let Harry go with the Weasleys, uh, says they need to pick him up. Because uh, he doesn't want to have to be driving around. Um, Harry sarcastically says how wonderful the breakfast was. I do have here that it's, he's kind of pushing his luck at this point, but also he can. He just can push his luck. And so he's actually putting the, the Dursleys through a bit of a nightmare at the moment. And I wonder how long that's going to last. Will they know about Sirius dying when he does? Oh, wow. We've got so many. Wow, we've got a long journey to go. But I, I, I'm going to enjoy the ride, though. It's going to be fascinating. Uh, Harry runs back upstairs. Hedwig is annoyed. And uh, uh, Harry then realises why when he's hit in the face. By, in, the, in the head by a tiny owl. Which is Ron's owl. Which has delivered a letter. Uh, Ron is excitedly talking about how the, the first game of the uh, event. Which should be Britain really. UK sorry. No it said Britain. Oh my goodness, they're GB, aren't they? Yeah, of course we're GB in the uh, in the uh, Olympics as well. I'm sorry, guys, we're not we're not the United Kingdom in the Olympics. Oh my goodness, how many people have you have already corrected me on that? We're not. We're we're, we're Great Britain, which means that we don't include Northern Ireland. Do we not include Northern Ireland in the Olympics? Do are Northern Ireland their own team in the Olympics? Northern Ireland Olympic team. Northern Ireland Olympics. Oh no, okay, so we are... Okay, so it's called Team GB, which is incorrect, guys. Because it is the team for Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Which means it is the UK team. Oh my goodness, let's not get into it, guys. But Great Britain and the United Kingdom are not exactly the same thing. Uh, but yes. Enough waffle. So, so it should be the British team playing first. I'm pretty sure that's how these sporting events happen. But the, at least the first game that they have tickets for is uh, Ireland versus Bulgaria on on Monday. Uh, Ron says mum is writing to the Muggles, which is not... The thing is, is that Ron knows Harry's opinion of the Dursleys. So I guess it's just him, you know, 
playing along with what Harry sees them as. Mm, that's not great though, Ron. That's really not great. And also he's laughed at squibs before as well. Yeah, it's again guys, I give good people a, a tougher time in these reviews, but you can't say the muggles. It's not great. It's not great. We hear that apparently the 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 the, the, the I was gonna say pigeon then the the owl that Ron has is called Pig. Is that a reference to pigs will fly? Maybe I'm not sure. Maybe it's a Quidditch player. I don't know. But I'm hoping that gets explained. Um, Marty was only pretending to ask, but they will be ta taking him anyway. Again, yeah, okay. So so. Um, Apparently, according to Ron at least, that Molly is pretending to ask permission to take Harry, but they would be intending on taking Harry and, uh, uh, regardless. Again, if that, well, for one, if that's true, what Ron is saying, but if that is true, it's not great for Molly, you know, adopting, adopting a child. It, 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 it is adopting a child, guys. Um, it just straight up is abducting a child. There's no way of overlooking at it. Um, <laughs> Again, the Dursleys are much worse people. But then again, that could just be Ron's you know, take on the situation. Uh, so he says, if they say yes, we will pick you up at 5pm on Sunday. If they say no, we will pick you up at 5pm on Sunday anyway. <laughs> it's wonderful. And we hear that Hermione was arriving that afternoon. So this is actually the day before. This is actually the Saturday. Uh, we'll, we'll get to it though. Um, we hear that Percy has started work at the Department of International Magic Cooperation, which is a mouthful. That sounds so fascinating to me. I'd love to know more about that that work. Uh, but Ron, being Ron, typically with, with his brothers and everything, says, uh, "Don't mention anything about you know, international to Percy because he'll he'll bore he'll bore you, you, you to tears or something." But that's so typical, Ron. Though I think it sounds amazing, and you know, you know my opinion on Percy. I, I think he's great. Not great. I find him fascinating. Um, not a bad job, straight out of. Oh yes, that's right. So the fact that that um, Percy has got this job straight out of Hogwarts is very impressive. Because I would have thought that this sort of role would require further education. Uh, and there is further education in the Wizarding World, isn't there? Or is it at Hogwarts? Percy, no, but Percy just sits straight up finishes his final year, isn't he? He's not like taking any like A level sort of things, is he? So it's 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 a pretty important department that he's going into. Sure, he might be making the tea, but I'm surprised that straight out of Hogwarts he has got a job like that. Good on him, guys, because that start, doing a job at that age would be quite daunting, at least for me. But then I'm a moron, probably. Um. Hedwig, Hedwig is having none of Pig. <laughs> um, apparently, like, you know, daring it to come closer and everything. Um, and when Harry is attaching Sirius's letter to, to, to Hedwig, apparently Hedwig is standing completely still, as if to show Pig how it's done, which is amazing. It's nice to hear a bit of personality from Pig. Sorry, guys. Oh, it stopped now. There's a siren just now. My window is open today because it is extre extremely hot. I'm wearing a scarf. I had to have my window open. I'm sorry. Um, but it's now gone past. Uh, so yeah, it's great that Hedwig... We're getting almost sassy Hedwig. Which is fine. Which is great. It's not, it's, you know what? It's nice to hear about Hedwig. Because Hedwig does not get brought up much. Considering the main theme... The th main song from Harry Potter is called Hedwig's Theme. Um, yeah, we don't get much Hedwig. So whatever Hedwig we do get, it's one of them. This is great. This is personality in Hed Hedwig. Which is not something we've really seen before. Uh, we established that it is Saturday, and so the next the next day is actually going to be um, uh, when, when the games kick off, which means that there's literally no way that Muggle, the Muggle way of replying to letter would have worked because the Royal Mail doesn't work on Sundays, guys. And so we don't get mail on Sundays, and so Vernon could have wrote a special delivery. It's still ain't going to be getting to the Weasleys until Monday morning at the earliest. And so Molly, despite the fact... Despite her terms that she used, which are ignorant, she was right that is that they should use the magic way. I'll post. Um, Harry adds that he will be going to the World Cup to Sirius's letter and lets uh, Hedwig flight to go and tell him the good news. That's my note on, notes on this chapter. I feel like there were quite a few tangents that time, so I apologise, but you know what I'm like. Um, and again, guys, the whole, the way that I talk about good people in these book reviews, I know it may come off as, 
bias even i really don't mean it to guys it's just that when it comes to when it comes to molly making slight mistakes i'm more likely to bring them up than bringing up the fact that the dursleys are complete scum of the earth because you know we know that we know that anyway guys fantastic chapters what a great start to this book and i cannot wait to get into the next ones but before that we need to move over and do the first uh harry potter book club of the, of, of the book Oh, Goblet of Fire in Harry Potter Book Club of Goblet of Fire. I've just gone and listened to a bunch of Placebo, and so thank you, Vernon. Seriously, I haven't listened to Placebo for years, but him saying that he doesn't want Dudley to be a Nazi boy has re reinvigorated my uh, Placebo um, love. Like I say, English Summer Rain is my favourite of their songs. Either way, guys, welcome to the book club, guys. Uh, very, very excited. This is the first book club of uh, Goblet of Fire. I know you guys have a lot to say about it, which is fantastic, guys. That's, 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 the, uh, that's the best part of doing these book reviews, is like reading your thoughts on them so we can discuss back and forth and, and, and so on. Um... Like I say, you can join the Patreon for as little as possible and get uh, access to this post, guys. You just leave a comment down below. There are some rules about length and everything like that, and also about spoilers. Unfortunately, apparently there is one comment which which is actually uh, talking about stuff in future chapters, which I will have to skip over today. Uh, Justine, I believe, is the, the name. I'm so sorry I won't be able to read your comment this time. It's just because apparently I've been I've been warned by other people that it may contain stuff which is in future chapters. So because of that, um, I won't be able to cover it today. But please, uh, p please be a part of uh, future book clubs. Um, I just, when it, when, it, when it comes to these book reviews and everything, if it's something that I don't know is coming up, I really want to be able to, you know, give my fresh thoughts for it when I actually get to that part, part of the book. And so I apologize about not being able to read your comment this time. Uh, there's also the option of DMing me on Patreon, guys, uh, your thoughts on these chapters. Um, so... Um, if, if you don't want your comment to be like public, you know, people be able to reply to it or anything, you can DM me them instead. And so we'll, we'll cover those first this time because I almost got last time to do them. And so, yes, it's always a lot of fun. There's always a lot of comments, guys. We have a lot of comments to get through today. But like I say, it's the funnest part of doing these book clubs. And so let's get on with them. I will do the DM'd ones first, which won't appear on screen, but I will, I will read them out um, uh, as they're in. I should say, guys, if you are going to DM me the uh, your thoughts on these chapters, you have to make sure that you do follow the, the the rules that are in this little blog here. Just because there's not going to be anyone to monitor it, much like people notice that there may have been uh, spoilers mentioned in other, in other comments. If you DM me, there's not going to be anyone. And so we're going to be starting off with Pratim. So sorry if I'm getting your name wrong. Uh, book Club Goblet of Fire chapters 1, 2 and 3. I, I just caught up with the last book re review. So here's my take on the Sirius Snape incident. Okay, so we're going to we're go. We're, we're, we're starting off by going back to Prisoner of Azkaban, guys. So I may not give too much thoughts on this because I have given a lot of thoughts on it already. But I will read the comment uh, regardless. Uh, first, some lines of context. Sneaking around, trying to find out what we were up to, hoping to get us expelled. Sirius was very interested in where I I went every month. Snape has seen see had seen had seen me crossing the grounds of Madame Pomfrey night. Sirius thought it would be amusing to tell Snape all he'd have to do is prod the base with a stick and be able to come in after me. There is even more lines in later books that suggest... I don't know if I should read this because it's talking about later books. Do, 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 do. Um, I don't know how much I should really read this because one, it's not talking about the chapters that we're talking about. But also it's potentially going to be talking about stuff that's in the later books. So, uh, do, 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 do. all Sirius did was tell him how to pass into the Whomping Willow. I'm going to skim over because it's actually a very long comment as well. But it's also talking about stuff which we're not really here to talk about today. Was it responsible or reckless of Sirius to tell him? Yes, it was. Was it irresponsible or reckless of Sirius to tell him? Yes, it was, but it's Snape's fault ultimately. This is, this is, I don't like about people defending Snape. It's as if Snape is completely innocent bystander and bears none of the responsibility of what happened. Or as if Sirius drags him to, to the entrance rather than Snape ha having to guess what was, uh, what was there going on. Which is, okay, I don't know, I, 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 
I mean, this isn't talking about what we're talking about today, but I, I will give my thoughts on, on that little segment, because I think you're right, guys. I do feel like sometimes even I sound like I'm giving Snape a pass in this situation. He shouldn't have been sneaking around trying to find out what's what with them. At the same time, I mean, you know, Harry sneaks around a heck, heck of a lot, so we had to hold him to the same torch there. At the same time, Sirius did knowingly endanger Snape's life. I think that we can agree with that, right? Uh, you say irresponsible, reckless. Would you agree that he endangered Snape's life? I think that's a more clearer way of putting it, you know? Uh, Dumbledore's Snape situation. People say that Dumbledore is keeping information from Snape. Tell, tell, tell me, after his reaction in the shack and the hospital wing, how would... Is Dumbledore supposed to be sure he is going to listen to the truth? How is Dumbledore supposed to trust him with the information that he lets Sirius escape when Dumbledore, Harry, Hermione could have arrested, uh, uh, could get arrested if Snape can let it slip so easily, like he did with Lupin's condition? <coughs> well, that, that was more Lupin's fault, to be fair. Lupin, I am the biggest Lupin fan in the world, um, but, you know, uh, even I had to point out that it was very reckless of him to go there knowing that it's very possible that he could turn whilst with them and potentially kill them all and so uh Pratim, i'm going to move on because the comment is very long and it's really not what we're talking about today i do appreciate it, though and i do appreciate your your, your thoughts on you know people that defend Snape, because I do feel like I defend Snape a, a lot sometimes, but I am going to move on from it, just because it isn't about the, the, this book. So, I appreciate your comment, though. Thank you so much for making it. Uh, Cassidy Rose. Uh, book Club. Hi, Veggie. Goblet of Fire was always my favourite Harry Potter book when I was a kid, so it's awesome to be able to reread it again and with you. I love how Sirius is mentioned so early in the book and how Harry goes to him for advice. Yeah, I wasn't expecting it. I really wasn't. I expected that series would probably be in the books a bit more because it really is. He's, if you think about how many scenes he is in, in the Harry Potter series, it's really not many, guys. Is it like five? It's really not many scenes, guys. It really, it's, it's, it's a small amount. Maybe not five. I'd say it's definitely under ten scenes that he is in. Um, and so it's wonderful hearing about him so much. Obviously, he's not here, but we are hearing from him with his letters and everything. And, and knowing that he is, at least, you know, semi-regularly actually talking with his godson, which is obviously exactly what Harry needs. Um, if you're wondering what the jingly is, it is my mug here. <laughs> my uh, Harry Potter hot chocolate, I should say. Um, da -da 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 -da. In the movie, I'm pretty sure we only see Sirius once in the fireplace at Hogwarts. It's, I thought that was Goblet of Fire. I always get confused which scene that, 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 that which book that is from, movie it was from. How do you feel about Harry leaving out the dream he had? How do you feel feel about Harry leaving out the dream he had? You mean in the letter? Personally, I don't know if there's such a thing as looking too worried after having a dream about Voldemort planning to kill you but uh smiley smiley face but then again Sirius might not be able to help much when whenever wherever he is either i think that harry is a very he's very you think about what he thought about molly and fred and george i think that's the really interesting one guys because hermione and ron he got bang on that's absolutely spot on exactly what they would have thought um, but then he thinks that Molly would be like you know, overbearing with you know, you know you know sheltering Harry, um, and Fred and George would may think less of him essentially. I mean, it, I think I think uh, it, uh, he, he used the term lo lost his nerve, but he essentially means that he would lose respect. I feel like he is worried about saying, "Oh my God, Voldemort's doing a horrible thing," and it says, "No, it's just a shadow, Harry. What? You're right. You know." I feel like he's really worried about being made to look a fool. You go back to the last book, and you remember Draco, how much Draco mocked Harry for passing out on the train, and obviously Draco's not here in this situation, but you know, he, Harry, you know, Harry has pride and I think at this point to a fall because obviously we want him to tell everyone about what's going on but you know he's he's a prideful teenager he doesn't human I mean you think about Chamber of Secrets guys which essentially the book version was basically a humiliation from start to finish for Harry Harry is very 
vis you know conscious of being worried about being humiliated and so I, I I completely understand it. I actually do, guys. And I know that from our standpoint, we're, we're like saying, no, we knew what's going to happen, you know? Uh, but you think about it from his standpoint, and especially what he said about Fred and George, I think was very, very telling. Where he is, he, he doesn't want to get humiliated. He wants, you know... You know, like in the musical, Harry's like, say, yeah, I'm Harry Potter and everything like that. That isn't what we got here. We got a kid who... Um, Wants a normal life, he wants normal parents and everything. He doesn't see himself as this great thing, and he is terrified of being humiliated. Which, at the age, guys, I know that I certainly was, and so uh, I feel like that's it. He doesn't want to make out that something's much, much worse than it is, and then everyone think, oh god, he's just he's going on about Voldemort again. You know what I mean? Mm. It's it's weird, guys, because I know that he should. I fully understand why he isn't. Uh, P.S. I love your book reviews. I've followed them for a while. This is my first time commenting. Cassidy, Cassidy thank you so much. Uh, first time commenting because I'm very shy, lol. Had, had to hop into my favourite book, though. Cassidy, thank you so much. Well, it's a great first comment. Thank you very, very much. And yeah, it, I, I am thoroughly looking forward to this book. I really am. You're right about Harry, how he... Worrying too much and everything. It's it, I th the fact that Harry's first instinct is to think, okay, what would everyone's reaction be? That's the thing, guys. He, he he didn't think, okay, so if I tell Dumbledore, then we can then we can find out where Voldemort is and stop all uh, his shut down his plan and maybe re re redeem Bertha Jorkins or you know and find Frank and all, all this sort of thing. No, he's thinking, okay, what is everyone going to think about me? <laughs> <laughs> when, when I when I tell them, and so and that's not a criticism of Harry, guys. That is every teenager at the age of fourteen, like ever. So, Kazi, great comment. Thank you so much for making it. Again, I'm so sorry uh, to, to the previous DM, but I really need to. Um, I appreciate your thoughts, and you're right. I do definitely give Snape. Uh, uh, I try to be down the line with Snape, guys. I really do, and I and, and sometimes I get comments saying thank you so much for for, for for being like that. And so, I do often worry that sometimes I can come across as being one or the other. I think that if anything, I probably defend Snape more than a lot of other people. Not defend. That's the wrong term. I try to see Snape's point of view more than other people and that is very possibly because I watched the movies first you know and I, and I know what's ultimately coming but obviously the Alan Rickman effect is always in effect and so I'm so sorry if I felt if I seemed a little bit flippant with, with, with your comment but I um it was a fascinating discussion that we had last time with 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 with, with Snape and Sirius and so on and so uh thank you so much for making it. So let's get into uh the 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 chunk of the book club. Don't know what I meant by that. Um and so uh like I say guys you can pay as little as you want, as you want on the Patreon and get access to these blogs. Um or if, if you can't afford it, guys, just leave a comment on YouTube uh, after one of these videos gets posted. I will still read it. I won't have time to reply to it, but I will still read them. And so, never feel like you're missing out just because you can't back the Patreon. I would never want that. Uh, I would never want anyone to feel that that, that is the case. Stirring hot chocolate. It's still a bit hot. I, oh, I can't drink coffee, tea, or anything like that when it's too hot. Sorry about my waffle about Capcom earlier on, guys. I feel like that is going to be the biggest tangent that we're going to go on, he says, before going on a massive tangent in the next few seconds. But, you know, we're talking about Mega Mutilation Part 3. You need to have a little bit of a video game chat, I guess. Okay, so Judah kicks us off with, uh, Yay, uh, I'm first. Hey, Veggie, so this is not really a comment on the chapters, but a spoiler-free comment on the rest of the books. <laughs> Uh, I'm looking for. I'm. I'm so looking forward to you reading, listening to the rest of the books. Please don't compare them too much to the movies. See them as a different entities. Yeah, I've had different. We. Oh, okay, I'll read the rest of the comment and then, then we'll discuss this. I read the books first and was so disappointed by the movies. Yeah, uh, but the movies are very good. Product, production wise just not very good adaptations of the books so keep the joy anger sadness and everything you feel about the movies and then go into the books i'll also pay attention 
You never know what information will be important. Yeah, oh, I mean, the thing is, a lot of thing is seeded in these books, which I'm going to, uh, which, I, which I'll endeavor to notice, but I'm sure I, I may miss. Uh, edit. I should clarify, I love your comparisons between the movies and books, and I'm not say, uh, asking you uh, 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 to not do them. I just mean, in your head, in your head, sorry. Zombie. Bye. The hell are they called? The hell? It's not the cardigans, is it? It's not the cardigans. Cranberries! That was close. <laughs> that was close. Cardigans. Cardigans did they da 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 song, didn't they? Which had a very funny music video, in my opinion. Um, you know, like, how music videos are... And I'm talking about that song. A favourite game by the Cardigans, where, like, it's a typical sort of, like, really cool person in, like, a car and everything. We think, we think oh, wow, she's so cool and everything. And then, like, as the music video goes on, she's going faster and faster along this, like, like desert road and everything. And um, at the end, she like gets a brick out and puts it on the accelerator and like stands on top of the bun, like saying, yeah, I'm really badass like that. And then right at the end of the song, I can't remember if, if the car crashes or something. I think it hits something. And she goes, like, goes flying off like in, like over in front of the car and like gets up with all her hair like, 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 and she's all like dizzy and everything. And then the brick like falls on the red. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that. I, 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 is that actually the official music video for Favourite Game? Or is it a parody that I saw? Oh no, I just looked this up. Um, okay, so let's finish your comment before I look, look up favourite game music video. I just mean in, in your head. In your head. You might want to try and see them as separate as possible because otherwise you might lose something. I try to do that, Judith. I really, really do. It's, it's tough though sometimes. The movies are not really good, but the books are really good. But comparing to the books, the movies are not... The mo okay, I read that completely wrong. The movies are really good, and the books are really good. But comparing the book, the movies are not. Okay, compared to the books. Um, I, I will endeavour to do that, Judith. It, it is sometimes um, hard for me to, um, to avoid comparing. Yes, it is the official video for Favourite Game by The Cardigans. Okay, moving on. Um... Yeah, I, I remember getting a comment like a few moments ago saying that I'm comparing them too much. Now, I think that when I was doing the first three books, that was more acceptable than it's going to be for Goblet of Fire. So I really am going to try my best to, to limit it. I will still watch the scenes along with the movie just because that is a part of doing these reviews, guys. It really is. I am doing the, these reviews as someone who has watched the movies. And so I can't completely, I can't pretend that I haven't seen the movies, you know what I mean? But I will endeavour to limit me comparing them to, because, you know, I, I, and the thing is, guys, then I, I'm showing this video, I'll get loads of comments saying, no, no, Veggie, we really like it when you compare them. So I'm really trying to, like, you know, help please everyone, you know? And the problem with pleasing everyone is that you usually end up pleasing no one. <laughs> I will, I will endeavour to, uh, I keep it in ch under check, Judith. So thank you so much for your comment, I appreciate it. Astrid. Uh, so hyped for this. This is my favourite of many people. Uh, uh, this is the favourite of many people. And the book is quite different from the movie. So you'll have a lot of new stuff to discover. Looking forward to it, Asher. Thank you so much for your comment. Jake. Oh, three chapters? Exciting. Well, we, we tend to do more chapters at the start of a book because there is recap. And chapter two really was a lot of recap. Uh, exciting. Unlike 2 and 3, Book 4 onwards has far fewer instances of recapping. Good to know. As Pottermania... <laughs> Pottermania is running wild. As Pottermania began following Prince of Azkaban, so I think there's more expectation to have read the others. That's interesting. That's very interesting. So you're saying that the book only really became... Particularly popular after Prison of Azkaban? In a weird way, I can see that. I have no idea, guys. Like I say, uh, it was something which I really just wasn't looking into at all when it was new. Growing up, this was probably my least favourite book. Although I have learned to appreciate it more over the last few, few rereads. I think partly because I don't like Harry anymore. Everything in this one is that... 
every everything in this one that annoyed me is gro given new perspective. It's still the worst movie though. <laughs> Yeah, I remember getting lots of comments saying about how, how I think that people really resent Goblet of Fire, the movie. Because I feel like it's still a good movie, guys. I, I honestly do. But um, I think that a book readers really do resent it for not representing the book as much. But as a movie, I still thoroughly enjoyed it. Um... Although you're talking about the book here. Note in the first chapter, there's no mention of David Tennant being in the ring with with Voldy. Unlike in the movie, already the differences have begun. Yeah, I guess he could be in the room, but uh, I, I, I think that... I think that they just... Yeah, I don't know, actually. Why would they do that? I guess it's to really associate the Death Eater scene, which, which follows, with Voldemort, I guess. Because it's the first time we're seeing like, the skull in the sky and everything, isn't it? Uh, also, one tiny correction to the other people's comments below. Uh, chapter 1 is the first time we've, see, we, we've seen outside of Harry's Draco-filled mind since the middle of Philosopher's Stone. Not the, be not the beginning. Briefly, we see, of course, the first scene of Philosopher's Stone. I'm an idiot, but I like, of course Harry's not there. Um, briefly, we see inside Ron's head as he casts... Wing Gundam Laviosa on the troll in the bathroom. At the first Quidditch match, we follow Hermione as she watches Harry doing that. This is a very good point. Doing stunts on the broomstick and decides to ruin Sna Snape's ropes. That's one way of putting it. A fascinating tidbit, I think, that I didn't even realize until my 15th read. Jake, that is a very good point. Now, I think that what people are saying is Harry is literally not even in the room. Now, no, Harry is in the scene with, at the start of, uh, of Philosopher's Stone, though, isn't he? Briefly as it is. But he's also technically in the room here as well. And so it's either Harry has never been not in the scene or... Yeah, or he has a couple of times. Does it make any sense? It's, it's, it's difficult. It's difficult. Anyway, come on. Uh, lastly, one silly thing. According to Harry's l letter to Mr. Black, Dudley has thrown his PlayStation through the greenhouse window. Uh, some achievement, as the console wouldn't be released even in Japan for six months after the book is set. Maybe he has Hermione's time turner. Very true, Jake. That, 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 now, that's the side plot that I want to see more of. Because obviously Hermione doesn't have any more, does she? So that's a very good point, Jake. Uh, yeah, so we did we did look at the numbers earlier on, but that is excellent. Thank you so much for your comment. Uh, Bennett. Hi, Veggie. We now proceed to my least favourite movie, shared fir sharing first place with Half-Blood Prince, and a fantastic book. Fantastic Beast. Um, I don't know, guys. What would be my least favourite movie? I appreciate Deathly Hollows Part 1, but I understand that it's going to be the one which people are going to re-watch the least. I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Come on. Um, I'll go on about the differences in the story, characters, and the feelings when we hear about them. Even though I truly love Harry Potter, the Harry Potter series, and they will always hold a special place in my heart, I am so disappointed with so many decisions in the film director, the film directors took. Yeah, it's always disappointing when that when that sort of thing happens. I mean, the, I was, talking about, was I talking about Final Fantasy VII earlier on? I was. Final Fantasy VII, guys, the remake. Oh, my God, the ending of that remake made me so upset. It really did, guys. It made me more upset than any video game ever. Because I love Final Fantasy VII. It means a lot to me. It really does. And the disrespect that the remake put on the original at the end of it was heartbreaking. So I won't be buying the next one because it's a series of games. I won't be buying the second part of the remake, guys, because... Because it's not a remake. It's a fan fiction as far as I'm concerned. Anyway. Um, going forward. Um, you'll have so much new stuff to discover. Uh, about the Wizarding World. And I'm super excited for you. And I can't wait for your reactions. Yeah the Wizarding World is always fascinating to me guys. The fact that Percy is like in the, what is the, uh, the International Corporation Department. That to me just sounds fascinating. It really does. And so I'm really looking forward to it all. I'd say from here on, we slowly start to see Harry as a more grown-up teenager and not a child anymore. I see 
how he now actually does something against his uncle and stands up for himself. Oh, absolutely. Like I was saying earlier on. Having watched the movies, I would have never expected to have scenes where Harry is so confident with dealing with Vernon. Seriously, it's, it's, a, it's a joy to read. I'd say from here on, we slowly start to see Harry as a more grown-up teenager and not as... Oh, I just read that bit. <laughs> um, hope you are having a great day and much love from Germany. Bennett, thank you so much. I hope you're having a wonderful day in Germany. I hope it isn't too warm. It's actually been quite warm this, this week uh, over in the UK. Thank you so much for your comment. Sandra. Ha, Bergy. This is a, a very Professor Trawley comment about Frank Br Bryce. I'm looking forward to this. Apparently, in the tarot cards, the hanged man, name of the pub, symbolizes ultimate surrender and sacrifice to the greater good. Frank, uh, Frank Bruce Appreciation Club. That is very interesting, Sandra, because yeah, it's a tarot card, isn't it? I should have mentioned that earlier on, guys, as I'm always going on about Persona 4. Um... Each character in Persona games has a different tarot card that's associated with them. And one of them is the Hanged Man. And you're right, it does tend to, tend to be people, um, how have you put it? Ultimate surrender and sacrifice to the greater good. I think it's also people that's, that basically give up their own ambition to help others as well. And so, yeah, that's so true. And I guess in a, in a weird sense, say, sense, Frank could be doing that regarding the riddles because we don't know what his relationship with the riddles they may have gotten on really well it could have been the first time that frank had had people that appreciate him we know that the locals in town didn't like them but that doesn't mean they're rude to frank though and so yeah this 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 obsession that that people are seeing in him like you know looking after the house as much as he can even in his old age um yeah i'm liking it sandra wow that's that is a cracking comic great great work um I did not think about the tarot card at all. Thank you so much. I hope you're enjoying the start of the spunk. Absolutely, I am. Darcy. I don't know why Darcy. I always have to say her name like that. It's, it's, a, it's a great name. I always have to say Darcy. Uh, welcome to the Goblet of Fire. It's like Bertie as well, but that's, that's because of cheese and Worcester. Um, welcome to Goblet of Fire. One of, of the longest books in the series. Yeah, I think that isn't, correct me if I'm wrong, isn't Order of the Phoenix the longest? Because I remember seeing that in a charity shop and it was basically as thick as it was white, the book, it was like a cube. Uh, but this one apparently is a chunky one as well. Um, I'm pretty sure this opening chapter is the first time we see outside of Harry's perspective, although it ends up being his dream. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. In a sense, you could say that it's always been in his perspective, including this. But how would Frank's backstory be covered up by that, though? It's 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 an it's a very interesting point. Uh, something you may not know, since you are listening to the audiobooks, is that in the books, each letter each letter sent to oh sorry, uh, the books as. In the books, each letter sent has the writer's signature in, a diff in different handwriting. Oh, that's very interesting. So you see the letter on screen then? The handwriting, uh, on page I should say, uh, the handwriting makes the letters feel so real. It r can be fun to look these up on in your own time. I wonder how long it took them to redesign each character's signature. That's very interesting, Darcy. And so I'd imagine like Ron's and Hermione's handwriting is very different and so on. That's cool. And I'm, so I'm guessing that, because the thing is, we hear parts of the letter in, interspersed with other things. And so what I'm guessing is the case is that we don't so much see the letter, but paragraphs are written by the character and then back to a Harry's subconscious. I'm guessing that's how it's done. That sounds amazing. I always loved Molly sending the letter with too many stamps and wondering if it was enough. It's amazing. It is uh, reminiscent of the phone conversation in the last book. Oh, that's right. With Ron, like, screaming down the phone. Was it Arthur? I think it was Ron, wasn't it? I also love that they gave Ron an owl to make up for loosing scabbards. And I wish it, that had been in the movies. Yeah, Darcy, I didn't, I didn't give it a second's thought, but it's so cool. It's so cool that that Ron does still have, you know, a, a, a creature to dote over, you know. And, uh, you know, going back to, again, in Prison of Azkaban, where he, he, he shows it to, to uh, Crookshanks just to make sure that it's not... Pettigrew or someone or another Death Eater, that'd be amazing, wouldn't it? 
It could be, for all I know. Not much to say for these cha few chapters, but excited for you to get into this book. Darcy, thank you so much for your wonderful comment. Greatly appreciate it, as always. Alias? Uh, Alias93? I really like the first chapter. It gives you a lot more context on where we are at the beginning of the movie. Uh, Rereading this, I was surprised that Voldemort reveals so much of the plot uh, of, of the book so early on. But it's done in a cryptic way, so the first time reader will still be left in the dark. I'll be honest, Alice, I'm still left in the dark as well. I, I have a kind of theory what it could be referring to, but quite frankly, I think I'm probably wrong. And so, e even, for, even for a movie watcher, it's great as well. Also, this is the first time since the beginning of the book one that the narration is fr not from Harry's point of view. Even though he still sees... sees some of it in his dream. What do you think of it? Well, like I think Jake was going about this earlier on, there are instances where we get Hermione noticing so Snape apparently doing the spell on Harry and everything. But but again, Harry's in the room, and I know it's outside, but you know what I mean. He's in the room in that thing. Whereas this is so segregated. But you could say it's also not because Harry's subconscious is connected with it. So it's it's complicated. But it's it's definitely a new thing. <laughs> I think mean, we could say this much. This is definitely a new thing that we got in this chapter. It's nice to see Sirius being established as a as a parental figure Harry can turn to when he needs help and advice. Absolutely. We can already see the positive influence Sirius are, uh, has on Harry's daily life while he lives with the Dursleys. He has his book things in his room because of the black room. Sirius ends up being a uh, dec decisive factor in Vernon allowing Harry to go to the Quidditch World Cup with the Weasleys. We can also see Harry is starting to stand up for himself and is no longer intimidated by the Dursleys. Yeah, it, that 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 ship has sailed now, isn't it? He is being diplomatic. Like when he sees Molly's like uh, stamps and everything, he could have laughed out loud and still done the serious line. He, he could have laughed in Vernon's face at the fact that all these stamps and everything, and the fact that Postman was laughing at, at, at the situation as well. And still said, well, I'll get serious on you if you don't let me go. But he is still he is still playing quite diplomatically as well, though, which I really like. I, I appreciate that because, quite frankly, he is he has all the right in the world to be an absolute nightmare for the Dursleys, and he actually isn't, guys. He really isn't. He's getting his way, but that, you know he could be a lot worse. Um, we can also see Harry is starting to stand up for himself. Oh, do 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 do. There is a clear shift in the power dynamic, and it's the first time Harry is not completely miserable whilst living with private drive. It's true. I, I think I said at the start of this video that that chapter two and three, it's it's weirdly optimistic for for the start of a horror Harry Potter book. Not chapter one, but chapter two and three. It's weirdly optimistic, and which is love. It's if we the saddest times wouldn't be as powerful if it wasn't for the happiest times and so that's why i still see you know harry staying at the weasleys in at the start of chamber of secrets as being one of the best chapters that we've covered um and i'm hoping we get some more of that this this time as well by the way did you expect harry to still be at the Dursleys at the start of this book welcome to all the stuff in the movie completely skipped over I didn't. No, I, I really, I really didn't. And even, even when I was watching the movies, part of me did think, "Oh, we're not getting the Dursleys this time." I it really, I, I honestly did, guys, because, because these these books follow a really like nice formula where start off with Harry and the Dursleys, after Hog, uh, some sort of getting ready for the school year, after Hogwarts have an adventure, and then back on the train at the end of the book. That that's that 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 system is actually very comforting, you know, to know. That it's likely that these things are going to be there. And so for the movie to start off at the burrow. Did lose something a little bit. It did lose something a little bit. But. 
this is one of the longest books in the in in the series, guys. How much can you justify having in there? So yeah, I I think that the I think that the movie makers could justify cutting it, although it is it is a bit of a shame. Um, by the way, did you expect? Oh, no, no, I'm 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 all over the place here now. Um. Do, 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 do. And this is just the beginning. I hope you have enough paper ready for this book. I would not be surprised if you ended up taking more notes for this one in the first three than the first three books combined. Oh my goodness! That's why I have it. It's a chunky one, but yeah. Like I was saying earlier on, I really am just going to see Goblet of Fire as being its own entity rather than comparing it to the movie because apparently, apparently, it's going to be hard to compare. Thank you so much for your comment. Josh. Ah, Goblet of Fire. It is always interesting that for the most part, people who see the movie first, it's usually among their favourites and the book readers, it is usually the most hated. Goblet of Fire. It is interesting for that for the most part, people who see the movie first, it's usually among their favourite and the book. You mean the movie? Or do you mean the Book. I'm guessing you mean the movie, because the movie does have a nice. Again, it's it's got like a nice setup. It's like the free. We got we got free things. Uh, we got free trials and everything, and then we have all these other storylines going on together. So it's, it's a nice format for a story. I I, I think that's what you mean. Uh, this is where you really start to see actual bad decisions made with the movies that make them worse than th than the book. One example is from. This very first chapter, only Wormtail is there with Voldy. I love how you always refer to as Voldy, guys. And things are, are cryptic. People are not exaggerating when they talk about how bad the book is adapted. Adapted. Um, the movie has non nonsense and mystery, which is basically the the running theme of of this book. Very interesting. Yeah, I mean. I think I do prefer the fact that uh, David Tennant, as I refer to him, isn't in the first. It isn't in that scene with Pettigrew, and and uh, Wormtail and Voldemort. Because we get more of Wormtail, and he's a very interesting character, guys. He really is. But in the movies, at this point, he is essentially bad guy lackey. That's it. And I know he does have his little bit where he says, "We can choose anyone else." Um, that's my impression of Timothy Spall again. Um, I don't know. Are book readers? It does it. Does it bother book readers that David Tennant is in, is in that scene? Because Harry doesn't see Dave, David Tennant until like long into the movie, of course. Again, I should say. I mean, the big change so far that we've had, the, the, from what I gather, guys, the biggest thing, which the biggest gripe that we've had so far in the first three books is Ron not defending Hermione in the defense against the Dark Arts class with Snape. I know that that rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. And so it would be interesting to see what these bigger things are, because I'm sure there will be bigger things than that. But, I mean, you know, I, that is a big thing, guys, but at the same time, it's like a personable difference whereas there's actually going to be actual there's going to be characters added in, in in the book which um which i haven't met yet so i'm looking forward to um i wonder if birth joke is my I, I don't like predicting stuff guys particularly in buffy because lately i've been predicting way too much happening in buffy but maybe harry's going to meet someone called bertha jorkins later on In a mad eye moody way, you know what I mean? Maybe, maybe. Don't don't confirm or deny that. <laughs> but it's interesting that we've learned that name now, you know. Uh, a name which I'm pretty sure never comes up during the movies, does it? Oh, I don't think it does. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Um, wait until later. You will probably be in shock at at the differences that are yet to come. It's. It's the biggest reason I am thrilled about the TV series coming because they can correct the utter failure that the movie was. Ah, yeah, Josh. 
it's fascinating seeing people dunking on the movie so much. It's very interesting. And, you know, I'm, I am intrigued to learn why, guys. Because at, at this point, at this point, I enjoyed the movie. Will that be the case at the end of the book? We shall see, guys. Great comment, Josh. Thank you so much. Rachel. I feel like in chapter three, we see the beginnings of Harry realizing that the, that Dursley's behavior has been created by his... Oh, Dudley's behavior has been created by his parents. Harry is still taking pleasure in in, uh, in Dudley's uh, woes, though. But, you know, you can't really blame him for that. He sees that uh, they have been neglecting Dudley. Exactly what was going on about last night. Uh, by ignoring certain signs so that they can trick themselves into thinking they had raised him well. However, he has not quite matured enough to let them this re re realization affect his often cruel treatment of Dudley. Probably because Dudley has spent years bullying him first. Rachel, great comment. I mean, that... What I just tried to say, you summed up perfectly there. That is so true. The fact that even Harry is starting to see it. But he's he's 14 years old for one thing. But also what he's gone through with, with Dudley. The fact that he is still taking pleasure in Dudley's woes. It'd be interesting to see... I want to, I want to read more Sirius's letters. Does he refer to them as the Muggles? Yeah, I want to hear more about Sirius's thoughts on the Dursleys. I actually do, you know, guys. Because I don't think they ever met, did they? Although they could have done, obviously. Hmm. Not really. Great comment, Rachel. That's brilliantly put. Colin. Hi, Veggie. The, I love... I love... The Frank stuff at the beginning. You learn a lot about him and the Muggle world. I wish the movie didn't cut out the Dursley. Uh, d out the Dursley. I would have loved to see the stamp scene. That's so true. Even as an extra scene, it would have been awesome. Well, it'll be in the uh, HBO series. I like to 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 also say that I have dyslexia too. And the Harry Potter book was the first book I, I read. Thank you for keeping up the good work, Colin. That is awesome. And I bet I bet that really helped with your dyslexia as well. You know I keep on going about Final Fantasy Seven, guys. Well that is a text game. It's not a text game. There are there are models in it, but all the dialogue is performed via text. And back then I was really ashamed of my reading guys. I really was guys. Um, you know, because of things that happened at school and so on and so forth. But for me to get so invested in a in a game which forced me to read was very very healthy for me and so i'm sure that harry potter helped countless dyslexics in fact and so i'm i'm i'm, I'm hoping it did with you as well Colin. so that that is awesome that was the first books that, that you read thank you for the lovely comment colin will i watched your reaction to to the start of goblet of fire movie to see what's your thoughts of the movie opening with frank you mentioned that the actor who played frank is partially deaf just like frank is i thought that was a funny coincidence mm. it could have been coincidence i mean the fact that, okay well the, the fact that sykes <laughs> it's, i can't i can't express to you how bizarre it is that sykes is in a harry potter movie you know it's like um anyone who, who knows uh leonard rossiter who's a british actor um uh, you know who did a lot of comedy rising damp he's best known for and uh rise uh, uh rise and fall original pairing i think it was called great actor but then he shows up in uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey, which doesn't compute. Leonard Rossiter shouldn't be in 2001 A Space Odyssey. It doesn't make any sense. And so the fact that Sykes is in Harry Potter is so bizarre. But my god, they cast right. that He's brilliant in that scene. He really... And the thing is, guys, it may sound stupid me putting over his performance. He is great in that scene. When we see the light on in the house, we have extremely little context of what's going on. But you see the way that 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 you know Frank's expression is like, 
again, this is happening again, Sorn, and he instantly gets that this is something that's happened before, and yeah, he, he thinks he knows what it is. He's not scared, because he thinks he knows what's, what it is, and so he's going to go and investigate it. We, we get so much context from just his expression, and when he's walking around the house, you know, it's a familiar place to him, so he's not like terrified, he's not like, going like this or anything, so he, he knows it and everything, and though it's this really run-down place, and when he sees what's going on with the snake and everything, he is so bewildered, and so Sykes is fantastic in the movie, I think. It is so odd that it is him in it, and I do think that there is a chance that he was cast partly because he is partially deaf. I don't know, guys, probably not, because... The, the Harry Potter movies have a huge list of British uh, British comedians, comedy actors, I should say, in them. And so I think there is a chance, a small chance that maybe it's not going to be like, like the writer was thinking of Sykes when, when penning Frank. But when choosing Frank's actor, they may have thought, oh, we want to do comedians. We have a partially deaf one who's probably older than... He probably was older than Frank is meant to be uh, in in that scene, in fact. But he is great, though, guys. He's great in that scene. You go back and watch that performance. It, the subtleties of when he's like like that, when he sees the lights on. I can't do it. It's such a good performance. Uh, it, it, he's actually really good in that role. Anyway, so, well, that's a tangent. Let's move on. I really appreciate Frank's um, bravery. He might be one of my favourite muggles in the series. He's definitely my favourite muggle in the series so far. If we're including Fantastic Beasts, no one's going to beat Jacob. Jacob's lovely. He really is. It's the only word for it, guys. Uh, but uh, Frank is a baller. He really is. I love how he's back-talking Voldemort. Um... Did you notice that Barty Grouch Jr. was not with Wormtail and Voldemort? Yeah, I was, I was expecting him to be one of the voices, but it never happened. I love that Sirius... Maybe he was the bottle. That made literally no sense, guys. This is what happens when I make long videos. I start saying stuff like that. That, I, that David Tennant may have been the baby bottle. Um, I love that uh, Sirius got uh, Harry a birthday cake. Yep, absolutely. Uh, the, uh, one of four. At first, I thought he baked it himself and thought, how could he bake a cake on the run? But obviously, he bought it. Yeah, and also, it sounds like he's not... I thought he was going to have to be, like, in, like, back streets and everything and, like, you know, abandoned warehouses and everything like that. It sounds like he might actually be having the time of his life. He might actually be having a great time. It's a bit, it's going on what Harry thinks that maybe what's going on. So maybe he's had a chance to bake a cake. Do, do they bake? Molly, Molly definitely bakes, doesn't she? Yeah, they do bake. Um... And I absolutely love Molly's letter to the to the Dursley. She tries her best with the stamps, absolutely. But it's where weren't for the if it weren't for the stamps, Vernon might have a, a appreciate. If oh, this is if it weren't for the stamps, Vernon might have appreciated it. Maybe because I thought she, her letter was was very proper. That's very interesting, Will. I'll say this no. Vernon wouldn't appreciate it because, you know, as soon as he found out who it was from, he wouldn't appreciate it. I'll put it like that. But Molly is clearly using this form as as a gesture. It it actually is. Molly is trying Molly, Molly is trying to build a, a bridge here that Vernon is gonna knock down with one of his drills. Um But you're right. I didn't think about that. It's it's an attempt to uh, there's a word that I'm trying to think of, and I can't think what it is. When you're trying to soften someone else's um, response, when, when there's someone that you disagree with, you make a gesture to something someone else. And I don't mean patronise. Oh, what is the word? You do it to appease? It's not appease. I feel like it's it's a word like appease, but um, I I can't think what it is. But yeah, that is a great point. Well, I did I actually didn't think of that. It is it, at least in the audiobook, it feels like it's written in one sentence. 
It feels like it's... You know, it's like, how are you? Nice day, you know. <laughs> it's very... But maybe, maybe, maybe that's just my interpretation of it, though. Um... That is a great point, Will. I love that. I love that. I love that point about the fact that I, again, as soon as Vernon found out who it was from, I don't think you know the letter was going to sway him either way. Either way. But the stamps definitely didn't help, did they? They definitely didn't help. Great comment. Thank you so much for making it. Oh my goodness. Okay. Schwamkas. I hope I. I hope I close. Hi, Veggie. This is my first comment uh, at the book club, e even though I've been here for, for a while. Shwamka, thank you so much. Yeah, it's very interesting, guys, because where, where, often, like, people will take, like, you know, people who comment regularly will then take, like, a few months off and then come back and say, hey, Veggie, back. Uh, so, so it's very interesting that some people, first of all, thank you so much for your support, e e even though you're not commenting, um, that, that, that some people, you know, Pick and choose where, the, where where they start talking, and I do think that the, you know the start of a book is a good point to start you know to, to to put in your thoughts and everything. So thank you so much. Just wanted to say how much I enjoy every part of your videos and how I appreciate all the comments pe people leave here. Every book club is a joy to listen to. Because thank you so much. That is very very kind of you. And yeah, I love reading these comments. I really really do, guys. They're my favorite part of doing these. Um, th they really are. Again, I'm so sorry to uh, to, to the, the first comment that I read out where I was a little bit, you know, fast with getting through it. But um, I, I really do enjoy the discussions and pointing out things. I mean, that thing about M Molly's letter may have swayed Vernon a little bit. That's that's something which I didn't give thought to at all. So it's, it's fascinating to read these sort of things. I remember listening to the German audiobook of Goblet of Fire as a kid over and over again to the point that I had frequent earworms of specific passages that it almost got annoying. Goblet of Fire is by far my favourite book. Sadly, the cl my first cassette broke down very quickly. So, uh, I, I must have had a big cassette as well. So I wasn't able to listen to the first three chapters anymore. Shout out to Rufus Beck, who made um, the Harry Potter experience as as uh, a kid so amazing. He is an excellent reader. Re he's excellent reading the books. It was like watching the movie in your head. That's strong because as I was reading your comment, I was, I, was, I was coming up with a question and you've basically just answered it. So I'll say this, guys, to anyone else who's listened to the audio books. In a different language, who was the person that that was chosen to, to read the audiobooks? Because Stephen Fry, um, for the British version, of, uh, for the British version, British comedian, um, but also known to be very intelligent, Oxford educated. I believe he was Oxford rather than Cambridge. Ooh, I think he was Cambridge actually, Betty. I think Fry and Laurie were both Cambridge. I think so. Um. And so that was like the perfect choice. Jim Dale being doing the American one again, British uh, comedy actor guys. And so it'll be very interesting to know what, who, what these other people that read the books out and why they why you think they were chosen. It'll be very interesting to know. Um, I look forward to every episode of the book club and all the other ones follow follow to, ones following in the future. Love from Germany, Schwamkus. Thank you so much. That's a wonderful comment. Thank you so much for 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 your first comment. Uh, there and yeah, greatly appreciated. I, I I'm I'm so glad that you enjoy these videos. I, I read it even when I go on my blooming tangents, which is often uh, often often. <laughs> right, uh, Karen. Hello, Veggie. Hope all is well. I'm so excited for you to get into the Goblet of Fire as a, a fellow movie watcher first. Besides Deathly Hollows Part Two, couldn't help yourself here. Yeah? Was it the case that you held off watching the movie so you could read the book, or was it that you read the book? In anticipation of the movie. Interesting to know. I found the fourth book confusing at times. Oh god, in that case I'm not gonna I'm not gonna stand at any chance there. Uh, I'm interested to see if you feel the same way. Not only does the movie leave out information, but also change things ever so slightly. Oh I'm interested to see that's really what I I found the fourth book confusing at times. Oh interesting. Because because you watched the movie first, or maybe yeah, that's interesting. Okay, well I'll, I'll 
I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. I find it um, it's so amusing that Vernon is conflicted between ha how having Harry around for this for the whole summer versus Harry leaving having fun. I love the Dursley scenes in the book, especially a scene coming up that's hilarious. Well, we shall we, we shall experience that. In fact, that might be in the next chapter, maybe. Because we know that the that the Weasleys are on their way, aren't they, to go to come and pick up Harry. Harry. Oh, said. Oh, Karen, thank you so much for your comment. Said, hi, Reggie. Looking forward to this one. Just what a small comment on the last book review. My head canon is that Harry, being Black's godson, creates a magical connection where he has base access to the vaults of. <laughs> yes. I apologize. I just can't say that word without sneezing, guys. Um, no, this is a very good point. Let's reread re -read this. My headcanon is that Harry, being Black's godson, creates a magical contract where he he has access to the Vault of Green Gods. Said that is excellent headcanon. And the great thing with Magical World, guys, is that you can and so, Magical World and so far you can write anything away. You really can. You can just like you know, you, you can write any little change up just to de be down to science or magic. That is a great point, said. And you know what? That is now my head cannon. Magical contract. That is, I love it. I love it. This is how he, how Black was able to send in the order in Harry's name. Green got is the safest place to store your money according to Hagrid. So. It must be a magical thing that allows shops to confirm orders with the Vault of Gringotts while keeping it anonymous. Um, this has not been confirmed anywhere that I just... Just how I like to see it. I think you're absolutely on the money, Said I love this theory. Um, everyone... Uh, Everyone that's excited about this book, including me, thanks for th for the review. I th I thank you, said that is a great point. I I, 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 that is now my head cannon. That that explains it all, guys. There is a magical bond because we talk about we hear about magical bonds all the time, guys, all the time. So why wouldn't um, birth certificate, birth certification, and and marriage and everything have actual mar magical components to them as well? I love it, said. Fantastic. Oh, no ghost one. It's lukewarm. Um, there's nothing worse than lukewarm coffee, guys. Although this is hot chocolate, but seriously. Anyway, Florian. Ha, Veggie. A couple of questions. Uh, what do you think about hearing more backstory about the old Garda? I absolutely blooming loved it. In what manner will the Wheezies pick up Harry? I was going to say the flying car, but that wouldn't be right, though, would it? Oh, my goodness. It's not going to be magic carpet, is it? And how will the discussion between the Dursleys and the Weasleys go down? I know these are prediction questions, but I am wondering what you might think about it. You know what, Florian? If I'm going to do this fairly, I will tell you what I thought before the last three comments. Nada. So... I'm now very interested for in the next chapter because I thought it was just going to be a case of yeah, Harry waved off the Dursleys as he goes off with the Weasleys. I am giving the next the next chapter any consideration, and so that's where I'm currently at. So we shall see what goes down. Who will survive? That's my question. <laughs> the next chapter. Uh, thank you so much for writing a great great comment, Johnny. Hey, Reggie. I have no idea why they made Barty Crouch Jr. appear at the beginning of the movie with Voldemort and Wormtail. It sort of spoils the ending of the movie. Ooh. Let's read on. <laughs> Just the first of so many changes they made me roll my eyes at the movie. Well, the thing is, I don't know how much Barty Crouch, is actually, Barty Crouch Jr. is going to be visibly in the movie. As in, we, David Tennant, Barty Crouch. 
In the book, I should say. I don't know how much is going to appear in the book. If you look at the movie, he is barely in the movie, is he? He really isn't. He's barely, he's like in three scenes that I can think of. Four, technically. I've just remembered, guys, that when I made when I made my Goblet of Fire movie reaction, that I got a lot of comments saying that the the, the, the story between Barty Senior and Junior is actually really tragic. I've I completely forgot about that, so yeah, it'll be good to um to finally learn that now. In a way, um, maybe it's because it's David Tennant because David Tennant was on the climb here, although it was technically before he was Doctor Who. <laughs> and obviously, when Doctor Who um was David Tennant and um. Oh come on, Veggie! You know this actor so much better than David Tennant. The the new the first new Who guy. Come on, Christopher Eccleston. There we go. Uh, that was a big deal in America, wasn't it, Doctor Who? And so, um, not so much anymore. I don't even know if if Americans really watch it much anymore. But I know that at, at one point it was really big deal, wasn't it? Um. I don't see it as a spoiler, Janny. I guess you could say it's heavy foreshadowing. Because, yeah, because when he shows up as a Death Eater at the Quidditch World Cup, it's just like, he's smiling, isn't he? Uh, whereas here we learn that there is a, there is a conspiracy going on. So I wouldn't say it's a spoiler, but it's, 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 uh, it's definitely foreshadowing, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, so Dudley was finally put on a diet, but for all the wrong reasons. That's true. I do kind of... Oh, there you guys. I'm glad that Petunia has put her foot down with it. Sure, it's draconian. Oh, is it draconian, though? If they're going to eat together, guys, you can't... I'm glad that Petuna has done the right thing. That's the best way I can put it. That really is the best way I can put it. Um, sometimes it seems that Vernon and Petunia abuse their own son just as much as they abuse Harry without realising it. Janny, I... As much, maybe not, but they do badly... It's, it's child abuse, guys. It really is. Unfortunately, it, it may sound strange to, 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 to some, but... Treating your child as, you know, an unfallible, is that the right term? Being, and they can do what they want, eat what they want, and we will always find an excuse for them. That is not good, guys. And it's the same with animal ownership as well. In fact, you know what? The way that, you know what? Oh, wow, guys, I'm, about, I'm actually about to say this. The way that Petunia and Vernon treat Dudley is how a lot of people treat their dogs. Wow, that's actually really true, guys. Not me and Woozle. That's actually very true. That's sad. I find it sad, guys. I really do. Uh, blah, blah, blah. They spoil him, but but give him everything... But, uh, by giving him everything they want. Feed him to the point that he looks like, like a whale, in Harry's words. With no concern over his health. I used to hate Dudley when I first read the books, but the more I think about it, the more I feel sorry for him. Janny, I would love to know how old you were when you first read the books, as I think this is because I'm of my age that I am just feeling sorry for Dudley. Uh, but that's that, uh, that's so cool that you, that you come around, around to that way of thinking as well. Th that sounded quite patronising. Uh, it's very interesting to know that, that your perspective of it has changed. I'm not saying you have finally become right like me. I'm saying, yeah, the way I word things sometimes, bad, guys, is very badly. It's very interesting that, that you have changed your mind over time. And we've had things like, uh, like that happen before, guys, in previous books. And so, um, that's very interesting. I wonder in what shape were the birthday cakes after two weeks under the floorboards. All right, okay. I've got a dirty mind, guys. <laughs> that that little bit at the end there made me think of a Kirby enthusiasm episode. And if you know, if you've watched Kirby enthusiasm, you know what I'm thinking of. 
Ignore me, guys. But yeah, it's true, actually. Unless... No, he doesn't use magic, Veggie! I was about to say, maybe Harry used magic to, to keep it all okay. But he doesn't, he doesn't do magic. Okay. In Diamond Gone Alley, he, had a, he got a box which keeps food fresh. There you go. That, that, that's, that explains it away. <laughs> but it's true. Yeah, that, that cake, it, it's, it's, it's floor cake, isn't it? Floor cake. It's like on computer games where, like, on, like, Castlevania or something, like, you, like, punch the wall, the wall falls to pieces, and there's, like, like, a roast, a roast turkey with all the trimmings there, and you pick it up, and it refills all your energy. I don't know what I'm even talking about at this point, guys. Jenny, thank you so much for your wonderful comment. Steven. Uh, ah, Goblet of Fire. I could talk about this book for hours. We will do, don't worry. As many of us said already, this is definitely a turning point where the movies made incredibly poor decisions. Al although, I will say that I think they got a, the tone of the movie right. A movie pretty spot on. Fantastic. And the other things, like the look of the movie, like sets set design and light look fantastic in the movie oh yeah absolutely they're very pretty they're all very well made move they're all very well made movies guys if they're well made movies of the original stories we we, we are yet to see but um but yeah I, I think that most of us would agree that you know even in the movies that we don't like there are definitely good things about them right <laughs> These opening opening chapters are just incredible. Not the wrestling. Sorry, ignore me. Uh, Frank Br Brace is by far my favourite muggle. He's been through so much only to have his name mudded, not muggled, by something he didn't even do. The entire village should be ashamed of how they treated him. This story is tragic. You know what, Stephen? You just made me think. What is going to be the talk of the town now? God, it's got. Did, actually, that's a good point. Did Voldemort, Wormtail, and not Barty Crouch Jr. and Nagani? Oh, Nagani. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. We, we know. We know what happened. Two. Okay. So Frank's body was never found. There we go, guys. We now know the answer to the question which I was about to ask. I answered it myself. Nagini, I should say. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, but I, I hate the villagers. I really do. I'm with you, Stephen. I'm very. I'm interested to know what your thoughts thoughts of these chapters. Was it what you were expecting, or did any anything stick with you from these chapters? Well, the whole Frank thing was fantastic. I didn't exceed that. Like I say, like when I was making my notes, I was thinking, "Oh, Frank, that's a new character." I didn't realize it was the gardener at that point, so I loved it. I loved that, guys. That that, that absolutely stuck stuck with me. Molly's letter is fantastic. Uh, yeah, there are a lot of stuff for me. Sirius's correspondence with Harry as well. It's all great stuff, guys, which is all cut from the movies. Um, I'm interested to know. Uh, also, I just have to say, I think they should have definitely stuck to the original plan for Goblet of Fire and made it a two-parter. Once you finish the book, I'm sure you'll, you'd will you agree that they had an important job to do this book justice. I'm not sure if I've heard that before, Stephen. Have I? Maybe I have. Okay, if any of you have, have said that before, guys, how, how there was originally plans to have, or, you know, there was considering having two movies of Goblet of Fire, I apologise if you have said that before, but that sounds like a new one on me. How very, very interesting. Great comment. Um, and Dumbledore sunbathing on the beach in his robes and hats. Yes, it's a wonderful image. Stephen, great comment. Thank you so much. That was a lot of food for thought with there. Mortimer. Like you noticed previous books, uh, like you noticed previous books were already very different from the movies. But from this part forward, it's almost like two different stories. So I can't wait for your mind to be blown <laughs> many times. When it comes to those chapters, I really love the description of the battle in Vernon's head between him 
yeah, his need to keep Harry unhappy and to and to get rid of him. It's um, I, 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 I've gotten rid of the note now, but I loved the way that it was worded. It was the, the most, the most. Oh, I can't remember the the, the something. The something his instincts. I can't remember what it was. It is amazing. I loved. I loved. I had to make sure that I got that quote down verbatim for my notes because it was just so well put. Mortimer, thank you so much for your comment. Kind it. Uh, all I had to say, pig. Wish he was in the movies, cause cutest o cuteness overload. If you look him up, there is a promotional photo of Ron holding Pig, which means they probably wanted to include him in the movie. But they never did. Oh, Kenzie, I'm tempted to do that now. Uh, Ron and Pig movie. There it is. And then it's got like a, a, a pig that's outside one of the shops. <laughs> There it is! Oh my giddy goose. Oh my goodness, that is a gorgeous animal. And the bird ain't bad. Uh, sorry guys, I just made a really clever joke. Um, hello, there's a movie called Pig. Ignore me, guys. So yes, there's a picture of Rupert Grint. Careful. And a lovely little owl. That's adorable, guys. It really is. What a beautiful bird. Is it really called Pig? I was wondering if it was it was a typo in the letter, but it does it does look like that it that, that the bird is called Pig. Maybe it is a pig can fly thing. But that's not the sort of thing that wizard would say, though. They'd say Merlin's beard again, wouldn't they? <laughs> Great! I, I, that was an awesome image to look up, Kenzie. Thank you so much. That was, that, that was lovely to see. Uh, Slim. I have a theory about the detectability of magic. It is my belief that good magic generates feelings of comfort, whilst dark magic generates feelings, feelings of discomfort. These scars are almost impercept imperceptible. Uh, however, this, uh, I, I think there are times when this magic atmosphere is detectable. The villagers of Little Hangerton agree that the Riddle House is creepy since the murders of the Riddles and their son. Hogwarts, I was thinking that's what you were referring to, yeah. Because uh, obviously, like, like the, uh, the other people that lived there since have lived there for a very short time. Um, Hogwarts, by comparison, always bestows feelings of comfort and calm among Harry each time he returns there. It's calmer, isn't it? It's calmer that we're talking about here. I, we know from the films that Horcruxes are able to affect moods of the wizards around them. Horcruxes are possibly the most evil objects ever exist in, to exist. No, I can't think of a good, good joke, guys. I, I, I was going to say, huh, what about Ron or something like that? But I can't think of anyone or anything. I can't say the Gryffindor Quidditch team. Because <laughs> it's not an object. Anyway, insert your own joke there, guys. What is more evil than... what's Okay, what is the most evil thing other than the Horcruxes in the Harry Potter series? <laughs> and make it a funny thing, I'm sorry. Um, oh, come on, Veggie. Gilderoy? No, that's too obvious. There must be something. What are those things that that girl is getting, like, ostracized in Hogwarts Legacy for doing? The, the, the stink ball things. I can't remember. Either way, we need to get back to it. I'm so sorry, guys, that I, I may have to stream for such a long time. Either way, that is a very... Uh, yeah, it's all about karma, isn't it, Slim? And the thing is, terrible things have happened in Hogwarts. And there is a hot Horcrux at Hogwarts. There's a couple. There's at least two. How many Horcruxes are there currently at Hogwarts? I can think of two. 
including Harry. Is there more than two? I, I honestly can't remember. We'll get to it when we get to Deathly Hollows, guys. Um, say what you will about Voldemort. That's a great way of starting a sentence. Let's see where this goes. Say what you will about Voldemort. He has a sense of humour. I will allow you to perform the essential task for me. One which many followers will give their hand right hand to perform. It's the Voldemort sass that we were talking about earlier on. There we go, Slim. I love it. Did you notice that Nagini has a triangular head? I actually didn't. Uh, I, I presume it's just like describing a big snake's head. Only venomous snakes have a triangular head. Any ideas on the identity of the wealthy man who owns the riddle house? I have a theory, but I'll save it for a more relevant chapter. No, I think it's just a random. I think it's a random muggle at this point, uh, as I was saying earlier on. Uh, so, yeah. It'll be interesting to see if it does change. I don't think it is Voldemort's. I guess in a weird way, it could be Wormtail. But then why wouldn't they just tell? Because they don't want anyone to know that they're there, Veggie. That's fascinating about the venomous snake triangular head thing, Slim. Great, great comment there. Did you enjoy the la latest episode of Dursley's Family? Such drama. Oh, it's great. It's great. And it's completely joyous as well. There was no there was no moment where Harry was on the defence, like, at all. The worst thing that happened to Harry was eating the grapefruit. But he had cake upstairs uh, anyway, and so... Uh, and also, pig flew into his head. Uh, great comment, Slim. Nix. To quote Wood, the Gryffindor Quidditch captain, who said to, to the team... This is it, the big one. We, he was talking about a game, but I mean this book. Oh, Nix. I think you will enjoy this one more than the previous three books because there will be a vast amount of extra content and numerous subplots to enjoy. That's actually very true. It'll be very interesting to see how, how, that, how that goes. This is one, one I wanted to see you react to from the very start, but better late than never. I know, it's taken us a while, hasn't it? Incred incidentally, it was the first of the Harry Potter books I ever read whilst while on my family, family visit and picked it up because I was bored. It was four in the morning when I finally decided I had better put it down and go to bed. My goodness, Nick, that's interesting. Had you seen any of the movies up to this point? Because the thing is, guys, all these books have to start from a point where you can come in and understand them. But I feel like... I feel like Goblet... I think, and going forward, they'll be harder to do that. But Goblet out of the four so far must have been the toughest one. Especially learning this story about Frank, which then just gets erased from relevance, you know? You know, he says before Frank becomes significant again. Um, that's very interesting, Nix. That's very interesting uh, way of doing it. And obviously, you, you're thoroughly enjoying it as well. Good stuff. Uh, thank you so much for your comment. Ishi. Ishi. Hi, Veggie. Hope you're well. In chapter one, the book starts off different to the normal way the books usually begin. And we get a long backstory about Frank and Voldy's dad. <laughs> I love the way you say Voldy's. Um, hope you enjoy listening to it. Poor Frank. I, I completely concur. Being accused of murder and then being annoyed by the neighbor, neighborhood kids and being murdered himself... And then being murdered himself for no reason. It's very true. And not just annoyed, but like harassed. It was a harassment, really, wasn't it? Because the kids were doing it because they knew that they could. It may, well, at least from Frank's standpoint. Because that it was Frank's standpoint, so it may not be true. But we definitely get the impression that the kids felt like they had a free pass to do it. But that, again, could be um, bias, though, isn't it? It's what they call it. Um, yeah, bias. You know what I mean, guys. There's a term which everyone is using at the moment. What's it called? It's not perce perception bias, but it's essentially that, though. Um, in Chapter 3, we see how Harry has learned, with the help of Sirius, to stand up to the Dursleys. Go, Harry. Absolutely. 
Yeah, because he, like, that's the sort of Prince of Azkaban. He is sassy, but he is sassy Harry, I should say. But, um, but nowhere near as sass now. He's, he is completely in control. Like I say, when he was, like, saying how amazing the breakfast was, I did think he was pushing his luck. But then again, he has, he's holding all the cards now, Patrick. Nice. Um, Mrs. Weed's letter was hilarious. And a finally, uh, is hinted in, oh, uh, and finally, as hinted in my last comment, we learn about Ron's owl named Pig. Any thoughts? It's bizarre, uh, but it's it's adorable as well, though. Can't wait for you to read the next uh, next few chapters as well. We get to meet many new characters and also more time in the borough. That's what we like to hear. I love all the chapters pert pertaining. To the borrow, it feels like a sort of magical escape, staycation. It, it really is an escape, isn't it? Pertain. To be appropriate, related, related and applicable. Yeah, I think I have heard that word before, but for some reason, I don't think I've ever read it before. And so that kind of threw me off. But that was a great use of the word, though. Um, hope you will love reading the next few chapters the same way I do before the chaos ensues. Have a good week, hopefully. Until next one. Ishii, thank you so much. Uh, you too, as well. Great comment. And yeah, I, I, I do hope we get some downtime. That's the way That's the way I always refer to it. I'm going to see... Ishii, thank you very much for your wonderful comment. Uh, Joe... Hi, Veggie. I'm so excited to join your patron. Joe, thank you so much. Your content is so relaxing and comforting. Thank you so much. Even when I scream in cup, you're relaxing. I really like the way you think and form your opinions. That is very kind of you, Joe. I really do appreciate that. I read Goblet of Fire around the time it was published. It was the first Harry Potter book I've read and, and was uh, immediately captivated. Much like the previous comment. How interesting. I was so excited for the movie and thought I, I loved the and although I loved the movie, uh, the, the movie anyway. I think the it's the worst Potter adaptation. Yeah, that's there is definitely a difference between a bad movie and a bad adaptation, guys. Because a bad adaptation can still be a cracking movie. You know what I mean? And I guess a bad movie can still be a good adaptation in a, in a weird way. It was turned into a comedy teen drama, and the mystery was flat. Flattened and s simplified. Very interesting. I believe that if the director of the third movie made it, it would have been a better movie in the series. Uh, the best movie in the series. Well, the, fir the third movie definitely does have a feeling of, okay, this is probably the best made movie. It just feels like it is, you know. It just feels very, very well directed. Um, Comedy and teen drama is interesting that you bring it out. Because I still presume we're going to be getting some of that. But, you know, unless it's compl a complete tangent from the plot, we shall see. But they have lovely hair, though. Because I remember Goblet of Fire is where Ron and Harry had that lovely hair, wasn't it? Um, also, I love Harry's confrontation with Uncle Vernon. Harry is really biting back now i hope the comment isn't too long joe that is that is absolutely not too long don't worry about that at all thank you so much and uh very kind words at the start of it um very interesting how you say uh, yeah i think it's impossible to imagine what goblet of fire would have been like if it was, if it was more like the prison Azkaban movie but we shall see though guys i presume there will still be some teen drama I presume Pumpkin Pasty is going to be uh, playing her cards in this book. And she said like three words in the last book, didn't she? I think she said good luck and went, and went huh, at one point during one of the Quidditch matches. Um, so yeah, we'll see Pumpkin Pasty is back. Obviously Cedric with, with, with his thing. Uh, Hermione, I'll be very interested to see wh which direction her... You know what? That's something which I'm really looking forward to, to see what direction Hermione's character goes, because I can't see it going in the way that the movie did, guys. We shall see. Joe, thank you so much for your, for, for your comment, and thank you so much for, for joining us here. Very kind of you. Harry. Harry's back. Um, is your icon actually of... Um, 
Bring Bobby. Radcliffe. But with long hair. It is, isn't it? That's wonderful. Okay. I think it is. It looks like um, Sirius and Harry <laughs> mix. Hey, Veg! And everyone else. A Goblet of Fire hype. Since there are a lot of changes in this movie onwards, let's try and not give away which things are book accurate and not until we learn in the book. We'll make it more exciting for Veggie. Very kind of you, Harry. I think that we, we, we've done a good job like that. Like I said, there is one, one comment which I have had been forewarned to kind of avoid. And I, I, I'm going to do it this time. But um, I, I think that's very often someone will make a comment and then because because these book clubs are up for like a, 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 a couple of weeks at least uh, before I actually get to, to covering the comments. Very often if someone's put in a spoiler, then someone will reply saying, hey, by the way, can you edit that part? Because Veggie and you know nine times out of ten it's a complete innocent mistake and they say oh sorry fix that and so uh so yeah i i feel like we we have been good at this we we commenters can also be better at keeping our comments short you you said it not me harry, harry but I, I i do agree with you sometimes oh again this length is fine and on topic to make it less draining for veggie since the book club has become quite big i gotta say harry am i meant to be reading this because this seems to be more <laughs> aimed at everyone else than me this is like a uh, correspondent to the originals if we feel like our comment is getting getting long i think it can be a good idea to skim through the other comments and see if someone already wrote the same thing. That way we can trim our comments and give you more time to talk about each topic. That's true, Harry. I do feel like that would be quite difficult because there are a lot of comments here. And so I, I think I think you're right about maybe you could like word search and stuff like that. But at the, at the same time, I don't mind people making out because the thing is someone might have the same opinion but a slight different take on it and I want people to be able to give those both opinions the length of the comment is something which I um which I do ask for people to try and keep short and you know sometimes they do creep over and I'm not going to get annoyed or refuse to read or anything like that but um my my, my problem with longer comments guys is that I, because if if I spend so much so much time reading a long comment in my mind, I have less time to reply to it. And so, if, if your comment is like a couple of sentences long, but it's like a really engaging, uh, interesting thought, I'll probably be like, oh wow, we'll talk about it for a long time. If it's a wall of text, which I just need to get through, I, I will give my thoughts, but very, very quickly, you know? And so, it's it's a balancing act, guys. I'm spinning plates here, basically. But um, I don't want anyone to feel like they can't make the comment they want. But if those comments could be made shorter, it's it's always gonna it's always gonna help. Um, but, but Harry, I I appreciate you for making that comment. Actually, it's very very kind of you because it is kind of, um, how can I put this? It's kind of like what I can't say. You know what I mean? And so I appreciate it, Harry, because I, I do want everyone to be able to make their comment. So, but I do appreciate you, you basically be say, saying, hey guys, we could make it a bit easier on Veggie, um, which is always nice because uh, <laughs> I thoroughly enjoy this, guys. But I've looked at the time and I think this is definitely going to be probably well over five hours, this one, which is not a surprise because it's the start of a new book. But uh, Harry, thank you very much. Oh, how do you think the Weasleys will pick up Harry? Again, I haven't given it a second thought, Harry. So I'm, you know what, I'm going to not even predict. I'm going to just, I, I'm, I mean, the, the obvious, oh. <laughs> I just made a stupid uh, mental burp then. Um, maybe they could use, um, not polyjuice, what's it called? The powder, flu powder into the Dursley's dining room. And my head thought, well, hang on, they haven't been invited in yet. That's Buffy the Vampire Slayer, but Veggie, wizards can't enter, Wuggles' house is uninvited. Um, I don't know. The logical option would be flu powder. I don't see anything wrong with flu powder. Unless they're picking carry up on the way I'm not, I'm, I don't know. We shall see, Harry. I'm, I'm, you know what? I'm, I'm not going to give it any more thought. I'm just going to enjoy the ride, I guess, literally. Uh, thank you so much for your very kind comment. No! 
Tara! Hello, you all. Book 4 excited. The only thing I have to say, Bertha Drawkins. Poor thing. I always wondered what the heck she she went with why the heck she went with Pettigrew I mean he was supposed to be dead like yeah great idea going some some going some unknown place with a, a, a dead person we don't really get much context of what's going on with Bertha the do we I only said that, that, they, that they I think they accidentally bumped into each other in an inn or something I'm not sure I remember when the book came out for the first chapter had me so excited. I still love the first chapter since it gave a tiny, tiny look at Voldemort's family. Also, I hated the German translation. I always brought the books in both English and German. Read them in English and English pref preferably though. You're, you're, <laughs> you just remind me of uh, uh, the IT crowd. I'll, I'll mention that in one moment. The hints, words, word plays and peeves were just so much better in English. And peeves, very interesting. I guess because he he talks in riddles, doesn't he? Not Tom Riddle. Also, anyone ever heard of rhetorical question? Ha, ha, anyone ever heard of a rhetorical question? That is not a rhetorical question. I am 75% sure that, that that is correct. <laughs> um, yeah, you just so there's a TV show called the IT Crowd, guys. They tried to make an American version of it, but it didn't work. Um, I like it. I I, I do enjoy it, guys. I like this, the, the early stuff with um, oh, what's his name, the guy from the day to day and stuff in, um. But yeah, it's a, it's a comedy, and it's it, it's good, guys. It gets it, the last series is terrible, in my opinion. It, it really went downhill, in my opinion. But um, IT Crowd is a good comedy, and there's a there's a character on it who apparently, whenever Harry Potter book comes out, he immediately buys the child's version and the adult's version because apparently there are actually there's like an adult cover, so like adults didn't feel like they're reading like you know children's literature i guess uh on the train and so on and he would get both versions and check them to see if there's any differences between each page and everything uh but it's very interesting that you got the german and the english version though and you prefer uh, yeah the hints word plays and peeves i can see the peeves thing being a problem being translated actually i really can that's very interesting dara always a pleasure to hear from you dara i hope, hope, hope things are going well for you Ember. <laughs> Hi, Vegidora. <laughs> the Explorer. Alrighty. Book, book G Goblet of Fire, my favourite. As a team, because of so much more fantastic creatures, and I am a myth, fairy tale, uh, and bestiary nerd? I'm not even sure what that means. Bestiary nerd. Though book two and three ha have plenty, also have plenty of that in in that regard but also the right balance between fun adventure danger and bravery which uh, the which the movie did right and the slowly and right unveiling mystery surrounding mr crouch and mad eye done so poorly in the movie it's just confusing that's very interesting ambron it does kind of feel like just out of nowhere, doesn't it? It's, like, it's it feels like a footnote at the end of the movie, doesn't it? Like like you know, Cedric's what happened to Cedric's happened and everything, and it's very very sad. And then oh yeah, Mad Eye. <laughs> it does kind of feel like that. So it'll be interesting to see how different that is here. Uh, you got introduced to Pig now, and it's uh, own quite and it's uh, it's own quite the character. But also added personality for Hedwig. It really, I completely agree with that. More emphasis on her pride. Uh, yeah, and sassiness, I feel. I feel like Hedwig's a bit sassy. She's, she's probably getting off Harry, quite frankly. I think by now you understand how hard her death will hit in book seven. Yeah, and it's so interesting how, how it was done in the movie, guys. How it was kind of like that moment. And then it kind of wasn't, it kind of wasn't ever addressed again so yeah 
it's going to be sad. I mean, fact is, guys, we're coming up with a lot of sad moments, aren't we? We really are. Um, you got introduced. Oh, do, 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 do. I can never read chapter three and four enough in this book. It's so funny and not uh, pre uh, and not present in the movie. A shame. I guess it would be a bit same old. They wanted to focus on the darker elements and get uh, get go and both teen romance and, and angst. Going on the last comment again. again. Still prior Voldemort's resurrection, both kids and, and teens could love it. Magical wonder and thrill of it so present as much as much the tournament as uh, as the pre preparation for it. Plus plenty plenty light hearted moments. Now only Malfoy as a ferret stands out <laughs> Malfoy as a ferret stands out as a comedy moment not involved in involving puberty. Of course he turns to a blue ferret, a complete and hang on one moment. Oh I nearly had my own ship sailing then guys. I thought that Hermione's Patronus was a ferret, but it's an otter. Not a million miles away. That that would have sailed a billion ships, guys. I know it's a popular. I know it's a very popular uh, fan fiction pairing, Draco and and Hermione. But for the shortest time, I thought, hang on, wasn't it an otter that uh, that uh, Hermione uh, a ferret that Hermione made? No, it's an otter. That would have been because of that moment. Her Patronus became a ferret, guys. <laughs> That'd be crazy. Uh, great comment, and Brent, thank you so much. And yeah, I can't wait. Like the build up to the, I feel like the build up to the tournament is going to be as enjoyable as the tournament itself. And of course, we still have the uh, Dumbledore ask calmly yet to come as well, which is going to be a big moment, guys. That is a big moment for these book reviews. Thank you so much for your comments. How Frank Br braces? I always, I always worried that, that I. It's Bryce, isn't it? That's how it's pronounced. Frank Bryce's backstory is one of the saddest in the Harry Potter saga. It shows how uh, us how devastating effects can a uh, false accusation have on a person's life. Absolutely, it's a, it's a lifetime of loneliness and um, and segregation, I guess, is in a way. Although he does want that, he wants the quiet life, doesn't he? I can't help myself but look back at Philosopher's Stone. There, Harry falsely accuses Professor Snape of murder attempts and other heinous crimes. And even when he was proven wrong, he never apologized, never apologized to him. I already see people typing, oh, how are we shut up about it already? But please hear me out. I'll keep it short. I appreciate that, How I, I, I know that, that, that you are... I don't want to use, use the term Snape fan as as uh, as a as a suggestion that your opinion isn't uh, valued. It absolutely is. It absolutely is valued. Um, so let's get through this. It's just one example of how unfair it is the character of Professor Snape's treated, both in universe and in fandom. When Frank braces uh, is falsely accusing murder, we're clearly supposed to sympathize with him and rightly so the same goes for harry when he falsely uh, accused of being slytherin's heir uh, in um chamber of secrets but when professor snape is falsely accused it's no big deal and we're supposed to be okay with it what well this is because the book is written from harry's perspective power also who is um who is snape accused of murdering in the first book And also, he's never officially accused, isn't he? It's not like he's he's taken to the police station or anything. Let's continue. Um, I think it sends a very strange message to the ch child reader: if you're wrong, s s some if you wrong someone, you don't have to apologize. If you don't don't feel like it, it's no big deal. I don't like this message at all. The, and Professor Snape is right when he calls Harry arrogant, refuses to apologize when he knows, he, you know, you 
falsely accuse someone is very arrogant. Sorry for the rant, but it's something that bothers me a lot. It's fine, how I appreciate. I always appreciate reading reading your comments. I, I do wonder, like, some of these books you must just really not like. If if if. What I mean is how much joy outside of Snape's character do you get from, from the characters? Because it sounds like you don't like a lot of characters. Are there any aspects of Harry, Ron and Hermione that you do like? And again, I don't mean that to be a, 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 a leading question. It's a genuine question because um, if, you're, if you're comparing what happened in... Um, you did say Philosopher's Stone, didn't you? To what happened with Frank. That's going back quite a way. I would also say that it is worse for Frank. It is worse for Frank, guys, because Snape is a respected member of Hogwarts. He is, guys. He's feared, sure, but he's not feared by everyone, for one thing. Uh, but he's also, you know, he's kept in by, by, by Dumbledore. He is a renowned scientist and everything. Um, I'd imagine he does have friends. I'd imagine he does. Uh, we, we, we know that him and McGonagall do backtalk each other about the Quidditch teams and everything. That ex th that does require a little bit of jovialness and and camaraderie in the teaching profession. You know, like having that little, oh yeah, we, we won this so many times, McGonagall and all that sort of stuff, which he has said to McGonagall in the past. Frank has nothing. So it is different. Frank's situation is much worse. I un I understand that, that your comparison to it, and I, I appreciate it. It's certainly not a perspective which I had thought about, and so it's fo definitely food for thought. But Frank's life is... No, I can't say that. I was going to say that Frank's life is worse than Snape's. Taking everything that we know into consideration, it's hard, guys. But I do still think that Frank... No, it's, it's a, there's no point in comparing it, guys. There is absolutely no point in comparing it. But the the sheer isolation and loneliness of Frank's entire life, which is then cut short in the most cruel way, um, it's heartbreaking. And I, I and it's not a contest to see who is the most you know, who's most deserving of sympathy. But comparing him and Snape is not something which I expected. But I appreciate your comment, Howard. Um, and I appreciate the apology at the end as well about the about the rant. Uh, thank you very much for your comment. I called you Basu last time, so I'm going to call you Basu again. I'm so sorry. I, I worry about saying y your first y your first name wrong. Hi, Reggie, in capital letters this time. The movies omit Tom Riddle's senior's family. Why did he erase his Muggle connection? Was it just his disdain of muggles in chamber of secrets voldemort says you think i was going to use my f filthy father's name for forever very good that, that i appreciate that callback uh, i've got to say this guys one thing that the movie does do quite smartly is it shows the 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 tomb of the riddles doesn't it so in a way it does have their death being brought up in the movie just in a very very subtle way that's only just clicked in my mind now. Um, whose viewpoint did Harry see that scene from? He thinks about the chair turning around. So not Voldemort's perspective. Is that a plot hole? This is what... I, you know what, uh, Bas Basu? I appreciate your comment because this is what where me and Max were like, hang on, is that is that not... Because Max definitely saw it from Voldemort's perspective, but but we see Frank and we see Voldemort. I I get the impression that it's switching. I get the impression that it's switching. So it's not just a Horcrux, you know, seeing through the eyes or anything. It's it's more like a a general nightmare. Uh, Voldemort's use of Wormtail's school nickname, Wormtail. Is striking. Okay, I'm glad someone else brought this up. It feels like a constant reminder to Wormtail's betrayal of his friends for Voldemort's power to protection. Which is exactly what I speculated earlier on. Even though Wormtail despises serving v Voldemort, he continues to do it. Th th I'm so glad someone else brought that up. Why do you think Wormtail hesitates to use Harry, the person who spared him? Could it could it be that uh, gratitude, guilt, fear? Let's not forget Dumbledore's words about Harry saving Wormtail's life. That is what I presume it is. It is that Bond thing. Um, and you know what, guys? We have to see Wormtail who he is. He is a cowardly opportunist. 
that doesn't mean that he doesn't have affection for anyone. And he probably does still have affection for James and Lily and so on and so forth. Uh, and he probably feels... T he probably does feel bad about it, but he's thinking better than, than me. But that doesn't mean that he's not going to have any affection for Harry. So it's it's uh, it's complicated. Voldemort thoroughly re researched Frank Brace. Detected his lie about the wife without making eye contact. Rules out leg legomancy, mind reading from movie 5. Oh wow, nice reference there. Voldemort's rise to power contained... Conceded... With Snape and Marauder's school years, this suggests his terror, ter terrorist activities began around age 40, more than two decades after leaving Hogwarts and the R Riddle Diary was, uh, was, R Riddle Diary was 50 years old. Same as what happened with Frank. Sorry about the long post. I tried to compress it as much as possible without losing any points. One suggestion is to use one of the AI voice tools and read the text aloud if it helps you get through easier. You know what? Uh, again, Basu, I'm so sorry I call you Basu. Uh, Mr. Basu, I should say. Um, I really appreciate that comment and I appreciate that you, that you did try to keep it shorter. Um, I have considered using those tools before. They do often talk quite fast, um, and I also just feel like I'm able to focus more when I'm actually reading them rather than listening to them, but it, I have considered it before. Thank you so much for your comment. Nick. Hi, Veggie. I'm going to tear my shirt one day doing that, guys. Hi, Veggie. Chat. We were just parked. Hang on one moment. Nick. Hey, Veggie. Chapter 1, you will have your reward, Wormtail. I will allow you to perform an essential task for me, one that many of my followers would give their right hand. I can't say the word before without sneezing. I will make that joke every single time I sneeze. I don't know why, I've, you know why I'm probably sneezing so much? It's because my window's open. Which normally I don't do, guys. Normally I, I record with, uh, with my with my window closed regardless. Even if it's like a... a, a um. It becomes like a, uh, a sauna in here. But because this is such a long video, and because I have to have at least this on, I did uh, want my, win my window to be open. I'm so sh sorry about the, the, um, the lighting in this video, guys. If you're watching this rather than just listening, it is extremely bright in here right now. It's like mushroom clouds just gone out outside right now. But uh, yeah, it's very inconsistent lighting. But like I say, I press... I, I went to start the video and boom, my light just wasn't working, which which is unfortunate. There we go, it's calmed down a little bit now. Also, I need to get new batteries for these as well. They're meant to be like completely solidly white. Yeah. But, but they look alright like that. Anyway. anyway. Sorry, Nick, back to your question. Your, your message, I should say. No, Barty Crouch Jr., D David Tennant with Wormtail and Voldemort. Absolutely. That, that, that was, um, yeah. The more I think about it, the less I like the fact that they had him in. In that scene in the movie. Chapter 2. Love to see Black uh, Black's uh, enormous bird in the movies. Well, that's going to be a fascinating scene for the, for, for the, for the show, isn't it? Chapter 3. Mrs. Weasley's letter. I hope we've put enough stamps on. Amazing. Um, and she did. All credit to her. She, she successfully got it sent. You know, maybe a little bit draconian with the stamps, but um, Ron's owl, the the feathery tennis ball pig, amazing as well. Nick, thank you so much for your comments. I like I like your like it's all like a, a highlight of these comment uh, of these chapters, but greatly appreciate it, Nick. Helen, hi, Betty. One thing that stuck with me as interesting is that Voldemort refers to Pettigrew as Wormtail. I'm so glad other people are bringing this up. I'm going to really hurt my fingers doing all this. Um, this was Pettigrew's nickname with the Marauders, and it seems strange that Voldemort would use it. Did he find out about it and is mocking him? I can't think of anyone else that he addresses this way. I'm curious what your thoughts are. Helen, I'm so I, When I thought of it, I thought, oh, I bet I'm, I'm a genius. 
genius veggie over here. I'm the only one who would have thought of it. But I'm so glad that we're having this discussion. Why is Voldemort calling him Wormtail? It doesn't make sense, guys, when you think about it, you know? Because, you know, probably when I was watching the movie, I was thinking, I, I probably subconsciously thought, well, it's an evil sounding name. He's one of the bad guys, that's why they're doing it. But no, the fact that we had this long drawn out conversation between uh, Voldemort and, and Pettigrew, you really start to think, why is he using a nickname? I do feel like it is a subtle form of, not gaslighting, that's not the right term, but um, a subtle form of abuse. I really do. It's. I would love to hear other people's thoughts on this, guys. And so if you have any thoughts on it, please do let me know in the comments. Also, sorry about how, um, you know, you know, I like to do the whole thing where, you know, say this at the start of your comment thing in the videos. Sorry how limited this this, this times one is, because if you're not into Street Fighter or into video games, it's not really anything you can really say. Uh, e boy. It's a dance thing. Oh, so much I to, to say about these chapters that almost weren't in the movies. First of all. That mostly wasn't in the movies. I I love all the extra backstory in chapter one about Frank and the Riddle House. Yeah, I didn't I didn't see that coming at all. That kind of stuff is always so glossed over. I like all the des descriptive stuff, except the part about milking the kid. He crows. Yeah, that was an image I didn't think I'd have to go through in my brain. Uh, how do you even milk a snake? Do snakes... Oh, it's the venom. They're milking the venom, aren't they? Because you can milk venom for... When, when you extract venom from a snake, I'm pretty sure it's called milking. So maybe it's literally Venom that's keeping Voldemort alive. Wow, that's a, that's a trick, isn't it? Other than that, I've literally no idea. Because I can't imagine they have nipples. Oh, God! I don't want to discuss this anymore. Sorry, it's a nasty thing. Um, <laughs> oh, God. Uh, and why... Then again, he's a, she's a magical snake, so... Uh, and why would it's <laughs> a magical snake with nipples? Couldn't believe that scene in um, The Last Jedi. I didn't mind that scene, but everyone brings it up as being one of the worst parts of the movie. I, I did I did rate that movie very highly, but um, the scene with the milk didn't bother me as much as it did. The vast majority of people that review the movie, I find. <laughs> Uh, I also didn't mind the casino stuff. A lot of people hated that stuff. You know, like the, the riding the horse things and everything. Anyway. Um, but there are definitely parts of the movie which I did not like. Anyway. Um, and why would you you drink drink it? Well, I guess it's because it's the only thing that can keep to keep him sustained. Also, what are your thoughts about Bartha, Bertha Jorkins and what Voldy and Worm, Wormy <laughs> were alluding to? I don't know, and that's the best situation for me to be in. It really is. As much as I would love chap loved Chapter 2 to be in the movie, I understand why it wasn't. It was all intention, inter internal dialogue, absolutely, which w would not have translated as well to the big screen. Although the visual of Dumbledore at the beach would have been pretty awesome. I'm wondering if this HBO series is going to have inter internal dialogue from Harry. I doubt it will. But if it does, we could have these scenes. We could have Hermione, like, panicking over Harry and everything, and, uh, and Ron, like, say, he's going to try and do you in again. That'd be amazing. I don't think we'll have that, though. Because that would make it way too much like a comedy. But it, th that visual is amazing. The Dursleys are back! That's what they should have called this book. As... As awful as they are, the chapters we with them are pretty great. Dudley's nicknames always pro provide me with a giggle. D did he? Dudley's nicknames always provide me with a giggle. Is that something that's happened yet? Or is that in a future chapter? 
Did Petrina refer to him as Diddy? Maybe she did. I, I, I'm, I think I must have just missed that. Again, the visuals in this chapter would have been awesome. Mrs. Weasley's highly stamped letter, absolutely. Harry's ac Harry actually wearing Dudley's hand-me-downs instead of normal clothes. I feel like in Philosopher's Stone he's wearing baggy clothes, isn't he? I'm sure he is. I can't remember. He, he certainly isn't in... He certainly isn't in Prince of Azkaban, right? It's getting really bright in here again. I'm sorry, guys. There's nothing I can do. Um... I need to go back and watch Prince of Azkaban. I swear he's not wearing baggy clothes in that. So I thought we were past that. But no, it says that he's still wearing baggy clothes now. Um, Harry actually wearing Dudley's hand-me-downs instead of normal clothes. Dudley on, on a diet. I can see all of this stuff when I, I, I read re read the book. Sign of a good storyteller. Oh, absolutely. Can you see it when you listen to the audiobooks? Yeah, I, I find it pretty damn easy to visualize all this wonderful stuff, and that is a testament to the writing style. Finally, pig. I want a pig. Uh, and and Ron say, saying, we're coming to you whether the muggles like it or not. It's just perfect. It's such a Ron thing to... It, it, in, in in my opinion, absolutely. I just realised, guys, that I must have seen owls in like Harry Potter shops and everything like that, which are pig rather than Hedwig, and I just didn't. It just didn't dawn on me. I swear there was one time where I saw a, a, an owl somewhere that wasn't completely white, and I just assumed it was Hedwig. I'm almost tempted to say it was in one of the unboxing videos, in fact. Which we do have another one to record soon, actually. If you do want to send me stuff, guys, the PO box is still open. I don't know if it'll be open for... We, we shall see, because we, we shall see. My birthday's in October, so if you want to send anything for that, that's coming up as well. There should be a link in the description uh, taking you to uh, explaining how, how, how to go about it. So excited for this, this book, uh, Veggie. There's so much new stuff for you to discover be good to yourself my my friend it's a dancing thank you very much that's very very kind of you yeah it's it's i, I already get the sense that it's going to be an absolute amazing experience <laughs> covering this book thank you so much it's a dance thing john uh an interesting thing in the beginning of this book is that harry mentions to sirius in his letter that dudley got a playstation the beginning of the book takes place in 1994, but the PlayStation didn't come out until 1995. Yeah, even when I was hearing that part of the audiobook, I was thinking, this doesn't add up. This, 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 there's something not right here. Another interesting thing is that the first chapter of the this book is not from Harry's point of view, but from Frank Br uh, Brace's, uh, Frank's point of view. Sure, Harry saw what was happening in his dream, but he saw it from Voldemort's perspective. Yeah, there seems to be a little bit of dialogue about exactly what perspective this is coming from. It is getting so bright, isn't it? We readers, however, see it from Frank's perspective. That's probably where I'm getting confused. That is probably where I'm getting confused. But I swear that Harry is trying to remember what was in the chair that, that Pettigrew turned around. I think that he does. He's trying to remember Bertha Jorkin's name and so on. Great comment. Thank you so much, John. Connor. Ha, Veggie. Been watching you on YouTube and thought I should make a jump over to the Patreon, but but wanted to wait until we started th this book to make my first comment. Connor, thank you so much. I'm reading the the physical copy of the book whilst following along with the stream of Stephen Fry audiobooks. That's a very interesting way of doing it. I thought that Harry's excitement about being allowed to go to the Quitch World Cup felt re so real for a teenage boy absolutely the fact that he, again where he's being sassy about it and everything i thought i would keep my comments short as it doesn't have much to say right now connor greatly appreciate it. thank you so much for joining and yeah i'm looking forward to your comments in the future stephanie hi veggie so excited for you to start goblet of fire whenever i think about the scenes i wish uh, were in the movies across the whole series three and four in goblet of fire oh Chapters 3 and 4 in Goblet of Fire come to mind. 
very interesting. I'll save chapter four, but I think the idea of seeing Harry truly stand up for himself, absolutely, e even in a little blackmail -y way, um, is so great. He's finally coming into the tree, Sassy Potter. That's a better way of putting it. Sassy Potter is much better. With the Dursleys that we start to see as he gets older. Also, Vernon having to sort through his priorities of getting rid of Harry quick and keeping him miserable. I always thought would be a funny scene with the actor that played him. Which we've gone before, guys. That act We've gone on about before. That actor is fantastic. God knows who they're going to get to play Vernon next time, guys. Because he, he the, the guy they chose before was such a good actor. Who would they choose for Vernon? Man, I'm not sure. I guess we'll find out eventually, guys. Um, I also love the idea that tr tropical birds can be used for um, ma for ma mail deliveries. There's always been this unspoken idea that only owls can be used for 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 it. I uh, we're in the universe. I totally request like a t a toucan or a parrot. Oh, a toucan. I'd go for a toucan. I think I would. I didn't even think about it until you mentioned it then, but I think I would actually go for a toucan. Okay. So. Going back to what we're saying about your favourite Street Fighter character, guys. Had put that sort of comment. You also put, or if you don't have a, a favourite video game character, put what type of bird you would have as your delivery, uh, 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 delivery bird. Yeah, that's a much better one. That's a much better one. And I wish I'd said that instead now. I think I would go for a toucan. That is a great call. A dodo can't fly. I presume dodos are still uh, alive in, in the Wizarding World. A toucan is a great call. A flamingo would be pretty cool, but maybe some people might get the wrong impression. <laughs> you know the whole uh, cliche of the toucan, uh, of the uh, flamingo bringing the... Um, it is a flamingo that brings babies and everything, isn't it? I'm thinking of the start of um, Yoshi's Island. Ignore me. Um, also, shout out to Pig. <laughs> shout out to Pig. <laughs> Such a, a little crazy little puffball of an owl. Can't wait for you to read more about him. Oh, I, I'm so ready for more Pig. That's a sentence I didn't think I'd say today. Um, especially as a vegan. Uh, so excited to see your thoughts. Yeah, Stephanie, brilliant comment. Uh, yeah. What bird would you choose, guys? That is a great call. I think Parrot would probably be quite popular. It's got to be a bird as well. You can't say a, a, a pterodactyl or something like that. Well, it's, that is no, all, all dinosaurs are technically birds, aren't they? Oh, let's not go into that. Stephanie, great comment. Greatly appreciated. Thank you so much. Jacqueline. This is actually my least favourite book. I've never known fully why. Maybe because it was when the book really started to get more teenagery and I was only seven when I read it for the first time. Jacqueline, that completely makes sense. The whimsicalness of the first three books is infectious and I'm guessing that is going to start to get taken away. So that completely makes sense. As an adult, I love the opening of this book. It's the first time we see anything from a perspective that isn't Harry. Uh, I also feel such a tremendous amount of sympathy for him to have to deal with everything he does as a child is heart heartbreaking i could not have handled the weight of it all when i was 14 oh my goodness jacqueline i i didn't cope when i was 14 going through my own stuff let alone attempted to go through what harry does on a lighter moment uh on the lighter moment harry knows his friends really well he's he, his imagi imaginations of what Hermione and Ron would say if they told him about the scar hurting are absolutely spot on. Absolutely. Also, the letter from Mrs. Weasley's to the Dursleys. It would be so difficult for me to keep a straight face upon seeing the envelope covered in snaps like that. Absolutely. Harry did a good job of play of uh, you know keeping keeping his poker face though. Finally, I love that he got his friends and family because. That's what Weasleys are to him. Oh, so true. To send him food. And they they had risen to the occasion magnificently. 
Exactly. Yeah, it's like a call to arms. I think I said it uh, earlier on. That's so true. Real ones. They are real ones. That's a good term. Jacqueline, great comment. Greatly appreciate. And I, I hope that you. I'm sure you will still enjoy these book clubs, even if it is what your least favorite book. But um, yeah, I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts on it, I, I, particularly from the perspective of when you first read it. Seriously, thank you so much, Jacqueline, and obviously your thoughts now as well. Lily, hi. First time commenting, so. For, Forgive the typos. Lily, thank you so much. Um, I really love... Don't worry about the typos. My dyslexia fixes typos. And so don't worry about it. <laughs> so Lily, Lily says, I really love that we get the whole chapter of Harry process proce processing his vision here. It's something that goes by so quickly in the movie. And honestly, it doesn't feel like it had much of an effect on Harry. Very true. So in the book, it is really nice to go through his thought process. Yeah, no, he's literally, he's like, he's like eyes shut trying to remember what it is that he's just seen. It's, it's fascinating. And I love him thinking about what Ron and Hermione would say. I find it very funny. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. I really hope you have a good time with this book. I'm so looking forward to it. I didn't like it. I, I didn't like it when I, I first read it. I was rather sensitive child, child, a kid, and the book can go dark in places. But it comes to one of my favorite. It's be but but it's become one of my favorites. That's amazing, Lenny. As I as it's actually going on Jacqueline's comment as well. I, I'm going to be fascinated to hear your thoughts on it. And yeah, I can imagine that the books are going to be less accessible two kids but i guess that the ideal age were the people that were literally growing up with them i guess you know so yeah great comment lenny thank you so much for making it and your, your comment was very well written don't worry about that kevin hi veggie so i know you heard a bit of this with the previous books but this really is the book where the movies really start to leave out entire characters plots and story arcs for instance i understand it's not being vitally important to the story but it was jarring the first time i saw the movie and the whole harry's time at the dursley's chapters two and two to four being just absent from the film yeah i can see it I can, I can see it. I mean, even as a movie watcher, I was like, oh, we're not, we're not stopping him with the Dursleys. Okay. But yeah, the fact that it was in the book, very interesting. Again, I get why it, it, it was cut, but I would have liked it, the character development of Harry now having a godfather who he can confide in about his concerns with Voldemort and, and his scar. I'll be honest, Kevin, when they do the thing, the thing of the fire in my head canon, that's the first time he's spoken to him since, um, since leaving him in, in, a, in a prison of Azkaban. There might be dialogue in that scene, like saying, no, no, I speak to him all the time. But, you know, as I remember it, I, I didn't expect him to be having his correspondence at all. Um, not to mention the continuity continuing the joke from the end of the last book where he threatens to write to Sirius in order to scare Vernon. Ha <laughs> ha It's amazing. Again, black man. Um, lastly, I always loved the opening chapter of this book for the subtle backstory that we start to get for, for Voldemort. And how it's one of the few chapters across the series that not directly from Harry's point of view. Yeah, it's it's so true. And it's very interesting you say across the series, because I honestly am expecting more in the future. I actually am. I feel like we're going to have Ron and Hermione scenes. I honestly feel like we are. As in, it's just them without Harry. We shall see. Hey, boy. Uh, anyway, can't wait for the next chapters and for you to read about the insane amount of time Harry spends with the Weasleys this summer. I can't wait for it. I really can't wait for it. That's It's always such a joy. It's always such a joy. Kevin, thank you so much for your wonderful comments. Tammy. Hi, Virgie. I hope you enjoyed the start of uh, Goblet of Fire. Just three chapters in and I'm and already so, so, so many differences. This will probably be another five hour video easily. I, I think we're pushing four and a half already, quite frankly. 
since it, all the main things are already mentioned in Bullet Club multiple times, I just wanted to add that I love the feeling of mystery the book gives. We already get so many little glimpses of what is going going to happen in the conversation between Voldemort and Wormtail. I remember when I first read the book, I was constantly trying to put the puzzle together and guessing the, the uh, guessing until the end. I loved it. That's awesome. That, that that's that's that, that's what you meant to be able to. That that's another sign of great writing. Again, I gotta say, guys, this whole mystery that he was talking about. To me, Goblet of Fire, the movie, is not the mystery movie. If any of them are a mystery movie, it's definitely Chamber of Secrets. That feels like a murder mystery, you know? Whereas, Goblet of Fire, it's going to be interesting to get into this into this conspiracy and so on. On that account, what do you think is up with Bertha Jorkins? I know it's a very early in, in, in early on, but I'm interested to hear your thoughts. Tammy, I just don't know. And at this point, I'm going to hold off from speculating. Because right now, my mind is, I, I don't have a, any information to really go on. Which is a really lovely way of being left there. And Harry knows less about it than I do now, now that he's forgotten the name. Tammy, thank you for your wonderful comments. I only just realised that normally during these book clubs, I like to get um, a wand out. And I haven't done it this time. So let's go with, um, with the lovely uh, um, Scamanders. Or Newts. There we go. I do love this one, quite frankly, guys. And then we will continue with Gaff Gaffnob's uh, comment. There we go. Okay, uh, Gaffnob says, Greetings! Uh, good luck watching the movie scenes that go with the chapters for this point. That's it. Yeah, that's such a good point. But basically... I, I watched the, the the first scene and that's basically it. So I didn't. I I, I actually haven't rewatched um, Hermione waking Harry up yet, with the with the uh, kind of right in his face. Um, it's like that scene in Gas Gas House Paradiso. Have you seen that? <laughs> Candle in the eye. Candle in the eye. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> uh, peeps. All right. Come on. Um. Sorry, guys. There's a movie called Guesthouse Paradiso, which is based on the sit my favourite sitcom of all time, which is called Bottom, which stars Rick Mail, who was filmed to play Peeps. And there's one part on Guesthouse Paradiso where someone shoves a candle in his eye socket. <laughs> it's the sort of humour that I like. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? I've been saying that a lot recently. Anyway. Um, there are many missing scenes, scenes out of order, lines in the wrong, lines in the wrong scene, and so on. We'll be keeping an eye out for that. Chapter one. Half the chapter is about a character and their backstory that in the movie only got two minutes and has one line. Does he actually say something, does he? Uh, and the other half is missing altogether. I know, I know, need... To, to save time, should have left Voldemort's conversation in the movie and cut the care caretaker part. I guess you could have done, but, I, but that would break my heart to not have Sykes in it. <laughs> I loved about the Sykes in it. Uh, so yeah, 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 you're right, you're right. It could have just had, or maybe it could have, actually, you know what? It could have started with Wormtail and then you know, and hearing Voldemort's voice, and then Nagini coming in, saying, well, there's a muggle outside, and, you know, have Caretaker just a lucky time a little bit. That being said, I love Sykes' performance in it, so. Uh, chapter 2. Why is Harry still using a, a Quirrell, not Quirrell, in the, in the muggle world? For that, for that matter, why do wizards not use ballpoint pens at, and the like? Much less potential for mess is there a magical element to it in the same way that potions masters still had to use magic to put the things together is there a, a magical element to the ink that makes it i don't know you could explain it away by saying magical ink is easier to read or something i th th there are magical excuses for it but that's a very good point though why is he still doing it we were just used to it now. It is more inconvenient though, isn't it? Or oh, the dipping. Chapter 3. 
And also, Harry kind of would... Harry's opinion on muggles at this point, guys, is not very healthy. It actually isn't. And so he probably wants to distance himself as much as possible from muggles. So quite frankly, Hermione, who probably has childhood friends. That's a good point. Why we never discussed that? Hermione's childhood friends before she went to Hogwarts. We've never discussed that before. But but Hermione probably does steal normal pens, use normal pens and everything. But Harry has a resentment of muggles. Um, uh, that Hermione doesn't. That he probably just wants to be as unlike them as possible, maybe. Great, great, great point. Uh, chapter 3. Given author's job, uh, you would think he... Oh, Arthur's job! <laughs> You'd think he would know more about muggles. That's true, it's true. But then again, I, I get the impression that normally wizards don't know nothing. I nearly swore there, but nothing about them. I nearly said Jack S, then, which would have been bad for, for YouTube. Uh, I just don't like swearing on my YouTube videos, guys. Uh, you know, I, I know you can and get monetized and everything, but I just find it funny uh, when I don't. You know, where I say balls instead of other things. Um, okay, not how things work but how to get along with with the muggle world i mean even the owls know where to put the letters when they deliver when they're delivered to muggles very true weasleys could have sent the letter to vernon by owl and it would have come through the slot like the hogwarts letter did in book one I question how wizards get by in the wizarding world. Most live in mixed communities. Hogsmeade is only all wizards community, only all wizard community in Britain. Is it? Because I feel like in the previous book it said it's it's probably one of the only, or maybe it's the biggest. I feel like that's been said. I can't, I feel like Hermione said something about it in the last book. I, I can't remember, but oh, she may have said this, in fact. One, Molly might be trying to appease Vernon. That's still not the right word that I'm thinking of, is it? But to sugar him up, you know, by using, like, the proper methods. Also, it's probably Arthur, like, saying, oh, no, I, I know how to do this. You get these stamps, right, you put it on. Uh, how many? I, I, I don't know. You just put you put the stamps on it. Just put loads of stamps on it. And so I guess that it's maybe Arthur just getting overexcited about trying it as well. But, yeah, he's not very good at it. But then again, he's probably much better than anyone else, though. He has had a successful phone call, after all. Um, great questions, though. And, yeah. The, the, the how separate wizards and muggles are. I mean, the thing is, guys, there's going to be countless half. Um, what do we call them? Half wizards? I can't remember what we call them, but but people with with, with um, different parents. Yeah. Um, so the, the extent of how segregated those areas are away from each other is actually something which I'm still confused about now. Ewe Gaffnob, great comment. Lots of food for thought there. Rebecca! Hi, Veggie. Sorry I missed the last couple of books. I'm just alright, Rebecca. I hope things are alright. Things have been a bit hectic. I well, hope they're calming down now a bit. As sad as Frank's story is, I think it's fascinating and incredibly chilling looking at the, the way evil can casually destroy someone's life. Uh, someone who was, wasn't was even in the crosshairs to begin with. The butterfly effect of Riddle's murders uh, ruined Frank's whole life. Just because the people of the village lacked empathy and needed someone to blame. Yeah, it's. It, I hate the people in Little Hangington. I really do, guys. Very sad. But one of m many great examples of the story of how far the misery caused by someone like Voldemort can reach. Great, great point. And it is a real blooming tragedy, guys. And the, the movie does not give us any reason to really mourn for Frank. The book absolutely hits home. This person did not deserve this. Oh, it's sad, guys. It's sad. Beautifully done. I, 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 I really appreciate the first chapter of this book. Rebecca, thank you so much. And I hope, hope everything starts to uh, mellow down a little bit. Logan. I remember this being the first Harry Potter book that I read. You're not alone, Logan. I think that's the first, third time that someone said that. The humour in the Dursley chapters really stood out and... 
is what drew me into reading uh, on more. Very interesting. All the stamps on the letters, amazing. How are you using serious, uh, serious as a threat? Blackmail, amazing. All the food uh, Harry has hidden on the floorboards, floor cake. Harry is saying the d d to Dudley what great breakfast it was, etc. I know, it's so sassy. I think the humour in the Harry Potter books is really underrated. I agree, Logan, and and I feel like the, you know, the movies definitely have some amazingly funny scenes. I mean, they really do. Um, but the books definitely do it very well as well. They do, guys. They really do. Thank you, Logan. Great comment. Anna Marie? I think these first three chapters are underrated. They really show what life is at, at the Dursleys is like and how that Harry isn't that scared uh, that scared little boy. Absolutely. My question is, do you think Petuna handled Dudley's diet in the right way? It's difficult. I'm glad that she is doing the right thing. She's doing the, the right thing very, very late. And I can understand her rationale about getting everyone else to suffer along with Dudley. I don't think it's good, but I do I do understand it. Second, I wanted to address something you said in the last video. Uh-oh. You kept being confused by the fact that the bank didn't inform the Ministry Black's money, ha money being accessed. That is because the bank is not technically under the ministry's government control. Yeah, that's that. Yeah, you know what? That is actually true. The fact that it is actually the um, the the, the um, the goblins. That is something which I didn't take into considera consideration. It has uh, it had been mentioned several times through briefly though briefly that goblins and wizards have fought fought before. Yeah, Hogwarts Legacy. The goblins are like a, a tribal group. They also have little respect for wizards. Black having a vault means to the goblins he has the right to use his money as long as he has his keyed his key present. At least that's how I understood it. Yeah, Amory, that's true. I didn't, I really didn't, I, I didn't consider how separate Gringotts is. The fact is, guys, it's right in the middle of Diagon Alley. So it, I think it's because of that I assumed, well, there must be quite a lot of connections between the ministry and them, but not necessarily, though. Amory, great comment. Benjamin. This is the first chapter of this book. It is one of my favourites in terms of the whole build building. We learn where Voldemort's dad and grandparents lived, and all the mystery about how the Muggles think they're dead. So sad they cut this from the movie. I know, Benjamin. It is sad, but from what I gather, this is such a, f a fat book. If they included everything, it would probably be like 15 hours long, which is only free of my book reviews. <laughs> Oh my goody, goody aunt. I think we are basically hitting um, five hours now, guys. So, five hour celebration. Right, that's the end of the celebration. Let's move on. Benjamin, thank you so much for your comment. Zion? Is it Zion? I, I, I think. I, I, I'm going to go with Zion. Considering this is my least favourite of the movies, I absolutely adore the book. You're not alone there, Zion. Um... It's been my favourite of the whole of of the it's it's probably my favourite of the series. I cannot wait to hear your thoughts on certain parts on this one. I, I can't wait to experience it myself. I finally caught I finally caught up with the book club so I can read along with everyone and I could not be happier about it. Haha. <laughs> so thank you so much. Good job catching up as well. Uh, where did you start? That's that, where did you start listening to that? That'd be an interesting uh, question. But Zol, thank you so much for for for, um, for your comment. And yeah, I'm looking forward to to more in the future. Maggie, first time commenting, first time commenting, all caught up. Yay, Maggie and Zol here, both, both 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 back to back. This is my first time. This is the first time we have a chapter with no Harry at at all, isn't it? Apart from that last line, as one line with Harry. <laughs> Even philosophers, uh, philosophers first chapter with Vernon had Harry at the end as a baby. That's true. On oh, no, the first chapter, 
That's true, the first chapter is Vernon going to work, isn't it? I'd completely forgotten about that. Maggie, great point. I was thinking how the movie started, but of course it's Vernon going to work and seeing all the crazy stuff. Uh, the major difference between the book and the movie um, is that the book was a huge mystery novel, really, while the movie blatantly showed who's guilty in the first two minutes. Now I understand the comment about spoilers earlier on. I'm sorry who made that comment. It didn't, the penny didn't drop. It really didn't drop until that. Wow. I see Goblet as an action movie, guys. I really do, with all the trials and everything, but everyone's saying how it's a mystery and everything. I can understand how that scene would really rile some people now. As brief as it is. And I think this is out of left field open opening chapter really sets the atmosphere. You've no idea what's going on when you first read, absolutely, especially for people who are jumping into the um, into the book for the first time. You know, having not seen the movie. I never realised as a kid how brave Frank is. Oh, he's a baller. I thought so so several times reading this chapter, again, he's a great side character. I wonder what the village thought of him when his body was found like the riddles. I, yeah, I gave that some thought earlier on, Maggie, and I think that they had a convenient way of getting rid of the evidence, unfortunately. Uh, I'm pretty sure it happens in um, Deathly Hollows Part 1 at the start in the movie. I don't, I don't think Frank's body was ever found, is what I'm saying. Um, which is a horrible thought. Um, I wonder, and, and then, what the speculation of what happened to Frank, if he, like, ran away or something, or maybe he didn't, maybe they thought, oh, he's, do, he's, he's done another crime, so he's finally run away or something like that. That's probably what they thought. That's probably what they wanted to think. Oh, I hate the people in Little Hangerton guys. I really do. They're the main villains to me. Um... I never realised as a kid. Oh, who would they bl have blamed then? Unless Wormtail hid the body. Now I, f I think Nagini hid the body. If you know what I mean, Maggie. I, I, I would imagine so. Oh, I don't want to think about it. Either way, great comment, Maggie. Thank you so much for your first comment, and I look forward to to do one in the future as well. Maria. Uh, Goblet of Fire was always one of my least favourite books in the Harry Potter series when I was younger. I didn't reread it very often because it scared me so much. When it first came out, I was five or six at the time. My goodness, yeah. I'm not... I, I'm, not, I'm looking forward to <laughs> revisiting it as an adult and forming a new opinion about the story. Fantastic, Maria. No, it's... I, I'm so interested in hearing people's opinions over time and I can completely get how kids would find you know, some things that are probably going to be happening in Goblet of Fire absolutely distressing and so I'm, look, I'm looking forward to your, your, your comments going on. I always found the first chapter to be particularly frightening because of the death of Frank and because of Nagini. As I recall I wasn't even sure if I wanted to continue reading our de Voldemort killed Frank looking at the, this chapter now, I think it really interesting way to start the book. I'm intrigued by Frank's story and would gladly read uh, a prequel of of his time working for the Riddle family. That would be fascinating, would it, Maria? That would be that would be awesome. And I can completely understand how the first chapter is such a tone change that a lot of people. Young and old, you know, of any age, I should say, would think, okay, is this is this book for me? Because it, it, it is a dark start, guys. It is a dark old start. Uh, reading as an adult, it also strikes me that Harry seems more confident in himself than in previous books. He isn't as afraid as Dursley's anymore and has less regard for their rules, etc. We're starting to see a glimpse of teenage Harry, absolutely. And the thing is, it's not like it's not like he wasn't more he was being a bit cheeky and everything in uh, Azkaban, wasn't he? Especially with uh, with Marge saying, Oh yeah, I get beaten all the time, all this stuff. But now he he, he it seems like he is 
in charge in the house, you know? Um, it really does. Also, I also have to add that I feel sorry for Dudley in these chapters. I'm so glad other people are saying this. Well, I was happy to see him getting his comeuppance when he was a, a kid. It strikes me now that he his behaviour, he beats the way he does because he's going through a lot of his own struggles and probably is deeply unhappy. Yeah, you know what it was, Maria? It, the first thing that really me... Because I, I felt sorry for, for Dudley for a while. Hearing about how he's not doing very good at school really did make me think, okay, actually, this is a actually a very sad situation for, for him. Um, oh, man. I, I appreciate people being able to uh, show compassion for Dudley. I really do, guys, because you know, he's not a nice guy. But you know, even that isn't his fault in, in a sense, you know? Oh, I, lo I love to say it. I love to say it. Um, it doesn't excuse his behaviour, but he is a product of his environment. Put better than I could. The letter covered, uh, covered his stamps. It also put a big smile on her face. I had forgotten that detail. Awesome, Maria. Well, I'm looking forward to your comments going on, seriously, because uh, it sounds like it's going to be uh, an interesting perspective to, to hear from, but thank you so much for your wonderful comments. Hillary, this one opened so dark, and I, re I remember reading it when it was it first came out when I was a kid. We were at the beach, and I went to, to the midnight release of uh, we w were at the beach and went to the midnight release of the book and I was th there under the covers or covers in midnight mi in the middle of the light like like that <laughs> and and realized things were getting much much si more serious the movie couldn't quite capture the first chapter but I don't bl really blame it it was a hard chapter to adapt well you know what? I think they did a g going. What? It could have been worse. I feel like it could have been much worse. I really do. And we spend time with Frank. We spend time with Frank. Just Frank. So I feel like it's quite a. We 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 care about him even before he sees and hears what he hears and sees. And that's down to good directing and good acting, quite frankly. Just the way he's... He, the face that he pulls when he sees that there's a light on in the house, is, it just tells a story, guys. It's so good. Hillary, great comment. Uh, uh, and thank you so much for making it. Catty. Poor Dill... <laughs> Poor Diddlekins. Is that a job... I, I must have missed this, guys. So I'm guessing that's what, uh, what Petrina referred to him as. Dear kids, I've always disliked liked extreme di dieting. I might eat less than a child, but that's my 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 natural natural hunger. With the with this book showing different birds of a uh, of different birds than ours delivering mail, I always thought a raven would be a be the best pet. Um, what birds would you choose? Catty, you predicted my blooming question. Well done, well done. A uh, raven would be good. Although every single letter would have to end with, quote, the raven nevermore. And also, one other problem with a raven. Hang on, I just want to make sure I'm going to say that, that is, this is correct before I say it, because I don't want to sound like an idiot. Oh, you... Oh, balls! No, I'm wrong. Uh, okay, I'll say what I was going to say. I was going to say that, like, at Hogwarts, if, if Ravens were, like, a very particular popular choice, someone might run in and say, Murder! Murder! Just because there's a bunch of Ravens coming. But they're not Ravens, Veggie! A murder of crows! A group of crows is a murder! Uh, he'd have to run in saying, unkindness, unkindness, because there's a bunch of ravens coming in. A group of ravens is an unkindness, which is metal, guys. Raven claws would all go for ravens, or eagles, probably, or probably eagles, in fact. What would Hufflepuff go for? 
puffer fish? That wouldn't be very good, would it? Wouldn't be able to get that down the chimney. I'm an idiot. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. We get. Is that? Is this point in the video where I just have to think, Wow, Veggie, you're an idiot. How can you have a puffer fish delivering mail? Right. I, 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 sorry, I, I need to go and tweet that. Okay, so if you want to read um, Words of Wisdom, much like what I just tweeted, guys, you can follow me at Veggie underscore Gamer. Uh, so, yes. I'm also on Instagram, same address. Um, I have a thread, but I haven't jumped, I haven't, like, moved over to it yet. I've posted a couple of things. Also, my Instagram is largely pictures of Boozel as well, but... Um, but yeah, you can follow me on there. That's really only the social media that, that I use. Um, yeah. Yeah. Th those are your best bets. I used to have a Facebook page, but I didn't really use it. But um, then I feel like... So I think someone... Someone must have... To help me out... Bought me a bunch of followers. Because I had like around like a thousand followers after like years of having it. And all of a sudden I was getting... Like, hundreds of followers every single day. All, you know, like, Middle Eastern names and everything. And all people that weren't, like, liking or commenting or anything like that. And so I just stopped using it. It, it, it was not rep representative of me anymore. And so, and also, I only ever posted whenever I posted a video on there. Anyway. And so, Twitter is the place to follow me. No, guys, seriously, that's where I spend... That, that's where I post things like, how can you... Uh, how, how can a puffer fish deliver the mail? And, re and answer Katie's question there, guys. What bird would you choose? It's got to be like a smart answer. Bubbeek. <laughs> Hippogriff! Oh my goodness! Imagine that knocking at your door. Yeah, Hippogriff. Is it technically a bird? I should say it is. Yeah, Hippogriff is going to deliver my mail. It's not. Toucan mentioned earlier on that would be my option. That'd be awesome. Thank you so much, Catty. Georgia! The real house and surrounding towns reminds me of the village in Hot Fuzz for some reason. I I disagree, but we'll discuss that in a moment. Or maybe Wallace and Gromit. All those gossiping locals, lol. I feel like those two... Examples apart from okay, let's not go into spoiler territory, but what we believe the town of Hot Fuzz to be and where Hot Wilson and Gromit to be are much nicer places than Little Angleton guys. I get the impression that um, if you if you walked into the Hanged Man or any other pub in Little Angleton, all the locals would be like, "What are you doing it?" You know what I mean? I don't think you'd get that in Hot Fuzz. You'd you, it, I can't remember what it's called in Hot Fuzz, the town of Hot Fuzz. And in Walter Grumman, they'd be, oh, you're not met from around these parts. And then, you know, like, uh, yep. <laughs> Hot Fuzz for reference. Yeah, I see it quite differently. But, but then again, I mean, I, I, I you know, I, I do see it quite differently. But maybe it's because, yeah. Maybe, yeah. Maybe my experiences of villages are different, guys. But... I think that the place in Hot Fuzz and Walls of Gromit would be lovely places to go, you know, filled with lovely people. I hate everyone in this whole angle to the apart from Frank. <laughs> I really do. Which is probably unfair, but I do. Um, great reference, though. Hot, Hot Fuzz and Walls of Gromit. Um, from my first watch as a child, I felt heartbroken for, for, for Frank, and his death scene scared me most out out of the scenes i'm not surprised i i still struggle to hear he was being tormented by young boys uh, uh, in his old age absolutely uh, i wonder which things but about myself faults and quirks that people would give a sense to undertow if i was accused of a crime oh my Goodness, Georgia. I hope you didn't think too much about that. That's sad. She's got she's got a screw loose, that one. She spent fifty pounds on buffing a vampire slayer Funko Bob. Oh my goodness. Was it actually Buffy? 
on a Buffy the Vampire Slayer Funko Pop. So it may not have actually been Buffy. I'd be very interested to know who it is. Obviously, no spoilers because we're 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 pushing the end of that season three now, guys. Oh my goodness, the latest episode that I watched was up there, guys. Top god tier episode. I'll tell you what it's called. It's called Doppelgangerang. I won't say anything more. But if you want to see a grown man scream with excitement at what's unfolding in front of him, I like Double Gang Land was my kind of episode. That's all I'm gonna say. So yeah, Georgia, I'd love to know what what Funko Pop it was. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna guess Spike. I presume you can get the whole cast. I know you can get a Willow one because you know you know that there's a reactor called uh, Art Art Work Reactions. Um, love his stuff, guys. Uh, he has like a very re like he, I, I really like it like his uh, his um his reaction videos, and in a lot of them he has like, loads of Funko Pops like next to him, and I think he has a Dobby one as well. But I've noticed that there is one called Willow, and I swear it's meant to be Willow from from Buffy the Vampire Slayer, like like to his side. I first discovered him through his um Father Ted reaction. To the scene, you know what? I'm, I'm gonna look. Uh, I'm gonna look up exactly what it's called because because his reaction to it is amazing. <laughs> yes, this is back when he was only doing scenes from uh, from uh, Father Ted rather than episodes. He has actually done full episodes on his Patreon now, um, and it's it's a video he posted three years ago, and it's just one scene from Father Ted, and it's the video is called "I Hear You're Racist Now, Father Father Ted." reacted by after, after reactions he is he he enjoys the clip <laughs> let's put it that way why am i talking about him oh yeah because the funko pops because he has loads of funko fun, 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 fun pops next to him so i'm pretty sure he has had a dobby one there but he i swear he's got a willow one there but i'm predicting georgia that you no oh am i taking it back no i'm, I'm gonna stick with with spike but i now wonder if it was angel i really like angel guys I, much more than i thought i would do Veggie, you're approaching the end of the book club. We're already over five hours. Let's get this finished. Go and check out my Buffy the Vampire Slayer reactions, guys. We, Like I say, on the Patreon, we're approaching season four now. Uh, and I'm thoroughly enjoying that show. Right. Get back to it. Lastly. <laughs> it's so nice that Harry has uh, someone to talk to uh, th th that he feels he can be completely honest with without fear of judgment. That's a very good way of putting it. He, he says that he's not going to feel silly for, for, for saying stuff. I wonder if that's because of who Sirius is, what he's done, what he seems or sees, sees what he's seen, or just because he's his dad's best friend. I think it's the latter. Georgia because you have to remember he is uh, pure blood so he probably has had very little conversations with with muggles especially with his family history and so I feel like there are going to be moments where Sirius is going to be like okay I, I don't know what you're talking about here or you don't know how, how this works much like the other way around much like as I was saying earlier on Sirius's reaction to uh, mega mutilation part three. I would love to see that. That'd be a great scene. Um, I want Ron to play a video game, guys. Anyway, come on. Um, yeah, a brilliant comment, Georgia. And yeah, I, 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 you, you, that's so true about you know little things about people that will that that people will use to confirm their bias. Um, art art of the fact. But yeah, I'm sure that the 50, 50 pound Buffy the Vampire Slayer Funko Slayer Funko Pop would uh, would rise raise eyebrows. No one. <laughs> awesome comment, Georgia. Always appreciate him. Simon, I ain't, I ain't you, Butler. <laughs> well, that was just for me and Simon, there, guys. <laughs> Sorry, moving on. I ain't you, Butler. <laughs> Everyone's going to think I'm having a breakdown, Simon, apart from you. <laughs> Sorry. It's not like Mark Hamill, then. For, as the Joker. Although, I don't remember him snorting. Anyway. 
great start to your comment, Simon. <laughs> right? So, so, so we're finally at the bottom. I must have confused so many people with what I just did. <laughs> so, so we finally had the book I've been waiting for, and it changes from the off. Would love to see the full opening flashback in the in the film, as it would have given view viewers a bit more varieties setting wise, and the whole scary thing isn't explained well in the film at all it yeah, i mean the thing is the scene is still very scary and also you wouldn't really be able to have the frank unless you had voldemort to basically explain what happened in the house you couldn't really have the you couldn't really have the history of the house you know yeah yeah it, it'd be it would be tough to do covering the stuff before that night at least is what i'm saying not sure why jk see, seems to make out all the dursley's household household is on on a diet there's no way vernon isn't in in first grease first greasy spoon ordering a full english as soon as he's out of the house simon i thought exactly the same thing i honestly did you know that he is he is going uh <laughs> He, he he will be taking a, a, the, the scenic route to work so he can get past the like a great greasy spoon calf. Uh, that is absolutely what I thought was going on as well because he is quite scared of Petunia, guys. We have had moments where where Petunia's put Vernon in a sort of like yes dear sort of way. Um, with the book to film. Film, film comparison: the addition of the character to the Voldemort scene looks look we've hired some guy we get more screen time we, we get him we, we get him more screen time rather than a necessary addition it does feel like that but this is the thing this is this is just before david tennant became a household name because he, he did he obviously did act before uh doctor who guys but um it does feel like it's a also starring david tennant little moment it does feel like that doesn't it very interesting. With a book uh, to... F oh, I already read that part. Uh, won't be long before now before we meet the character that Brian Blessed would ideally... Uh, would be ide ide ideal for. Speaking of whom, I've just been re-watching I, Claudius, and I'm not sure if... Sure, I can see Mr. Ollivander, John Hurt, in the same light once I've seen him gut... His sister and her baby. I mean, I, I, I watched I Claudius. John Hurt for me will always. You know what, Simon? I'm, I'm guessing you've seen Alien. If you want your palate refreshed, watch that. <laughs> Hello, my baby. Sorry. Um, John Hurt to me will always be. Uh, Hazel from Warship Down. Oh, his voice, guys. His, I love John Hurt's voice. Seriously, it's beautiful. Uh, and that's because of Warship Down. I grew up with it when, when I was a kid. That is a brutally violent cartoon for, for kids to watch now, guys. It, um, some of the scenes are oh, horrendous. But my favourite character in it is a rabbit called Hazel. And his voice is just so blooming and relaxing. And it's John Hurt. Um, yeah. So I won't be rushing out to see I Claudius because I had seen it. And uh, on your review, I'm not sure if I need to see it any time around lunchtime. Anyway, anyway, so a great comment. Thank you so much for making it, and I appreciate the start of your comments, even though it probably confused everyone. <laughs> All right, you uh, Grace. Hi, Veggie. That was probably the darkest first chapter we've had yet. Oh, I think, I think you're on the money there. That scene in, in the movie always seemed to scare me, lol. I, I, it's, it's scarily done. I feel terrible for Frank. The poor guy has been through so much in his lifetime. And he wanted... He wanted... All he wanted was... Oh, his hot water bottle and some rest. Oh, that's a sad way of putting it. How do you feel about hearing... Of our first new character, Bertha Jorkins. I, I'm intrigued to learn more. I think she really helps emphasize how truly evil Voldemort is. Also, how on earth do you milk a snake? I, 
I think, I think when you take venom for a snake, it's still called milking. Or it's a magic snake that has nipples. Oh god. Uh, <laughs> trying to picture a worm tail doing that is so funny to me. Funny is one word. I find it disturbing. I hope that in the Hope HBO series we get a cutscene to Dumbledore on the beach and somewhere and a typical beach music. music. Oh, what you mean like Hawaiian music? It's like, oh, oh, oh. That'd be amazing. <laughs> or maybe I'm surfing to Beach Boys or something. With, with his gear on, of course. Trying to picture... Oh, da, 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 I think Harry is getting sassier by the book. That is, a, that is a great way of putting it. I also love how Harry is getting more comfortable writing to Sirius. It feels like they're building an actual relationship. It's so true. This is a relationship which I never expected they even had in the movies. Even... Yeah, I, I really didn't, guys. Um... You know what? When Harry is, you know, his wonderful portrayal when, when, when losing Sirius, I thought it was more he, that Harry was so close to having a real family. But going on the book, he had that real family. He's not in the room with them, but he had that real connection that he's been desperate for. It's only going to make that moment even sadder, guys. Um, It feels... Like they're building natural relationship. I think this is the happiest Harry ha has ever been at the start of of a boom, which can only mean good things to cut to come, right? Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it's true though. He is in a happy place right now, even though he's at, at, at the Dursleys. When I read the description of Ron's owl pig, I can only um, think of those weird. Furball toys. Oh my goodness, that's a throwback. Yeah, those little talking things. Yeah, you'd like remember and react to things and everything. I remember those. Last little question. Are you excited to experience more of the Quidditch World Cup? You know what? I really am. That was a lot of info to pack into a short-ish comment. I hope you and Woozle have a bodaciously amazing day. Why well, your sounds you're starting to sound like Dumbledore. Uh, thank you so much, Grace. That is an excellent comment. And I am. I'm really looking forward to it. Because it's such... When I found out that we're going to the Quidditch World Cup in the movie reaction, guys, I was like, oh my god, I cannot believe what we're about to see. And it's so brief. It's so brief. What we do see is amazing, but I wanted to see so much more. I want the movie to take place, say, you know? And so I'm looking forward to the, to the book's description. Grace, thank you so much for your wonderful comment. Martin. Martin. Chapter 1. In a nice change of pace, which signals things getting darker, would police really arrest poor Frank in that circumstance before even knowing how riddle how the riddles died? Three of them at once, probably. If one of them had died in, in that circumstance, maybe not, but all three of them? I guess that some people may have thought that it may have been a gas leak, but then that would show up there, wouldn't it? And they're reports how many have been and also we have to remember this is the police in nine in the 1950s 40s 40s 50s 40s which are obviously very different um he may have been only one with with a key but that would hardly be relevant had they been poisoned. Well, the thing is, he was arrested and let go. So he wasn't just brought in for questioning. But yeah, it is. It, again, the police force was probably very different at the time. Also, um, how do you milk a snake? I, get, I feel like when, we, when you get venom for a snake, it's also called... Um, milking. Presumably, this means harvesting venom. There we go, Martin. You and me are on the same wavelength. Which may be, may, may be sustaining Voldekins like unicorn blood. I feel like that's it. Where do we think Sirius is? And how is how are wizards educated about geography? 
You know what? My theory is that he's not in a hot climate and that he's using these birds to throw potential people into intercepting it, maybe? Is there any reason why Black wouldn't already be back at his family home? <laughs> so maybe he's there. And he's using these birds to potentially throw off the scent. Or maybe just to give Harry like a thrill of seeing these wonderful birds. Maybe that's it. I'm sorry about all this sneezing, guys. I really am. And how are wizards educated about geography? I mean, about overseas wizards and things, not waterfalls. <laughs> Overseas wizards and things not waterfalls and oxbow lakes. In this, is this covered in a history of magic or is it assumed that they learn from family but a bit unfair on muggleborns if so? It's so true because the thing is, there's so many things that they're not learning like maths. English, English uh, literature. There's no literature um, lessons, are there? Like wizards or, or you know, non-wizards. And so there's going to be a whole bunch of stuff that is being missed out. And yeah, geography as well. Yeah. There's all sorts of things that uh, Hogwarts people aren't learning. <laughs> Anyway, or that we know of, anyway. Martin, thank you so much for your wonderful comment. Greatly appreciate it. And I'm glad we're on the same wavelength when it comes to milking the king. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Mel. Oh, actually, just before Mel, let's see how many comments we've got left. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Mel. Hi, Veggie. Like many people, it's my favourite book and my least favourite movie. This is this is a, a, a consensus which I'm saying. I, a lot of people. I understand why some chapters were cut. Uh, but I was so upset and disappointed when I left the theatre. I loved... I, even with that ending, because that ending is... Yeah. I loved, I loved the details in the book so much. That's what makes them so rich and why it's always such a pleasure to dive in again and again like Dudley's diet Mrs. Weasley's letter gosh I wish I'd seen that yeah it's true it's true uh, it, it would have been great to see that on scene Vernon's face when he discovered the grapefruit caught on his plate <laughs> even if Dursley's are horrible human beings for me it was like uh, a reassuring pattern to see each each film or book start with them. I completely concur with you, Mel. It's that is a beautiful way of putting it. A re re reassuring pattern. I love that. A feeling of ah, I'm back in Harry Potter, uh, and when I was younger, I described it described me that disturbed me that it started directly in the, in the Quidditch World Cup. As a child, I felt I felt Harry's excitement about spending a vacation with at Ron's waiting for the World Cup as it's as if I were the one who was who, who was going you know what that is such a good point Mel because <laughs> Harry is like oh this is interesting in the movie in the book he's like this is going to be the best thing ever it really is and so we miss out on that whole part Great, great point. As a kid, I, I, I really felt excited to spend... I think JKR's work in putting herself in the shoes of, teenage, uh, of a teenager very successful. I think it's very well done. I can't wait for you to read the rest. I hope you like... You like surprises because you're in for some. Love from France. Mel, thank you so much. That's a wonderful comment and I really appreciate it. And yeah, I I, I I don't know if I'm ready for the surprises, but I'm definitely ready for this book. I really am. Cheers, sir. Um, hi, Veggie. We've reached my second favourite book in the series. So excited. A bit uh, with Molly's letter really always make, m makes me laugh. I just love these details in the book. I... And I enjoy seeing Harry's development. He seems far less afraid of the Dursleys now and knows 
exactly how to play Vernon and get him to agree to the Quidditch match. Yeah, he, he played him. He played him like a fiddle. Not a riddle. Um, movie Harry would never. It's true. It's true. We never get that payoff, do we? We never get that payoff with him in the Dursleys, even in the deleted scenes. Also, I find it interesting that Ron's letter says that his parents are coming to get him regardless of if the Dursleys agree or not. It makes me wonder what would have happened if the Dursleys had said Harry couldn't go. It's true, Cheers, and I'll, that could be something that Ron's just adding in there, but it did sound like that, that they were going regardless, and it's not... It's not great, guys. I'm not saying that the Weasleys are as bad as the Dursleys, but it's not great that they would do that. But it's great for Harry, and that's all we care about. Jessa, thank you so much for your wonderful comment. Lizette! Uh, hi, Reggie! Two small points. Uh, who do you think is the wealthy man who keeps the house going for tax purposes. I've always le leaned towards Dumbledore just because he seems like the kind of man who uh, would want to help Frank after fall falling falling victim to, to Voldemort and so keep an eye on the place. I don't know if Dumbledore would do that for muggles though. Not that he would think, no, I'm not helping muggles, but See, I'm not sure, Lizette. That's a fascinating... I, I'm going to have to give that some, some more thought. But that, that is a very fascinating theory. Also, milking a snake is one thing. Sure is. Uh, but milking Nagini, who we... we I know, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to disconnect Nagini from Fantastic Beasts and this scene. Who we, after Fantastic Beasts, knows was who, no, is a cursed witch, which is so much weirder than it really already was. When I read this as a ch as a child, yeah, it's it's true actually. Nagini showing up in Fantastic Beasts must have just more to book readers than me, guys, because obviously we don't really get that much Nagini in the movie. Um. Movies, um, that must have been a, a big, a big thing, you know, having Nagini, you know, non-snake Nagini. Uh, great comment, Lizette. Thank you so much, Justine. I'm afraid that I've I've been advised that I shouldn't read this comment just about yet. I I, I, I don't know what context it is. In fact, I'm not even looking at it. Uh, from what I gather, it may have jumped the gun on something slightly, and so because of that, I'm going to skip this time. I'm so sorry about that. Please comment next time, and and I will read your comment out. But I I have been advised. Uh, but, uh, that, that that I should avoid it. I'm so sorry to do that because I, I, I want to be able to read all the comments out, but uh, I'm so sorry about having to do that. And like I say, please do comment next time and, and I will read your comment out. Gothic Lama! Gothic Lama! Hey, Gothic Lama! Sorry. Sorry, Gothic Lama. Uh, I, I, we finally uh, get some in, info on Voldy's family and Sirius is mentioned, which is already more than we had in the film. Absolutely. His relationship with Harry is something which I did not see coming. I'm... I, I, I am wondering, from what perspective is Harry seeing what happened in the Riddle House? Because it, as having part of Voldemort's soul, soul, I would imagine it, he'd be seeing it, seeing those visions as if seeing it through Voldemort's eyes. But here, we clearly have him seeing Worm Wormtail move the chair from a third-person view. Exactly, that's what I thought happened. Uh, so, I would like to know how exactly the, this bond between them works, strictly focused on the vision. It could be Voldemort's memory, and Voldemort is mem remembering it from a third-person point of view. If you know what I mean? That's a bit of a weird way of putting it, but it could be that, that it's... Even if it's a memory from like half an hour ago, Voldemort has been able to transfer it into what is a 3D memory. But then if the moment that Frank died is significant to Harry waking up, then no. It's a great question. It's a great question. 
Another thought, while Harry was mentioning all of his past injuries, do wizards have health insurance? How does that, how does it work? I'd imagine probably not. I'd imagine things, I'd imagine some things in the wizarding world are just simpler, you know? But, you know, Harry has definitely been through the walls, hasn't he? Lastly, how long has Harry kept those birthday cakes in his room? We were discussing this earlier. It would be best to put them in, in a fridge. So I'm not sure if they're still good to eat. Does Harry know some food preserved charms? Yeah, maybe. Because I do, I do feel like you can still do very minor magic without the ministry kicking off. Like Hermione doing magic on, on the train and stuff. Um... Oh, no, that's Hogwarts Express. That's a bit different. Um, like I say, he may have got a, a little box from Diagon Alley that keeps everything fresh. And we just didn't hear about it. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. That's how it works. Anyway, Gothic Lama, thank you so much for your wonderful comment. Jonas! Fame for the lovely side panels. Thank you so much. I love the way that these ones look. The colours in that are wonderful. Uh, Jonas, hey Reggie, hope you are doing well. We have finally reached Goblet. It's it's perhaps the book I've reread, re-listened to the most. I I already love the beginning, especially the scene in the pub. It's so well written that I can imagine sitting there with them, eavesdropping. I I wouldn't like I, I I'd probably finish my Guinness and leave. <laughs> But um, yeah, it is very well written. Actually, you, you do you you really imagine what it's like in there, like a very old style pub, like 1940s pub, I suppose, 1950s. Um, and I'd imagine it's probably still there, the Hanged Man. Although lo lots of pubs have been closing down over the last few years, guys. Um, also, Wormtail ha having to milk the guinea. We're going over this again. <laughs> I'm, I'm joking, Jonas. Uh, that paints an interesting picture. That interesting is definitely a word. Especially if you don't know that Nagini is uh, is a snake. That's a good point. We don't know at that point that Nagini is a snake. And that, you see, this is one of the things which I miss out on because I, I, because I watched the movies first. Um, and I think... When Voldemort mentions Wormtail having to milk Nagini, it hasn't been stated yet that Nagini is a snake. No, I think you're absolutely no, you're, you're, This is the first time we've heard from Nagini in that sentence, so you're absolutely right. I can't wait for the closed on this one. Again, hope you're doing well, Reggie. Yeah, I still haven't done it, Jonas, so I, I will do it soon. So uh, basically, Jonas is talking about when, when I type closed at the top of this book club. I actually haven't done it yet, so I, I, I apologize about that. And also, guys, if, if... I don't think I... I think it's been basically three... It's been just under three weeks since the, since I uh, since I opened the book club, and so for the next one, I'll make sure that the book club is opened up so so you get a little bit more time. But if you can try and get your comments in sooner, then then they're, then they're guaranteed to be in the video. You know what I mean? If and if I if I do miss. If I do end it uh, without you putting your comment in, you can still put your comment in, guys, and other people can read it and react to it and everything. And you can always leave your comment in the video once it's actually posted as well. And so I'm sorry if anyone missed out. Um, yeah, I, I, I apologize. Jonas, thank you so much for your hard work with the wonderful side panels and, of course, your wonderful comment. Apart from the part where you brought up uh, Nagini getting milk together. <laughs> Again, I'm joking. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Oh, this is the last two? It's the last two. There's Buffy. Keep an eye, an eye on to the situation. Last two comments, guys. So let's push on and get it done. Pumpkin Sparks, which I always appreciate your name. Hi, Reggie. I always loved the first chapters of the Harry Potter books. I understand why the movies leave most of the pre-Hogwarts bits out. But the normal life people have, besides the Avengers, are my absolute favourite bits. I know Pumpkin Spice... Uh, pumpkin Sparks. Sorry, not Spice. Um, 
you're you're at, you 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 made me think of a very good point there. It's where we see Harry as a kid rather than a student, and this is just just Harry as a kid, and so it's very important in 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 Harry's character development to have those moments where he is away from the magic world. Uh, you know, getting by and everything, and still having his correspondence with his friends and everything. It's 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 a joy to read or listen to. Um, I think it's really interesting that Harry doesn't want to burden his friends with his worries, and is basically dis dismisses dismisses it in his letter to, to Sirius. That's interesting. I do feel like he's also worried about because he did say about how he can explain this to someone who's not going to make him feel stupid. And so he is a little bit worried about, you know, um, what people will think of him as well. Fred and George, for example. Part of it is probably because a typical teenager who wants to look tough. That's also it as well. But I also think that it shows Harry never truly was in an environment where he felt safe to be vulnerable. Very well put. Very well put. He never learned that it's okay to have okay and healthy and actually a sign of strength to share his fears and hurts it's such a small detail but it shows how terrible his upbringing was brilliantly put i love that because if you think about it he wasn't only abused by the dursleys he was also neglected by every authority figure in his life like teachers and neighbors very, very, very true. Even Mrs. Thingy Bobby that he stayed with the cats. Who we will see returning to at some point. Um, there's no way no one had at least an inkling of what's going on. But no one did anything. It's really sad. Yeah, it's true, Pumpkin Sparks. And I get the feeling that, that Privet Drive is the sort of place where... Um... What you what you, what you don't see can't hurt you sort of thing of you know we'll just ignore the the the, the danger signs you know then again they are a bit curtain twitching is tw twitchy though aren't they you're right though people must have seen what was going on particularly with Harry and particularly with the teachers quite frankly um give some cuddles to Woozle please I will do I really love the g g genetics video about what. Oh, the genetics video about it. Yes, guys. So over on YouTube, I posted a video about Woozle's uh, DNA, which I had tested, and the results on that. And it turns out, guys, she's not actually technically a lurcher, which is very interesting. And so if you want to find out more, you can find that video on the YouTube channel. But yeah, that, that was that was fun to make, guys. And so I'm glad I'm glad you enjoyed watching it. And she does show up later on in the video, guys. I say that she's asleep, but she does show up on it. Uh, it was really interesting, and she is just adorable she's absolutely sweetheart pumpkin spark thank you so much for your wonderful comment i really appreciate it and i clearly missed out an entire paragraph i did i'm sorry that was close on a lighter note i freaking love pig <laughs> i need a t-shirt with that on um this over excited fluff ball never fails to make me smile when where did Serious get him? Well, that's a good question. Like, did he steal him from an owlery or just decide it was okay for Ron to keep one? To, to keep him? Or did somehow or did he somehow meet a wild owl who wanted a job? <laughs> you know what? I'm going with the latter, because that is amazing. That, that is a scene which needs to be in the TV show. <laughs> hey, I heard he wanted a job. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to more pig scenes. That name was not something which I was expecting, though. Pumpkin Sparks, thank you so much for your comment. I'm sorry that I didn't miss a paragraph. And if I've done that any other time, guys, I apologize for, for not missing, for, for, for not reading your, your entire comment. H will round this off. Have you heard anything less surprising than Uncle Vernon is a Daily Mail reader? Like I say, H, I'm, I'm not judging anyone who reads the Daily Mail, but it does kind of have that stereotype now. And so, yeah, it, it, it fits. It definitely fits. I wonder how his parents must have, have seen, ha, have been, since both him and his sister are such awful people. That's a good question. That's a good question that we've never had come up before. 
yeah, his his parents probably did as, as good a job on them as they're doing on Dudley. Unless they're, unless unless they're similar to Harry and they had like Foster, no, probably not. That is something that I've never even considered. H, great point. I love that the Weezies are just pretending to ask, um, and the letter in in general, really, oh, the letter is amazing, and I and I'm glad that that that, that you agree that they are pretending to ask because that, that that's that's the impression that I got rather than just being what Ron was saying. The stamp thing might not make sen much sense, but it's good fun. Yeah, it it is uh, it is amazing. In fact, that must be something that you can get, like a, an envelope with like yeah, because you get you have like Harry Potter like merchandise and everything. There must be envelopes which have like loads of fake stamps all over. That would be absolutely amazing. That would be actually be absolutely amazing. <laughs> Hey, thank you so much for your wonderful comment. So there we go, guys. That is the end of the book club. Thank you all so much for taking part on it. It's always it's always a journey, but we got there. And we had a lot to discuss this time. These chapters have been an absolute joy. Um, again, I'm so sorry to that first person. To, to the first um, book club comment that I read out. I'm so sorry for like speed reading over it and everything i was worried about it having stuff because he said about stuff that's happening in that that's going to be happening in the future and also it was going over stuff that we that that, that we discussed for president Azkaban. and so i am so sorry about if 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 i came off as dismissive to your comment then i i, I really appreciate it and please do be a part of the book clubs in the future i really didn't mean to uh to suggest that 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 that's uh that your comment wasn't wasn't worthy i i'm, I'm sorry about that but um but yeah, please do comment in the future, guys. I always thoroughly enjoyed reading your thoughts on it. Like Harry said, if you could attempt to make them sh uh, on the shorter side, it does help me out a bit. But at the end of the day, guys, I do want you to be able to put out your thoughts and everything. And so it's an absolute joy to do this, guys. It's my favorite part of doing these book reviews. I'm going to go and put closed here. So Jonas can get a screenshot of it and post on uh, on Twitter. And yeah, guys, we'll wrap it up there. So like I say, guys, if you weren't able to get your comments in this time, if I did, if I didn't give you enough time, I'm so sorry about that. I'll make sure that the next post for for the next uh, chapters, which I think will be back to two, I think, um, will be up in good time. So you have more time to add your comments. So if I did cut anyone short, I'm sorry, but you can still leave your comments and leave your comment on the, on the video itself when we get to it. But without further ado, guys, please like, comment, subscribe, all the good stuff. I'm Ridge Gamer. This has been a strange one. Actually, no, it hasn't. It's, it's been, it's been as strange as ever, but it's an absolute joy to start a new book, guys. It really is. I've got, it, I feel the energy. And so thank you so much for your wonderful comments and for watching. Please like, subscribe, all the good stuff. I'm Video Game, and I'll see you next time.